God damn it. What a way to start the new year. At this rate, I'll be dead by Easter. Quiet down, Agent Jones. You're on the clock. Quiet down? Ha! <laughs> you, you have any idea what you've done? I'd be half naked in Havana right now if you hadn't shown up. Soaking up some rays, surrounded by a harem of bikini queens, a mojito in one hand, and a seafood slathered Havana style pizza in the other. <sighs> what did I do to deserve this? Does God hate me? No. The regional bureau chief merely issued a special order. <laughs> oh. Yeah. How could I forget? A special order to rob me of my well-deserved vacation. You want pizza? I'll buy you some pizza. You can find that junk anywhere. Whoa! Hey! Hold on a minute. What did you just say? Pizza is not junk. Pizza is a sacred food bestowed upon us by God himself. You need to apologize right now. This is sheer blasphemy. Apologize to who? Pizza or God? Ha <laughs> ha! You think you're so clever. Maybe if you'd eaten pizza this morning like a decent person, you wouldn't have cut your finger. I only cut my finger because I couldn't find a left-handed can opener at the hotel. Normally, I would never make such an amateur mistake. Oh, really? Well, if you want me to get into gear, then just feed me some pizza, okay? We must act unfaithfully and abandon our ideals again and again. We cannot advance from one period of life into another without causing these pains of treachery. <sighs> Nietzsche, again, please spare me. Before my ears start to bleed. Ever since the moment you got here, it's been nothing but Nietzsche quotes. The worst enemy you can meet will always be yourself. I said knock it off. I prefer pizza to philosophy. Want me to dial the number for you? Come on, Agent Jones. It's time to get serious. Your four and a half years of hard work are finally about to pay off, and all you're focused on is this nonsense? <sighs> pizza isn't nonsense. Quiet. As you wish, Mother. My lips are sealed. Happy now. Agent Jones, don't let him take control of the conversation. The moment you let your guard down, he'll strike. And no red, remember? It's open. Come on in.
You have questions for us. That's why you're here, isn't it? Mr. Morgan, before we question you, allow me to first read you your rights. Anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. Please keep that in mind as you speak. Do we have permission to film this? Hmm? Don't worry, my fairy. They're free to do whatever they like. Something wrong, Mr. Morgan? <clears throat> I'm FBI Special Agent Aaliyah Davis, and this is- Simon Jones. An analyst from the Boston branch. He's been monitoring us for years now. Oh, uh, hi. Seriously. A southern belle and a lonesome loser who can't catch a break. Quite the uncanny duo. You'd be the perfect stars for the latest video game. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> How many years has it been since someone came to chat with us? Oh, but don't ask me about my fairy. That's a private matter. It's hard to tell what he's thinking, but my eyes can't be deceived. If he's hiding something, it'll come out in his face. You solved many difficult cases across your career. Utilizing your own unique M.O., you've expertly cracked cases that were otherwise thought to be unsolvable. According to our records, after joining the FBI in 2002, you quickly solved two drug ring-related kidnapping cases. In 2003, you solved the inside-out Flesh Skinner case in the suburbs of Pittsburgh. In 2004, the Jeffrey Dahmer wannabe case in Milwaukee. And also the stuffed human collector case in St. Louis that very same year. Then, in 2005, you coincidentally happened to solve the Lise Clarkson murder case while on vacation. You went on to solve many other cases after that, all of them seemingly inexplicable. Did you really solve these cases all on your own? There are no records of you using a wide-scale investigative team or working with anyone else. How did you ever accomplish such monumental feats all by yourself? It was all thanks to our talented partner. Partner. The FBI files show no record of you ever working with a partner. Do you mean you worked with some sort of unofficial partner? Or an outside confidant? Our partner is our partner. We've always worked together. Besides, Belle, you're forgetting one important thing. After the St. Louis case, we stopped by a diner on our way home and caught 
Thelma and Louise, two highly sought-after fugitives. <laughs> Francis Zack Morgan. He was once an FBI special agent, an extremely talented one, at least that's what they tell me. Perhaps he was a little too talented. This smell. It doesn't surprise me at this point, but it'll be problematic in court if they decide his testimony is unreliable. I won't get another chance to talk to him face to face like this. I need to get him to stop smoking that for a bit. Excuse me, Mr. Morgan, but would you please refrain from consuming that while we speak? I'm talking about... Yes, that. You don't need to worry about us. Don't get in our way and we won't get in yours. Unfortunately, questioning doesn't work like that. Our data needs to be consistent. Now please put out that stinking indulgence right this minute. If we say no. Then I'll put it out myself, using force. Whoa, whoa, Aaliyah. This is Morgan's house. Besides, it's legal in Massachusetts for individuals to consume cannabis in the comfort of their own homes. And I mean, come on. It's medicinal. Exactly. Hey, Belle. Why are you dressed so handsomely? What are you talking about? The thick black accessory wrapped around your neck. That's a male necktie. The color black represents confidence and interest in the self. And your decision to wear a male tie symbolizes your declaration of war against a predominantly male society. Or perhaps it's a psychological barrier meant to hide the weakness that dwells deep within your psyche. We admire your bravery. I thought you retired from profiling. <laughs> Bullseye, huh? You're an easy one to read. In order to think with society, a man must first gouge out his eyes and cut off his ears. Don't judge a book by its cover. For someone who's supposed to have been one of our best, you've got an awful eye for people. Or did all that smoke and kill all your little gray cells? Okay, Aaliyah, that's enough. She's smart, but she's also more of a shrew than she lets on. Agent Jones! That's sexual harassment. <laughs> so, Belle, does that barrier of yours also protect you from violent criminals? <laughs> He's more dangerous than I thought. I can't read him. I'll just have to assault him head on with questions then. First, I'll try using the files on the table to shake him up. An ornate antique chessboard. Looks like he stopped halfway through the game. But who was playing with him? That chessboard looks rather old. And you can't even buy those ivory pieces anymore. Right. They were banned by the Sites Treaty. 
That was made in France in the 1900s. We know it's in bad taste, but the weight of the ivory just feels so good in our hands. You play chess alone? Is that a crime? No, but it's a hard game to enjoy when you're all by yourself. He's probably just replicating famous games, or trying to solve problems from a chess workbook. Right, Morgan? I may not look it, but I'm actually a bit of a chess nut myself. When I was in school, I used to pore over every issue of Chess Life, the magazine published by the U.S. Chess Federation. Well, unfortunately, your guess is completely wrong, Agent Jones. He isn't replicating a famous game, nor is he solving workbook problems. There isn't a single chess book to be found in this apartment. And I didn't find any chess-related websites in his internet history. He was simply playing chess. All alone. So... What's wrong with that, Belle? I don't understand it. How could a single human being seriously play as both sides? You just publicly confessed to stealing personal data. Seems like that's a much bigger problem. Oh no. Everything was done in a perfectly legal manner. We simply happened to intercept a handful of data being sent out from an unknown origin. Ooh, now she's really trying to scare us. Did you hear that, my fairy? Serious nightmare fuel. Stage 4 progressive malignant tumor. How do humans behave when they know death is just around the corner? And what if that human is also a high-functioning sociopath? Mr. Morgan, may I ask you a question purely out of curiosity? If it makes you uncomfortable, just let me know, and I'll retract it. Belle, what's wrong? You sure put a lot of effort into that approach. It's a question about death. About this body? Are you afraid of what's coming? Think carefully about why we're smoking this, then ask us again. Honestly, we're not afraid. Rather, we find it intriguing. Intriguing? Yes. <sighs> Belle, have you ever been to the Grand Canyon in winter? No. In the dead of winter, the Grand Canyon is terribly cold. Colder than you could imagine. The cold that no photograph could ever express. The sun. <laughs> Powerless. And the temperature drops below zero. Right in the middle of the day. Meaning? <laughs> Meaning. You can't really understand something until you experience it for yourself. If you want to learn more about us... You need to gain more experience, Belle. These files are from the case that took place just outside of New Orleans in 2005. The agent who handled the case was Francis Zack Morgan, and now he's sitting right in front of me. Do you remember the homicides that took place in Lucare, Louisiana in 2005? We... Solved that case. Your report states the following. By coincidence, you encountered a serious incident in a town you visited while on vacation. You then decided to steal the right to investigate from the local law enforcement and took over the case. After several more homicides, you managed to apprehend the perpetrator. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> we stole the right to investigate from them. 
just as you said. It all started when the body of a 16-year-old girl was discovered. You arrived in Lucare immediately after that, didn't you? We just can't seem to keep ourselves away from dead girls. Did you really visit that town just to take a vacation? We don't know. If you already have the report, then we suggest you read it, Belle. Either way, that case is closed. Closed? You sure about that? Don't you think this puzzle is still missing some crucial pieces? <laughs> Come on. No need to beat around the bush with us, Bell. They found Lee Clarkson's body. It was hidden deep within the Clarkson Food Delivery Services cold storage warehouse. After 14 years, we finally discovered the body of the very first victim. Do you know what this means? That's why we're here. The first victim in the case he solved, Lise Clarkson. And this is a photograph of what she looks like now. How will he react when he sees it? The body that went missing for 14 years was suddenly discovered frozen in a warehouse. This is some kind of message from the victim to us. We're pleased that her body turned up. Deeply pleased. You claim to have closed this case, but now a lost body suddenly surfaced. Aren't you curious about the details? Body or not, we already solved that case. Lisa's body can't change anything now. And it certainly has nothing to do with us. I suspect the body was stored there rather than abandoned, due to the unnatural state it was found in. She was found frozen in a storage unit. Therefore, she looks exactly the same as she did when she disappeared. In fact, she's in such good condition that we can even determine the murder weapon and cause of death. Well, good for you. Even stranger is how unbelievably beautiful she looks. At first glance, few would guess she was a murder victim at all. She looks more like a piece of art, or a mythological figure from a painting. This keeps getting better and better. Better and better? Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> a corpse as beautiful as a goddess. Sounds just like our story. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. That went okay. Now I'm sure that Morgan's hiding something. I may be able to get what I want if we go deeper into the documents. A halfway finished chess game. I think he was playing both sides. If it was merely for entertainment, but I know that every action he takes has its own spell, especially now that his remain. Who is it? This my fairy character you keep speaking to. You can't see her? Such bad manners. You barge into our apartment, yet you don't even care about who else is living here. Dissociative Identity Disorder. In the past, it was known as Multiple Personality Disorder. You were subjected to an internal probe only once during your career, correct? They suspected that you had DID, but you denied it and no problems arose during your test. Is this how you dealt with the psychological profiler back then, too? Saying strange things, weaving unrelated matters together, is that how you slipped through? You're free to draw your own conclusions, Belle. But my fairy clearly exists. She's been sitting right there, on your lap this entire time. <laughs> hey! Stop it! No violence allowed in here, Belle. Wouldn't want to scare my fairy, now would we? He didn't so much as twitch when he saw the picture of the body. He's even tougher than the rumors made him out to be. But I was prepared for that. And if my hunch is right, he's deeply intertwined with this case. Far deeper than what my superiors think. You may be wondering why we decided to unearth all these old files. 
Everything happens for a reason. The moment Lise Clarkson's body was found, we did the best we could to start our own local investigation. But there wasn't much we could actually investigate due to the damage caused by the hurricane. Then we assume you also questioned everyone who worked in the warehouse. Of course. We questioned all the Clarkson Food Delivery Services employees who staffed the warehouse and its owner. But we still have yet to obtain any key testimonies. Par for the course with a 14-year-old case, if you ask me. Mm. Not to mention how bad the timing was. Most of the employees were on vacation. So, you gave up on the investigation and came to see us instead. <laughs> Remember what happened, my fairy? That warehouse. That man. So incoherent. Such a pain. Hey, are you talking about... The guy who managed the vault where Lisa's body was found? Yeah, I think he started working there in 2005. Remember, Aaliyah? You said he was a pain to deal with, too. The large man, yes? Hmm. No need to answer. If you don't want to. I'm sure you've already put him under surveillance. Textbook FBI protocol. The person who originally admitted this report was his superior, Robert Abrahams, current chief of the Boston branch. According to Chief Abrahams, Morgan's got his own modus operandi. It's not something that others should interfere with. Well, Chief, look what that's gotten us into now. Isn't there someone else you should have talked to before coming to us? Such as... We were unable to reach Patricia Clarkson. You look surprised. I thought you already knew. After all, you visited Louisiana last week. We assumed you met with her during your time there. We haven't been to Louisiana. Not in 14 years. Is that so? We've been right here in our apartment this entire time. That man is our witness, aren't you, Simon? <laughs> He's right. He didn't even take a single step outside on Christmas Eve. Which means that I didn't get to either. Are you positive about that? I took the liberty of checking some airline records. Last Friday, the name Billy Bishop was listed on a morning flight out of Boston. This is the fake name you used to use as an agent isn't it? <laughs> A mere coincidence. Yet that's not all. That evening on the same day, a man with a large scar on his forehead allegedly purchased an 89 Cadillac from a small used car lot in Lucare. He reportedly said he wanted something old, big, and strong. The owner of the car lot felt it was a strange order, so it stuck in his mind. Our world is filled with mysteries. And they always have the most bizarre timing. Incidentally, on the following day, an identical Cadillac was taken to a scrapyard in Trenton. Trenton, New Jersey. You can find that type of car anywhere. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> Morgan's right. Everything happens for a reason. Even this messy room. There must be a reason for it. Especially when it comes to those strangely tidy spots. They're practically begging me to question them. DVDs are all over the place. I know that he's a shut-in, but this still seems like way too many for one person. And I've never heard of any of these titles before. A stinking indulgence. And a massive DVD collection. 
You must live a very comfortable life. We're retired, remember? Retired in your 40s. I'm envious. But who doesn't love movies, Belle? I'm not a fan. Oh, that won't do. You should dedicate all the free time you have to watching movies. It's practically an unwritten law. Films guide us. Films are filled with every important life lesson there is. Is that so? For example, They Live, 1988, directed by John Carpenter. That film taught us a valuable lesson. Always put on your sunglasses before a fight. You know, you got a point. Movies teach us about everything we need to know. I learned about the right way to eat frozen pizza from Cobra. It's one of Stallone's best films. Before that, I wouldn't be caught dead trying to eat frozen pizza. I thought it wasn't fit for human consumption, but that film changed my life. Simon, that has nothing to do with the film. You're just talking about pizza. Holly MVA supplements and a home IV kit. It's probably filled with highly concentrated vitamin C. He said that being on the verge of death is intriguing. But then why does he have such an elaborate home medical care setup? How does he truly feel? Do you like fresh vegetable juice? Why would you think that? There's a juicer in your sink that hasn't been washed yet. And do I smell the faint fragrance of baked beans? You didn't use much salt, did you? What are you implying? You just told me that you find impending death to be intriguing. That confused me. When I look around your room, all I can see are the many ways in which you're resisting death. Poly MVA treatment, highly concentrated vitamin C IVs, fresh vegetable juice, vegetable protein without salt. Gallons of vitamin D milk for fat and calcium. The ambivalence, yes. What? Two contradictory emotions, mixing, coexisting together. An adult, mature mind is never satisfied with only one response. It's common sense. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> this room's a total mess, but certain spots look perfectly clean. Is it just a coincidence? Mm. No, there are no coincidences with this man. Mr. Morgan, I found several spots in this room that look strangely clean. Did you tidy up a bit because you knew we were coming? Those are... sanctuaries. They've existed from the start. Sanctuaries. That's right. Sacred places. Hovels for pure souls, if you will. Were there originally objects in those hovels? Something you didn't want us to see? The soul's still there. We haven't touched a thing. But we know... You can't see anything. Hey, Simon, don't touch the sanctuary. Uh, s sorry. <coughs> That's a sanctuary. Don't ever touch it again. You've been watching us for four and a half years, and you couldn't even figure that much out. Uh, my bad. It's my first time actually coming inside, you know. <laughs> You're earning far more than you deserve, then. What were you doing all day in that black suburban? We thought wiretapping was your specialty. Don't tell me. Crossword puzzles. What do you think, my fairy? Four and a half years. All that time and 
What does he have to show for it? Crossword puzzles? No way. Come on, I thought you knew. I'm a Sudoku guy. Agent Jones. Oh, right. He's completely taking control of the conversation. At this rate, we'll never get anywhere. I need to press him some more. Agent Jones. The briefcase isn't even that big. How long does he intend to keep that up? Does he have pizza menus stuffed inside there or something? Agent Jones? Did you find the files? Mr. Morgan, do you recognize these files? Whoa! Whoa! Ow! We told you. That's a sanctuary. Let him go! Assaulting an FBI agent is an obstruction of you. justice! We told you! Go! Ah! Say! Back! Say back! Sanctuary! Down! Surrounded! Ah! 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 Yeah. Mr. Morgan? I cut my finger with that can opener this morning. I thought I stopped the bleeding, but it seeped through. How could I be so stupid? Everything should be fine now. I'm sorry for being so careless. I made sure to read through your file and learn about your condition. The color red. Such an unusual thing to fear. Please, accept my deepest apologies. <clears throat> I... I'm sorry too, Morgan. I don't know what I was thinking. I'll never touch one of your sanctuaries ever again. And no more red, either. <laughs> don't... ever... touch one... again. I... I told them not to. Now, may we return to our discussion? Don't worry. Strangely enough, this man has a fear of the color red. And I believe that fear is connected to the Greenville case. Soon after Agent Jones started monitoring him, he was ordered to go through Morgan's trash. But he didn't find anything. Morgan used this machine to cut up everything from his mail to his supermarket receipts. Then he even went as far as taking out his trash in parts. This is a very large shredder. Is there something you don't want people finding out about? Hmm, good question. But we never know when some curious civil servants may come and sift through our trash now, do we? You're already retired. What are you so worried about? <laughs> it's just a simple habit. From back when we were still on duty. Didn't they bang that into your head when you were up in Quantico? Some habits are hard to break, no matter how hard you try. Here's another empty space. What does the word sanctuary really mean to him? Hovels for pure souls? Could you tell me what exactly the word sanctuary means to you? Sanctuaries are sanctuaries. Nothing more and nothing less. That doesn't explain anything. Why do you wish to know? Just curious. Belle. You're a much ruder person than you initially seem to be. 
Don't you agree, my fairy? What do our sanctuaries have to do with the investigation? If you're out of questions, then how about just going home? Hey, mind if I jump in here? What is it, Simon? We hope you've got a real question for us. Well, actually, I'm also a little curious myself. No one's supposed to touch any sanctuary, right? That's what we said. What about you, though? You can't even touch them yourself? Are there any extenuating circumstances? What are you getting at? I mean, I doubt if any of this really matters, but if no one can touch the sanctuaries, then how do you clean them? The files on the serial killings that shocked Washington State in 2010, officially titled the Greenvale case. I never thought I'd take out files from a case I first heard about on the news. Mr. Morgan? I'd like to ask you some questions about this case now. We don't want to remember that town. I'm sorry, but there's no way around this. I remember hearing about this case on the news when I was still a student. A high school girl named Anna Graham was murdered and the FBI stepped in to take over the case. I also remember it becoming a sprawled investigation due to evidence found in the victim's throat. Is that correct? After that case, you went on sick leave for two years. And when you returned, you requested to be switched over to desk work. What happened? That's a private matter. None of your business, Bill. Were you traumatized? Hmm. It's a common problem with prolific agents such as yourself. But there's another possibility that may make more sense. Perhaps you simply finished making preparations. What are you getting at? Thinking too much about something will always turn it into a problem. The Greenvale case. Don't you think it resembles the Luke Carre case? Read the report. We have nothing else to say. I just need one more push. One more thing that can summon up the past. Looks like another old antique. He collects milk cartons but treats valuable antiques like trash. What's going on in his head? jar of honey with honeycomb inside it. There's nothing strange about it, but it still gives me a weird feeling. A picture of a leaf. This isn't just a picture of any leaf. It's the most important leaf. The belief in truth begins with the doubt of all truths in which one has previously believed. It's time to get down to business. The silver clock in that trash pile. Is that an H5? That's right. John Harrison's fifth chronometer. Completed in 1770. After many years, he completed it and presented it to the Board of Longitude in order to end their feud with him. That's only a replica, of course. You like clocks? Clocks are amazing prime fruit of the human race's intellect. We took the invisible idea of time and manifested it in these. Yeah, I love clocks too. Absolutely fascinating. I disagree. Oh? Why? Time is valuable precisely because it can't be seen. Yet nowadays people can't tell what time it is unless it's measured in numbers. Talk about idiocy. I don't mean to side with the Board of Longitude, but remember, humans used to cross oceans with the stars alone. We have our eyes to read moon charts and study the sky. We don't need clocks. What if it's cloudy or storming? All you need is courage and a love for adventure. <laughs> Hear that, my fairy? Courage and a love for adventure? <laughs> Come on, Belle. Surely you know how many lives have been claimed by your pal's courage and adventure. 
<sighs> hey, hey, hold on a second here. That board of longitude thing, what the heck is that? I mean, I've heard of it before. I'm an FBI analyst, remember? I just sort of can't remember it right now. I know what it is, really. I'm telling the truth. Come on, Aaliyah, back me up here. Aaliyah? A jar of... There's no... That's royal jelly. Huh? You were staring at the jar, weren't you? Do you find it strange that there's honeycomb inside? We wanted to harvest royal jelly in its most natural state. The queen's main food source, created from the worker bee's secretions. It's a perfect food, filled with power, meant to fuel the birth of the next queen. By absorbing it into our own bodies, we too can acquire that power. Incidentally, did you know that all the worker bees are female? No. Guess they didn't teach you that at Quantico. Male bees are only born to inseminate, and they're born from unfertilized eggs to boot. They have short lives and don't even get stingers. Sort of feels like a glimpse into the future of our society, wouldn't you agree? Women are gifted with the power to conceive, give birth, and nourish their children. But men, men are consumed with the job of providing women with the chance to do so. If women no longer had to rely on men for the seeds of life, they would soon cease to desire them, we believe. Be careful, Simon. <laughs> huh? Of what? Your bell's already stolen the reins from you. <laughs> Mr. Morgan, please look at this. What did we just say? We don't want to remember Greenvale. This isn't a photo from Greenvale. Look closely at it. Former Special Agent Francis Zack Morgan. This photograph predates Greenvale. It's from the Lucare case you worked on in 2005. Red. Red tree. Red tree. Yes. A red tree. Greenvale wasn't the first place you saw one of these. The Greenvale case and the Lise Clarkson murder case. They're connected by these red trees, aren't they? Red trees. Answer me. What are these trees? Red trees. I want the truth. Tell me everything you know. <laughs> the red trees. You really did your homework. Well done, Belle. You're good. Damn good. Mm. Are you ready to talk now? I want to know what went down in Lucare in 2005. Fine. We'll tell you. We'll tell you what happened in that town. Yes. It was that red tree. That red tree ruined my life. It was... It was a sultry summer day. The sun comes down hard on you in the south like a torrential downpour of demonic whispers. It all started back in that sweltering summer. We still had our best friend with us back then. The other me. <laughs> My better half.
never a choice When somebody needs you You can't turn away You're their only lifeline Just a hero A bullet for hire Working alone Always a voice A cry in the darkness An echo of pain That's been long forgotten But it haunts me My destiny To be alone There's a time when you see Life for what it's gotta be You should know they'll destroy you But call to me To keep searching Walk alone Zack. Zack. Can you hear me, Zack? There you are, Zack. <laughs> Sleeping again? Well, rise and shine. It's time for us to head back out into the chaos. Isn't that right, Zack? Zack, it looks like she wants us to join her for breakfast. Perhaps this town's finally starting to warm up to us. Look at that, Zack. She's welcoming us with open arms. She's even willing to share that tasty morsel with us. What an honor. Hurry up and chow down, mister. Unless you like your breakfast stale. What an amazing place. I've been on top of the moon since the moment I got here. And the name of this wonderful town, Le Carre. Sounds like French to me, but what does it mean? I'm the chef, David. If you want to know about the town, you'd better ask the concierge. Only amateur chefs flap their gums about stuff that ain't food related.
Did you hear that, Zach? He's a true professional. You say something, mister? Uh, no, not to you. I was just talking to Zach. Zach? Please don't ask me about Zach. It's a private matter. If you say so, still. Never thought the FBI would ever come out to a little old town like ours. I do work for the FBI, but I didn't come here for an investigation. I just happened to stop by on my way to New Orleans. <sighs> Never thought there'd be a murder out here either. And it was a 16-year-old kid. Now I tell you, this country seen better days. What you reckon, mister? Zach, he's definitely a professional, but it seems like he's also a bit lonesome. That's good. Ambivalence exists everywhere. Folks say the killer used an axe. Hell of an old-fashioned choice if you ask me. Actually, Chef David, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions about the incident. Well, shoot. I ain't the one y'all to be asking, Mr. FBI. I only heard what I heard. But seeing as you're fixing to grill me, I can tell you what I know. Please do. I appreciate it. You said the victim was a 16-year-old. Did you know her? Well, sure. I reckon the whole town did. Meaning? She's Lise Clarkson, the little grandbaby of the Clarkson family. The Clarkson family? That's right. You ain't seen they sign on your way in here? The one above that huge coal storage complex. Should have had a dragonfly on it. Anyway, that's the Clarkson family seal. They own most of the land around here, from the sugar plantations right down to the food processing plant. Yeah, I reckon they got a stake in just about everything. They even own the water tower on the edge of town, you know. They're the ones who built up this town, and they still support it. What do you know about the Clarkson's house? Now, I ain't got nothing bad to say, but I'm gonna talk straight to you. You best dear clear that place. That family ain't just some gang. They're a whole different kind of beast. They folks with real power. Remnants of the good old boys who shaped America in the early days. Especially the head of the family, P.J. Clarkson. He's the kind of monster who goes around eating other monsters. And I'm sure he's on edge now with his granddaughter getting murdered and all. So don't go barging in with that shiny FBI badge of yours and think you'll be safe for nothing. Things are different down here. So if you plan on sticking around, you best remember that. I see. Well, keep that in mind. Is the local law enforcement investigating the case? <laughs> Shoot, mister, what you think? Now, I told you this ain't no city. We in the bonafide boondocks here. They got the know-how to break up fights and keep folks from killing each other when they piss jaw. They sit down and talk it out with you heart to heart. And when that don't work, they just beat your ass. That's the deep south for you. This murder ain't like that, though. A little kid got killed. A weird way. Like something on a TV show. The sheriff's department ain't never seen nothing like this. Live and Let Die, Angel Heart, and The Pelican Brief, right? Nine out of ten people will name those titles when you ask them to think of a film set in New Orleans. They're all excellent movies, but to me they lack realism. Due to my line of work, I have a tendency to think deeply about what feels real and what doesn't. What's your point? Cat People. That's my point. Cat People. 1982. Directed by Paul Schrader. The crowning achievement of Nastasia Kinski, the ultimate muse of the 80s. The most vital element of that movie is the reality it depicts. Leopards who turn into humans have intercourse with humans and turn back into leopards. Then they can only turn back into humans again if they mutilate their lovers. I was awestruck by the sheer reality of it all. Understand? I'm talking about hyper-realism. After watching it, I felt like I just 
had to experience the world of cat people for myself. That's why I decided to visit New Orleans. Uh, okay. Another vital element of cat people is the presence of Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell from Blue Thunder. Oh, talk about a masterpiece. Listen carefully, David. Only an amateur would call A Clockwork Orange his best movie. His best movies are Cat People and Blue Thunder. Period. You need to remember this, because it's the truth. Mm, whatever you say, mister. So, uh, what's your point again? Never mind, don't worry about it. I already covered all the important parts. When you say it was like something from a TV show, what exactly do you mean? Hey, mister. Why do you look so excited, huh? Like a kid asking grandma to read him a fairy tale. I just can't seem to keep myself away from young women who died in bizarre ways. Oh. Well, I ain't seen it with my own eyes. But folks say they found the body hanging under a bridge on the bayou. And under that bridge, there was some kind of altar. An altar? Like something they use in black magic. Something horrible. Voodoo? Nah, wasn't nothing like that. Just a weird altar. That's all? Oh, and the body was all cut up in pieces. Scattered around the altar-like. So she was sacrificed? That's what the fella who discovered her said, yeah. Bingo, Zack. This case has got our names all over it. By the way, Mr. FBI, I ain't seen a car in the parking lot. How'd you get all the way out here, huh? Don't tell me you walked. Well, that's a very good question. Chef David, you've got a sharp eye. It's true that I didn't park my car in your parking lot. Do you know why? Can't say I do. Because it was stolen. Huh? But you with the FBI, right? Even FBI cars can be stolen. It could happen after you park your car on the side of the road and go off to do some legwork. When you're eating lunch, when you're watching a movie, when you're asleep at night, when you're buying cigarettes at the local supermarket, your car can be stolen anywhere. That's precisely what it means to be an FBI agent. In my case, my car was stolen while I was on my way down here. But no need to worry. I already reported it to the local authorities. And I've also already acquired another mode of transportation. Another mode? Want to hear the details? Not really, but I'll listen if you want me to. Then please do. After I finished my work in Houston, I flew to New Orleans. Then, I rented a car at the airport. Whenever I visit the West Coast, I always rent a convertible, especially in California. But now I'm in hot and sticky Louisiana. So, I decided on a brand new hybrid car with a fully equipped air conditioning system. A hybrid car? Oh yes, they're marvelous. Vehicles that utterly defy everything you think you know about cars. Now, in the year 2005, it feels like we finally entered the 21st century. Stomp down on the gas all you want. The engine won't make a sound. It's silent? At first, I felt like the landscape was moving past me on its own. Give it a few more years, and I'm sure we'll start seeing cars that run purely on electricity. And who knows? In a decade or so, electric sports cars may end up lining the parking lots of Silicon Valley. I can see it now. It's the world of The Last Starfighter, 1984, directed by Nick Castle. It's famous for being the first film to utilize realistic CG, but I couldn't care less about that. See, I was mesmerized by the beautifully refined mech designs. It even made me wish that I could be one of them myself, especially the Gunstar spacecraft. No other sci-fi movie has ever had... So, uh, yeah, where'd your hybrid car get stolen? Sorry, I got off topic. I noticed it was missing after I finished my lunch and walked out of the diner. Incidentally, this diner was located at the entrance to a small town just south off the I-10. I went out to get back in it, but my hybrid car was nowhere to be found. I remembered exactly where I parked it, right between a blue pickup truck and a hedgerow. But when I came back from lunch, it had completely vanished. In short... Someone stole it, and in its place, they left me this. What? A skateboard. A skateboard? Yes. While I was sliding my lunch into my stomach, someone was busy replacing my 
brand new hybrid car with a wooden board attached to four wheels. Remarkable, don't you think? So then how did you get here? By riding the skateboard, obviously. Why do you look so surprised? No, I couldn't ride the board very well at first. But by the time I hit the three mile mark, I'd more or less gotten the hang of it. By the 10 mile mark, I'd even learned to do a few tricks. It was a journey of self-discovery. Not even I knew I had this latent talent sleeping inside me. This summer's gonna be another hot one. It's supposed to get over 95 today. Watch out, you don't go getting heat stroke. Felice Clarkson case needs us. Don't you think so, Zach? The cat people are what guided us to New Orleans. We should be thanking Malcolm McDowell. Once we get home, let's watch Blue Thunder again. I'm already looking forward to it. Aren't you, Zach? Zach, the searing light. Mmm, <sighs> these scents. It's the deep south. Mmm, that was a fabulous breakfast. You're the world's greatest chef. Uh, wait, mister. You didn't take a single bite. Well, the tea was to die for. But I'd prefer coffee next time. What would a morning be without coffee? Saint Rouge. I've been chasing it all over America. But I feel like we're finally on the verge of finding something now. Don't you, Zach? I think it's about time we ordered a new briefcase. Yes, I know this one carries a lot of memories, but it's seen too much. This hole's from the shootout in Tucson. And this stain's from Miami. Ah, oh, Miami. Now that was a fascinating case. Billy, our perp, cut his own torso right in two, even with the help of the drugs. A feat like that still requires incredible mental fortitude. I was so impressed that I forgot I'd left my briefcase on the floor. Same floor his blood gushed out onto. I know, Zach, I know. Now isn't the time for a trip down memory lane. Emergent drug that's been on the rise in four southern states. Personally, I think it originated right here in Louisiana, and Lee Clarkson's murder must be connected to it somehow. The 16-year-old girl who was murdered, her body was found beneath a bridge over the bayou, along with a strange altar. The powerful man who essentially controls the town of Lucare and he seems to be more fearsome than your average gangster. I doubt he'll be willing to cooperate with any law enforcement, Zack. You know, I keep thinking about that movie we stopped to see on our way here, Zack. The Island, 2005, directed by Michael Bay. For a movie being shown at a cinema complex, it was surprisingly artistic. An experimental setting mixed with hard-hitting drama. It was art house sci-fi. That director's going to change the history of art house films. Are you following me here? This is another special film that's setting a new standard, just like Star Wars and Blade Runner did. 
This is a turning point, Zach. You may be witnessing the birth of a vital new word that will soon become a part of film history. Yes, this single movie may be responsible for creating a whole new genre several years down the line. A genre known as island movies. I sure like the sound of that. Don't you, Zach? I'm very satisfied with the decorations and the size of this closet, Zach. And it's even got a security box. What else could a man ask for? It's proof that we're still safely inside the fringes of modern civilization. Hey there, Chef. What's cooking? Chef, what are you talking about, sir? I'm the concierge, David. I just heard from our chef that you wish to learn the meaning behind our town's name. Yes, I've gathered that Lucare is French, but does it have any special meaning? Why, yes, sir, of course it does. A very clear, logical meaning. All names have meanings. Would you like to know what this one means? Yes, I would. Jolly good, sir. Then allow me to explain. Lucare means square in French. Ah. And? That's it. That's it? Yes, that's it, sir. Do take a gander at the town map in the lobby if it fancies you. It's beautiful, valuable, and old. I'm sure you'll understand once you see it. Now, please excuse me, sir. If you ever need anything, please don't hesitate to ask. Did you see that, Zack? That was clearly David. Not a twin, not a split personality, just the work of a true professional. It's bizarre, but I can understand it. Remember what they say, the job makes the man. Feel that, Zach? Dozens of paintings no one will ever see. A faint scent of tobacco baked into these walls for over a century. Now that's what I call a hotel. Zach, can you see him? His fashion sense is beyond me, but he appears to be a gentleman. Perhaps we should talk to him. Nice tie. Did you buy it here? It's been a long time since someone spoke to me. No one these days ever tries to see me. 
They can see what's far in the distance, but are blind to what's in front of them. No. Maybe they're only pretending not to see. That's what civilized society does to people. Exactly. Ever since mankind got their hands on civilization, they zoomed away at a frightening speed. Zoomed away from what? <laughs> Don't be a fool. You know the answer. As for me, just call me Hoongan. Hoongan. The title given to a leader in a certain religion. Is that what you are? Religion hat, Zach. Here we go. Fell tin maidens in the shrine of hunger. Find the flying serpent in the ambiguous zero. Dance with the flying serpent, and you will glimpse the other world. Ten maidens and an ambiguous zero. Got it. But what do you mean by other world? Follow the oracle. <laughs> Zack, did you hear all that? Looks like we've already taken our first step into chaos. But such is our duty. We need to accept the chaos, let it inside, then carefully dismantle it piece by piece. And after we've put all the pieces back into their rightful places, the truth will reveal itself. Let's capture the truth and present it with a shiny pair of silver bracelets, Zack. Zack, here's another perfect symbol of the human condition. Hunting trophies. And it's a buffalo hunting trophy. Now that's a surprise. I've seen several trophies made out of human skin, but never a buffalo's. Looking at him brings out this strange feeling from within me. Yes, the very same feeling I got when watching a certain film from 1984, directed by Peter Hyams, 2010. The last scene in that film filled me with such a sublime, majestic feeling. It was filled with everything that was missing from the finale of 2001, A Space Odyssey. Just talking about it makes me want to watch it again. Let's watch it once we get home. Promise, Zack. Zack, this is Lucare. I think I'm finally starting to understand what our concierge was trying to say. You can tell this town was built by a very methodical person. No, wait. Maybe they just didn't care, and that's why it ended up this way. It's just another symbol of mankind's obsession with molding nature to fit our own rules. Zack, what did you think of Hoongun's oracle? Despite all the dramatic build-up, it's little more than a childish riddle. Heartwarming, really. Exactly the kind of feeling one gets from the good old-fashioned countryside. Now let's start by tracking down those ten maidens. The oracle gave us a place and an act. We need to go to the Shrine of Hunger and fell ten maidens. Now where in this town can one satiate their hunger? The hotel and where? And the ten things that need to be knocked down. Simple, right? Very funny, Zack. Now it's time to get serious. You already know the answer, don't you? Alexis's Diner and Lane. This is it, Zack. 
There are even pins and a bowling ball on the sign. I bet we'll be able to eat some Cajun cuisine and bowl there. Maybe even both at the same time. Nice job, Zach. I knew you'd be able to find it. Now for the other oracle. There's no flying serpent on this map. Could it be a contrail or perhaps a dragon? I'm sure we'll find out later. First, let's just figure out where we need to go. Do you know what the ambiguous zero represents? Zero is usually treated as a base number, but under what conditions would a base number be ambiguous? Very funny, Zach. Now it's time to get serious. You already know the answer, don't you? The Clarkson Food Delivery Services Cold Storage Warehouse. That's got to be it. Even with this blazing sun in the sky, they can easily keep the temperature below freezing. Be honest now, Zach. You knew the answer from the very start, didn't you? And how about that Hoongan? What a mysterious character. His oracles may end up determining how much time we spend in this town. Sorry, boss, but this is a smoke-free hotel. If you're dying of smoke, head out the entrance and you'll find a smoking area in the rear parking lot. Don't tell me. You're the bellboy. At your service, boss. Are you good friends with the concierge and the chef? Eh, uh, we work at the same place, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I can't really say whether we're good friends with each other. We're all professionals, though. Nothing more, nothing less. I believe we've struck gold here, Zack. It just screams deep south, actually. No, it doesn't. This is all his charm. So, if I want to smoke, I should go out the entrance and around to the rear parking lot? Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, I'll play by your rules. Always strive to provide our guest with the finest of service, sir. Our humble bucolic town does have its inconveniences. Shopping in particular can be a bit of a slog. Therefore, we decided to provide a modest selection of daily necessities right here at our very own front desk. Great. Sounds convenient. Exactly. Please, don't hesitate to let me know if you're in need of anything, sir. Would you mind if I asked you just one question, concierge? By all means. Please ask me whatever you like, sir. Do you run this entire hotel all on your own? I mean, just the three of you? Yes, that is correct, sir. So you, or the three of you, own the entire place? Oh, heavens no, sir. The chef, the bellboy, and myself are all mere employees of this fine hotel. So the Clarksons own this place, too? <laughs> Not quite, sir. This hotel opened its doors long before the Clarksons came to prominence. Impressive. No wonder this building has such a dignified air to it. Indeed. This is probably the only building in all of Lucare that has managed to retain its original appearance. So who's the owner? I simply must know the name of the person who had the fortune and sense to come into possession of such a fine building. <clears throat> the owner of this hotel is none other than David Jawara, sir. Zack, that's the fourth David. It all makes sense now. It'd be stranger if only the owner was a completely different person. I sincerely hope I get a chance to meet him during my stay here. If I may, Mr. Morgan, sir, I don't think that's such a good idea. Why not? Unfortunately, our owner has a bit of a personality problem. The three of us here describe him as having a 
fractured mind. Hey, your boss. How can I be of service? Boss, how can I be? Boss, please, I know you're a busy fella. No need to tell me twice. <laughs> but if you're ever in need of any favors, you know who you can come to. See, despite how I may look, I've actually built up quite the network around here. Compared to non-smokers, smokers have a 4.7 times greater chance of getting lung disease. You know that means it's more likely than getting asbestos poisoning? The risk of death from lung cancer is actually much lower than what you think it is. In fact, it's tiny when compared to heart disease, strokes, and pneumonia. We're always surrounded by easy ways to die, you know. Some people even get randomly struck by lightning and die right there on the spot. Then I reckon you also know that secondhand smokers have 1.3 times greater the risk compared to smokers? Of course. So you won't mind paying the damages when I die of lung disease? How about writing that in a contract for me? You got a pen, right? I promise to protect you from all the evil in our world. Well, that's stupid. By the way, what's your name? FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Um, is something wrong with you? Adults ain't supposed to act like that. I only asked for your name so I can write it on the contract. You should have been able to figure that out if you're a real FBI agent like you said. Come on, sign here. Right here on the paper. Just as I thought, Zack. This contract paper, it's a San Rouge wrapper. San Rouge is here, too. This must mean that San Rouge is connected to the Lee's Clarkson murder case somehow. This is a sprawling case that spread across the entire South. It's within our jurisdiction, Zack. We'll need to steal the right to investigate from the local authorities at once. By the way, miss, what's your name? Patricia Woods. But I gotta write my name myself, or else it won't be a real signature. Tell me, Patricia, does this town have a sheriff, or is it under the jurisdiction of the nearest city police? Perfect timing. Well, go on and steal it if you want it. I was just thinking about how this is way out of my daddy's league. Thank you for the information, Patricia. Okay, Zach, it's time to get to work. How should we seize control from the sheriff this time?
Hey there. So, uh, you're the fella from the FBI I've been hearing so much about. I'm Melvin. They call me the sheriff around here. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan? But call me York if you can. That's what everyone calls me. Huh? <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Mr. York. How's that sound? Fine by me. <laughs> I'm sure you figured this out, but our town's a small one. Yeah, folks are already busy spreading gossip about how some FBI agents come to town. <laughs> now, uh, I reckon you came from the city. What was it? D.C., L.A., or New York? Anywho, in the city, it's normal not to know who your neighbor is. Fellow who moves in next to you could cook up a dozen folks in his backyard, and no one would bat an eye. That's the city for you. Now, I never lived in one myself, but I visited him a few times, so I know what it's like. All pigs must die in the city of wolves. Yeah! Now, does that sound badass or what? I bet you'd... Hey! I know, I know, CLG. I'm just trying to make a little small talk, that's all. Anywho, round these parts, everyone knows each other's name. So lots of folks get leery when they see an étranger like you. And since it's my duty to protect the town, I thought I'd stop by and say hello. Zach, it looks like this sheriff is quite the happy-go-lucky type. A clear indication of just how peaceful this town is. Melvin, about the Lee's Clarkson case. I knew you were here for that case. Can't put one past the FBI. Mm. So they even got eyes on the smallest of towns like us, huh? Mm, mm, mm. Our world is filled with information, and it's all within their grasp. FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Lee's Clarkson case is connected to a top secret case that we've... I know, I know. If you're fixing to take the lead, <laughs> then go right ahead. I'm just the humble sheriff of a tiny little town. My jobs are to stop my neighbors from beating the piss out of each other and listen to old folks complain. Honestly, this whole murder case has been weighing me down. So I'm going to give you my full cooperation, Mr. Special Agent, sir. Well, Zach, that was anticlimactic. I didn't even get to use my secret weapon. Melvin, there's a cold storage warehouse on the southern end of town, isn't there? I'd like to get permission to enter it. Say what? You want to see where the body's being kept, right? Oh, I get it now. Lisa's body, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, that's what I call a special agent. You already figured that much out. Mm. But, uh, hmm, I'm not too sure that, uh, going down there at this point is really gonna help much, you know? Explain it yourself, Daddy. That's incredible. I don't believe this. Amazing. Did you hear that, Zack? They put the body in a cold storage warehouse. This is fantastic. Insanely fantastic. R really? Well, how about that? <laughs> well, all right then. I'll head on down to the warehouse ahead of you and make sure we get permission to search it. Sounds good. The management company only keeps the warehouse open during certain hours, so you'll have to come during those hours. I ain't looking to create any further disturbances. So be on time. Got it? Come on, let's roll, CLG. I'm gonna walk home, Daddy. I still got another stop to make. Oh, if you say so, sweetie. <laughs> She's a real sharp one, as you can see, so I try to stay out of her way. Well, all right then, York. I'll see you at the warehouse.
ain't secretly cutting kids up and sticking them into jars while you work as an FBI agent on the surface, are you? Or using your FBI connections to sell kids to child trafficking organizations? I've arrested people who've done both, but I've never engaged in either of those activities myself. Of course, I have imagined doing such things in order to learn more about the psychology of the criminals I deal with. It was just a joke. Why are you getting all serious? And don't tell me what you imagine, or else I'll get scared of you for real. Hey, can I come with you? You signed a contract with me, remember? And besides, I'm kind of worried about my daddy. Do whatever you like. This is America, land of the free. But I have one condition. What condition? Don't ask me about Zack. It's a private matter. Zack, it feels like she's carrying something with her. Kind of reminds me of you back when we first met. I can't leave her alone like this. You feel the same way, don't you? By the way, Patty, what do you usually do when you're at home? Is this an interrogation? Oh, no. I just figured that since we're working together now, it'd be a good idea to learn a little more about you. Should an adult male like you really be asking a little girl this kind of question? I feel like I heard a story about this sort of thing on the news once. There's a time and a place for everything. You know exactly who I am, and I've also introduced myself to your father. Besides, you're the one who said you wanted to come with me. I was just kidding, jeez. You're an FBI special agent. Okay, Patty. I'm going to try asking you that question again. What do you do when you're at home? Uh, I watch TV and look up stuff on the internet, I guess. Ain't much else to do when you're out in the middle of nowhere. Really? So you clearly love TV shows, but what about movies? Movies? We don't even have a movie theater around here, so I can only watch what I manage to catch on TV. Like what? For some reason, the only movie channel we get at home is the sci-fi one, so I just watch a lot of sci-fi. Like what? What's the last one you saw? Uh, the one with Schwarzenegger. Melvin called you a strange name. CLG, I think. What exactly does that mean? Clever little girl. That's what it stands for, at least. It's nice that he made up his own nickname for me and all, but it sounds kind of weird. I wish he'd call me something normal, like just Patricia or Patty, you know? Patty? Now that name's got a ring to it. I like it. How about Zach and I call you Patty from here on out? Do whatever you like. Weirdo. You're heading to the warehouse, right? You gonna go straight there? Well, I'm not sure yet. I'll have to talk to Zach. We're also on a mission to fell ten maidens, you see. I'm eager to visit Alexis's diner in Lane, but we've only just arrived in this town, so it might be nice to stroll around a bit. What? I thought you came here to investigate. Patty, you're still just a child. Why do you... Patty, is something wrong? I got something to say. When I first met you in the hotel parking lot, you mentioned Saint Rouge, right? If you want to find it, maybe you should track down Professor R. Professor R? Yeah. Professor R owns the jazz bar on the other side of the bayou. How do you know that? Uh, because. Because, huh? Interesting.
Ten maidens, Zack. Let's topple their hourglass figures and complete this oracle once and for all. Oh, my lord. I don't believe I've seen you around here before. <laughs> Sorry, honey, but you can't smoke in here. Since you're with Patricia, I'm guessing you're some friend of Melvin's. He's Agent York from the FBI. This is Alexis, the owner of this restaurant. I'm helping out Agent York in his investigation. We signed a contract. Oh my lord, well ain't that something. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. Everyone's always called me that. Oh my lord. Well, that's got to be the strangest introduction I've ever heard. No wonder everyone in town's been talking about you. Pat I want a chocolate sundae, but no cherries. I want two wafers instead. Don't put too many Rice Krispies on it. Oh, but don't scrimp on the chocolate syrup either. Oh, my Lord. And what'll it be for you, honey? Alexis, are these photos of the town? Oh, you like my pictures? My hobby's collecting snapshots of what our town used to be like. So whenever someone gives me an old picture, I just put it up here on display. Our world these days feels a bit cold to me, you know? Just thought it'd be nice to help folks remember what it was like in the good old days. Zach, did you hear that? The good old days. Even in a remote town that's already far behind the times, there are still people who yearn for the past. She told me what was going on, you know. What? Lise, you don't need to try and hide it from me, honey. Last time she came here, she told me all about it. Some odd fella was following her around. Stalking her like. What kind of fellow? She said he had a really tall shadow. How tall? As tall as an oak tree. Did that ring any bells for you? Sadly, it didn't. I know just about everyone in this here town, but I ain't never seen a man who stands that tall. Maybe it really was an oak tree and she just mistook it for someone. Sometimes the silhouettes of them trees with lots of Spanish moss hanging down make me feel a little funny too. I don't think so, Alexis. Lise said the shadow was following her, correct? That means she must have been stalked by a man as tall as an oak tree. If she had only mistaken an oak tree for a person, she wouldn't have described it that way. She might have said, hmm. It felt like a crowd of people was staring at me. Yes, exactly. She certainly wouldn't have talked about being followed by someone. Thank you, Patty. Zach, this data is all very intriguing, but it isn't the answer we're looking for. We came to knock down the Ten Maidens, remember? Oh, yeah! Booyah! Oh, I got a turkey! Truly mesmerizing, Zach. This is why I never tire of small-town investigations. Same goes for you, right? Agent York, if you're fixing to bowl, you're going to be disappointed. Mrs. Carpenter never lets anyone else use the lane while she's here. Patty, that's exactly what I came to do. You see, Zach and I need to bowl down ten maidens. Fine, go on and try if you wanna, but I'm gonna eat my sundae. Hey! Are you nuts? What's the most addictive drug in the world? How should I know? It's sugar, Patty. Far more people die from obesity and diabetes than from cocaine and heroin. Alexis, would you give her some milk? Oh, my lord. Coming right up, honey. Sugar might be dangerous, but it ain't against the law. You got no right to take that from me, even if you are some FBI agent. Actually, Patty, I do. We signed a contract, remember? I promise to protect you from all the evil in our world. Hey! Mm. 
delicious. What an amazing chocolate sundae. Zach, I think we just uncovered an incredible treasure here. I feel like I could eat one of these every day while we're in this town. Oh, what? Oh. Just hurry and finish up your investigation already. Can't stand being inside this place without a chocolate sundae. Not even for a second. Don't worry, Patty. I'll knock down those ten maidens in the blink of an eye. You just wait here and drink your milk. Meh. I'm so bored. You're free to go home when you like. Zack and I won't mind one bit. Meh, meh, meh. I'm so bored. You're free. Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, howdy, stranger. My, you're a handsome one. You came out here from the city, didn't you? I can always spot you city folk from a mile away. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Would you mind calling me York, ma'am? Oh, so you are from the FBI. <laughs> I thought as much. So sophisticated. <laughs> well, my horoscope in the paper today told me I'd be meeting someone new. And those horoscopes never miss. They're the real deal. Why, well, one even predicted when I'd bowl my first perfect game. Oh, no! Oh, could you stand a bit closer to me? Whoo, that was a close one. If you move any further that way, you'll cast a shadow over the lane. Well, the sheriff did that once, and something horrible happened. The next time I bowled, I got a gutter ball. First time in 12 years, I was mortified. And I am going to make sure nothing like that ever happens again. In our world, some routines lead to good things, while others only lead to the bad. So, you mustn't ever cast a shadow over the lane. Is that understood? It's her routine, Zach. Understand? Just like us and coffee. Incidentally, ma'am, would you mind letting me use this lane, too? I'm investigating the Lee Clarkson murder case. And I need to topple ten maidens, no matter what it takes. No, absolutely not. Not even the FBI can take my lane from me. I haven't given it up once ever since my husband passed away over a decade ago. I'll never break my promise to him. But... Now, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> oh, you like that? That's what I'm talking about. Who's your mama? Zack, it looks like negotiations have failed. Now I'm afraid we have no choice but to force her to let us use her bowling lane. Yes, I know. I won't do anything illegal. Is this place a bowling alley or a restaurant? Oh my lord, what's wrong, honey? Can't tell the difference? It says restaurant right there on the outside. And how do you explain that then? That's so the customers can bowl while they eat. Convenient, ain't it? <laughs> if you want to bowl, honey, you'll have to ask Mrs. Carpenter to open up the lane for you. But if you just want to eat, 
then all you need to do is call my name. Got it? <laughs> oh. Come back in. You ain't gonna find any better Cajun food in all of Louisiana. What'll it be, honey? No. <laughs> oh, coming right up, honey. I'll put my heart and soul into it. Come back. You ain't gonna... What'll it be, honey? Oh, yeah, it never fails. <laughs> Zack, our new friend, appears to be a very superstitious lady. We should try and utilize this trait of hers in order to gain access to the lane for a bit. That was an amazing shot, Mrs. Carpenter. In fact, it may have been the most amazing shot I've ever seen. Speaking of which, where did you happen to find all those neat little items? The ones you used to help you bowl that split just now. Oh, you got a keen eye there, Mr. Special Agent. Taking a liking to my collection, have you? Oh, yes. A great liking. I buy all my charms and power stones from Erzuli Frida. Erzuli Frida? Yes. It's a mystical establishment run by The Mirror. The Mirror? If you're interested, I can mark it on your map for you. Zack, this is it. Erzuli Frida. There must be a treasure trove of dubious trinkets on sale there. We may even be able to find something capable of changing her mind. It really feels like we're in the deep south now, doesn't it? you came here to bowl. Yes, I did. Then why are you leaving? You gave up on trying to convince Mrs. Carpenter to let you play? No, Patty, neither Zack nor I have given up on anything. We're just going to stop by Erzuli Frida. Erzuli Frida? What do you want with that place? What do you know about it, Patty? It's a dumb store that sells stupid voodoo charms and even stupider souvenirs. No one who actually lives here would ever be caught dead there. Daddy even told me to steer clear of it. And why is that? Uh, 
because they sell guns. You mean Erzuli Frida is a gun shop? It's kind of like a gun shop and a voodoo shop had a baby. A voodoo shop? Thank you, Patty. You just helped me make up my mind. We're going to use the power of voodoo to help us steal the right to use that lane. Hey, Zach, it looks like we were right on the money. Tracing the San Rouge distribution route led us right to Louisiana. You know what that means. We've got a hot hand, and Lady Luck's given us far more favor than she ever has before. We just happened to hear news about Lisa's murder while sitting in a bar during our vacation in New Orleans. That certainly wouldn't have happened if we had stayed in D.C. They would have given the case to another special agent, or maybe even to the state, and then we never would have found it. In the end, we would have been shut up in that vast, desolate evidence vault along with all the other cases, marked by nothing but a first-degree murder tag buried in a soggy grave at the bottom of a sea of data. That would have been its fate. Instead, it traveled from person to person until it finally fell right into our lap. Things always work out that way for us. We've traveled all over the United States trying to track down San Rouge. We can't let this chance pass us by, can we, Zach? We need to find some sort of clue before this southern sun melts it all away. Did you notice it yet? The streets in New Orleans were a mess. All busted up and undergoing maintenance. The city was built on a swamp, so the ground is soft. All it takes is some heavy rain to cave it all in. There were also a lot of places where large tree roots were pushing up parts of the asphalt and the sidewalk. Those bumps were dangerous even when we still had our car, remember? But this town is different. The streets are all paved so cleanly that we can skate along them without a care in the world. And there's hardly any trash or graffiti to be found anywhere. The Clarksons truly do control this place, for better or worse. It's a good example of how allowing certain people to rise to power can have positive effects as well. Also, don't you find that Southern people are remarkably friendly, even to total strangers? Both here and in New Orleans, I've been amazed at how cordial everyone is. Is it just the way things are down here? You certainly don't see that sort of thing in New York or DC. They never stop to chit-chat, especially when ordering food. They only say what's necessary, without any decoration. A customer only makes eye contact with the waiter about once every three times they interact. But that's just how it is. Isn't that right, Zach? The human relationships here are as fluid as an inorganic mechanism running on the smoothest, purest oil there is. And it feels strangely comfortable. After spending time in New Orleans and coming here, I think I'm starting to like the Southern disposition. They even have their own breed of bizarre crimes. And besides, the New Orleans area is famous for its paranormal culture. I'm sure it'll entertain us somehow. It's still a bit of a ways off, but perhaps we can also do a little case study for our post-retirement plan. What, you still think it's too early for that? I wouldn't say so. It's never too early to be prepared. Come on, I know you're with me on this one, Zach. So you clearly love TV shows, but what about movies? Movies? We don't even have a movie theater around here, so I can only watch what I manage to catch on TV. Like what? For some reason, the only movie channel we get at home is the sci-fi one, so I just watch a lot of sci-fi. Like what? What's the last one you saw? Uh, the one with Schwarzenegger, where there's all these clones. The Sixth Day, 2000, directed by Roger Spottiswood. You must be very well versed in sci-fi if you can appreciate an Arnold S. film. I thought it was way too easy for them to make more clones. And you'd never see a clumsy investigation like that on CSI. That's right. It's realistic. Everything about that film is so realistic. It may be difficult for a child to understand. But, Patty, that's not your fault. All of Arnold S.'s films are filled with hyper-realism, you know. On top of that, Roger Spottiswood is a director who excels in dealing with hardcore subject matter. Turner and Hooch, Stop or My Mom Will Shoot, each film features one of the toughest tag teams you'll ever find. I can see why it's beyond you, though. No, what I'm trying to say is, Schwarzenegger's character was just a pilot, right? Why was he so strong? It's okay, Patty. You don't need to try and act like an adult to impress me. I didn't understand the charm of Arnold S. films when I was your age, either. You need to take your time and slowly reel the film in. Do that? And Arnold S. will greet you with a big, warm smile. 
Whatever, just stop calling him Arnold S., okay? It's irritating me. Zack, she's at a sensitive age. We both know full well that this is the official way to refer to the film star, but she isn't used to it, so it's bothering her. <sighs> when in Rome, Schwarzenegger will greet you with a big, warm smile. Zack, my mouth feels weird. How many fingers do you think we'd need to count the number of people who actually call him Schwarzenegger? We'll just have to stomach it for her sake, Zack. Patty, we're investigating here. I think it's about time we cut the chit-chat and got back to work. What? You're the one who brought it up. And you hardly even let me say anything. A voodoo shop. It's a voodoo shop. Just looks like a dumb souvenir shop to me. Of course it does, Patty. You're much too young to understand the true value of such a place. is all kid stuff. It's just a bunch of charms. I'm allowed to watch TV and go on the internet, but I ain't allowed in here? My daddy makes no sense sometimes. You agree, right, Agent York? This is all just kid stuff. Look at this, Zack. All the mysticism of the Deep South gathered up into one quaint little shop. This is a hundred times more exciting than the FBI evidence vault. It's a vast treasure chest. So much to study, so much to learn. Thou art a seeker. And I see the object of thy desire. Doth this be what thou seekest? I could sell it to thee now. And only now. Surely fortune shall not bless thee with another chance. Purchase this and know that thy wishes shall be granted. That's crazy. Even I can tell you're getting cheated, Agent York. I disagree, Patty. This person can be trusted. I've been studying people for quite a while, so I can tell. That figurine is connected to our future. My price is true. What say thee? I'll buy it. Thou art a man of refined taste. I am loath to part with it, but twould be a fool's errand to keep it from such a keen-eyed soul. What's wrong with you? No normal person would ever buy a piece of junk like that, not even at a garage sale. Marvelous, isn't it, Zack? What a treasure. 
I can't wait to use it. Use it? Where? How? Isn't it obvious, Patty? I'm going to put it in front of Mrs. Carpenter's house. In front of her house? Yes. I'm sure this figurine will stop her right in her tracks. And that'll give us a chance to finally topple the Ten Maidens. Are you serious? Of course I am. And so is Zack. Aren't you? I'm seriously wondering if I should quit helping you out with this. Much shall serve thee well here. I can see it. Thy return is imminent, if Thou hast discovered the very purpose of my emporium, that is. Whoa! That was close. Ah! Uh. Well, look at you, all standing there like you're expecting me to apologize. It's your fault for not paying attention. What? Got a moment? Can't say I do. I'm in a hurry here. I won't take up too much of your time. I'd just like to ask you a few questions. I said I'm in a hurry, Pickerwood. Now get out of my way. Patty, who was that? Kalina Clarkson. P.J. Clarkson's second daughter, and Lisa's mother. Zack, we've found ourselves a Clarkson. Oh no, she's not here. My dolly. Oh, she's not here. My dolly isn't here. One of the key persons in this case just came out of the woodwork to meet us. Now things are really getting interesting. Isn't that right, Zack? Okay, Patty. I'm going to try asking you that question again. What do you do when you're at home? Uh, I watch TV and look up stuff on the internet, I guess. Ain't much else to do when you're out in the middle of nowhere. Really? For some reason, I envisioned you working hard to take care of all the chores around the house. Well, of course I do stuff like that, too. But doesn't everyone? Why bother talking about it? Other kids your age don't help out their parents. They're too busy talking with their friends on the phone or through emails. That's stupid. I don't get why everyone's so obsessed with taking pictures of themselves. Then they send them to their friends just to get approval. Talk about cringeworthy. 
How do you prefer to boost your self-esteem then? I don't need to. I have my family. And besides, my daddy's the town sheriff. All I need to be happy is a normal life. That's awfully mature of you. Everyone else is just childish. I'm totally normal. Okay then. So what do you do after you finish all your chores? You don't turn on CNN and pour yourself some bourbon, do you? CNN? That's kid stuff. What I watch is way more adult than that. Like what? Live sports? You just don't get it, Agent York. Full House, Friends, Beverly Hills 90210, sitcoms. Sitcoms are an all-in-one package. Dreams, love, life lessons, science fiction. They've got everything you'd ever want. And some cable channels just show reruns all day long. It's the best. Oh, but my favorite TV show is this old one called MacGyver. The main character is cute and smart. I don't know his real name, but I like him. Oh, and I also like Gil Grissom from CSI. I just think it's adorable how he keeps maggots inside his fridge. Thank you, Patty. That was very informative. Well, what do you think, Zach? Her tastes are... Hmm, they're a bit hard to describe. Wait, don't even say it. I know exactly what you're thinking, and I'm in full agreement. that he'll be the key to uncovering this case's mysteries. That's what my soul tells me. <sighs> By the way, Zack, Hoongan feels very familiar to me. You might even say he reminds me of someone. Yes, I think I see the connection now. A cheerful, wise, yet also mysterious African-American who appeared in a variety of different films. My mind must be overlapping him with the skeletal gentleman. Do you remember his name? Ah, yes, that's it. Scatman Crothers. In 1980, he played Dick Halloran in The Shining. And in 1983, he was in The Twilight Zone. He played the man who invited all those elderly folks into a strange new world. I knew it, Zack. There's definitely a connection here. But he's a bit too old. Scatman's more of a sage character. Our skeletal gentleman is a little younger, isn't he? Yes. They have different body types, but what about Forrest Whitaker? He made his debut in 1982 in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Then he was in Platoon and The Color of Money, both released in 1986, followed by Good Morning Vietnam in 1987. Oh, and he was in Bird in 1988. What an impressive filmography. Across the 80s, he transformed his rough, young image into a more cheerful, wiser one. That's why the 80s can also be described as the decade that built up Forrest Whitaker's career. I firmly believe that he'll win an Academy Award for Best Actor someday. Yes, I'm sure it's right around the corner. He'll most likely wait until the time is ripe. Maybe around next year, then he'll unleash his best performance yet. Zack, I could go on about famous actors forever, but we have a case to solve here. Let's table this discussion for now. Did you notice it yet? The streets in New Orleans were a mess. All busted up and undergoing maintenance. The city was built on a swamp, so the ground is soft. All it takes is some heavy rain to cave it all in. There were also a lot of places where large tree roots were pushing up parts of the asphalt and the sidewalk. Those bumps were dangerous even when we still had our car, remember? But this town is different. The streets are all paved so cleanly that we can skate along them without a care in the world. And there's hardly any trash or graffiti to be found anywhere. The Clarksons truly do control this place, for better or worse. It's a good example of how allowing certain people to rise to power can have positive effects as well. Also, don't you find that Southern people are remarkably friendly, even to total strangers? Both here and in New Orleans, I've been amazed at how cordial everyone is. Is it just the way things are down here? You certainly don't see that sort of thing in New York or DC. They never stop to chit-chat, especially when ordering food. They only say what's necessary, without any decoration. A customer only makes eye contact with the waiter about once every three times they interact. 
But that's just how it is. Isn't that right, Zach? The human relationships here are as fluid as an inorganic mechanism running on the smoothest, purest oil there is. And it feels strangely comfortable. After spending time in New Orleans and coming here, I think I'm starting to like the Southern disposition. They even have their own breed of bizarre crimes. And besides, the New Orleans area is famous for its paranormal culture. I'm sure it'll entertain us somehow. It's still a bit of a ways off, but... Perhaps we can also do a little case study for our post-retirement plan. What, you still think it's too early for that? I wouldn't say so. It's never too early to be prepared. Come on, I know you're with me on this one, Zach. Looks like we were right on the money. Tracing the Saint Rouge distribution route led us right to Louisiana. You know what that means. We've got a hot hand, and Lady Luck's given us far more favor than she ever has before. We just happened to hear news about Lisa's murder while sitting in a bar during our vacation in New Orleans. That certainly wouldn't have happened if we had stayed in D.C. They would have given the case to another special agent, or maybe even to the state, and then we never would have found it. In the end, it would have been shut up in that vast, desolate evidence vault along with all the other cases, marked by nothing but a first-degree murder tag buried in a soggy grave at the bottom of a sea of data. That would have been its fate. Instead, it traveled from person to person until it finally fell right into our lap. Things always work out that way for us. We've traveled all over the United States trying to track down San Rouge. We can't let this chance pass us by, can we, Zach? We need to find some sort of clue before this southern sun melts it all away. Mr. York, <laughs> that was mighty quick. The special agent does it again. <laughs> you sure don't waste any time. I bet my CLG's got a lot to learn from you. Uh, uh, by the way, Mr. York, looks to me like you aren't packing anything. I was on vacation in New Orleans before I happened to stop by here. <laughs> well, shoot, that won't do. Here. I got some I think you'll like. <laughs> I call him Mr. Alligator. Bad ass, ain't he? It's a tranquilizer gun for the gators. And here's a radio. With this, you won't have to worry about any expensive roaming fees. Might take you a while to get used to him, but you'll get it. Try letting him rip a few times. Ain't no need to hold back out here. This is an intriguing weapon. For a tranquilizer gun, it really packs a punch. But I'm afraid I'll decline. After all, this town is peaceful, isn't it? Well, sure is peaceful. At least the humans are. But the animals? <laughs> are a different story. Uh, remember what I named it? There are some real mean-ass gators out there in the swamps. And every now and then, they wander into town. One of them even went and ate a kid once. It happened a long time ago, but still. One chomp's all it takes. They swallow down every last bit of you. Poor kid's parents didn't even know what to put in his coffin. The worst part is, that taught the gators just how tasty we humans are. So now, those suckers just attack on sight. Man-eating crocodiles will feast tonight. In Blood Swamp! You know he's fibbing, right? Gators don't attack folks. I never heard about no kid getting swallowed by a gator. Actually, Patricia, you're wrong. I'm what? 
Alligators do attack people, and it could happen in any town. Huh? Alligator, 1980, directed by Louis Teague. It takes place in the Midwest, I believe. A teenage girl's pet alligator gets flushed down the toilet. Then, in the sewer, it feeds on the corpses of dogs that were used as test subjects for an experimental growth formula. After growing over 30 feet, it finally starts to go after humans. It's an extremely, yes, an extremely edifying movie. Back when I first saw it, I had a pet hamster. Hey, Agent York, what's your first order of business? You're in charge now, remember? Well said, Patricia. I nearly lost sight of my true goal. Melvin, I couldn't help but notice the name on the side of that truck. This facility is connected to the victim, isn't it? Oh! Oh, right. Yeah. I reckon I'd better start from there. I'm gonna tell it to you straight right from the beginning, Mr. York. As you guessed, this warehouse is run by the Clarksons. The victim's father, Danny Clarkson, is the one who manages the whole place. Okay, but why did he choose to store her body in his own warehouse, right? Well, that's because there ain't no other place to store it. Our town has a clinic inside a church, but no more. Whenever someone kicks the bucket, we just bury him in the graveyard right outside of town. But not this time. We got a murder on our hands this time. We need to give Lisa's body an autopsy and keep it stored, right? So we had no choice but to rent out a corner of this warehouse. I see. So that's what led to the ingenious choice to store the victim's body in a facility that her family owns. Anywho, this is where the real story begins. Truth is, a few days before you got here, Lisa's body went missing. Missing? Yeah. All of a sudden, poof. Did you leave the warehouse unlocked? I most certainly did not. I locked the whole place up and made sure no one could get inside. No one stole the original key, and I couldn't find any fingerprints at the scene. So, in other words, this is a locked room mystery. The body of a beautiful young girl walks at mid- I Hey! <laughs> all right, all right, CLG. Reckon I should have told you about this earlier when you first said you wanted to come here. <laughs> it just didn't seem like the time or places I remember. Anywho, how about we call it a day and head back to my office? You can go through all the files there. No, thank you. This is what I came to investigate. But Lisa's body isn't here anymore. You sure? That doesn't bother me one bit, Melvin. You see, I met a skeletal gentleman on my way here, and he was kind enough to give me an oracle. By the way, Patty, what do you usually do when you're at home? Is this an interrogation? Oh, no. I just figured that since we're working together now, it'd be a good idea to learn a little more about you. Should an adult male like you really be asking a little girl this kind of question? I feel like I heard a story about this sort of thing on the news once. There's a time and a place for everything. You know exactly who I am, and I've also introduced myself to your father. Besides, you're the one who said you wanted to come with me. I was just kidding, jeez. You're an FBI special agent. Why would I ever need to worry? You shouldn't automatically trust someone just because they're an FBI special agent. One's profession and one's personality are completely separate things. For example, one special agent may fall spiritually in love with a genius criminal who enjoys the taste of human flesh. That's Hannibal. You pulled that straight out of a movie. Just because it's a film doesn't mean it isn't deeply rooted in reality. You can't judge people solely based on where they work or how they look. You need to think hard and decide things for yourself. Fine. So... <laughs> you holding up okay, CLG? You sure you don't want to wait outside? Ooh, I'll be fine, Daddy. 
Just make sure you don't take your eyes off of him. He's so selfish and inconsiderate. I'm still not convinced he's actually a real FBI agent. Look, he's talking to himself again. Jack, this is the ambiguous zero. The deep freeze. Let's hurry up and find that flying serpent, shall we? Hey, Mr. York, you sure you want to keep investigating this place even though we know the body ain't here? Of course, Melvin. The skeletal gentleman gave me an oracle, remember? <laughs> it's... Skele what? Ooh, he's just joking, Daddy. You can't take him seriously. <sighs> huh? Well, was that really a joke, Mr. York? <laughs> well, I'll be. I see you've been hiding some real charm into that whole FBI routine. Sorry, Melvin, but I'm dead serious. Times I come here. Yes, it's quite the fun house. Truly a dazzling place. Meat entertainment. That's the only way to describe it. Woven together by life, frozen in time, a visceral musical. Symphony. We eat all this in order to survive. Yes, truly a symphony. Life and death resonating together. Yeah. It's really cool. Uh, cool? <laughs> Whoa now, CLG. Since when were you interested in this kind of stuff? What are you so surprised for, Daddy? I'm more mature than you are. I've seen way more realistic corpses on CSI, you know. <laughs> oh, man. At first, Zack, I was shocked by the notion of storing a victim's body alongside food. But as I gaze upon this hanging garden, I realize it's just another scene of violent, depraved murder. Yes, all we need to do is change our point of view and things will expose themselves in utterly new ways. Hey, uh, Mr. York, this is kinda, um, yeah. Melvin, if you have something to say, then just go on and say it. Otherwise, you'll simply be insulting this beautiful landscape. You, you think this is beautiful? Oh, yes. It's the abnormal world that supports our normal lives. I think that's wonderful. Don't you? Besides, look, Patricia seems to be handling this a lot better than you are. Well, uh, you see, I ain't too good with this grotesque stuff. Don't let it get to you, Daddy. Whew. Everyone has at least one thing they're afraid of. Even you. Right, Agent York? Something I'm afraid of? Yeah, that's right. You gotta have at least one thing. Hmm. Like clowns. Clowns are so funny. How could anyone be scared of them? Zombies? Love them. A bucket full of worms. I could squeeze them with my bare hands. The sound of screeching glass. Doesn't bother me. Then... They cling to your skin like putrid leeches, robbing you of much more than your vitality. The wet socks. Melvin, you're a genius. Melvin, I'd like to take this opportunity to ask you a personal question. In the hotel parking lot when I first met you, the picture you had on your dashboard happened to catch my eye. Was that your wife? Oh, her? Yeah, that's my lady, all right. Candy. Her name's Candy. The prettiest girl in town, which makes me the happiest boy. 
a shooting star landed in a rural town right on top of a man who now has a meteor-struck heart. You always keep her photo with you? <sighs> you bet I do. The truth is, Candy's a little sick right now. She can't even leave the house no more. So I always keep her photograph with me. Kind of feels like we're always together, you know? I see. You care for your wife a great deal. But this means that... Yeah, that's right. My mama had me before she married daddy. But it don't matter. He's still my real daddy to me. <laughs> oh, thank you, CLG. And you're my pride and joy. Well, Zach, isn't this a heartwarming scene? But there's one thing I just can't get out of my mind. Don't you think that photograph looked a bit too old? Perhaps Candy is already... No, let's not think about that. It might be a private matter just like you, Zach. We're almost to the morgue. Uh, the temporary one, at least. You don't need to keep correcting yourself, Melvin. I know, but I'm starting to feel guilty all of a sudden. You know, from an ethical perspective. It just ain't right to store a teenage girl's body in a place like this. Still, rephrasing your sentences won't fix anything at this point. It's a shallow concern, really. Yeah, I know, I know. But shoot, I just felt like the least I could do was try to phrase it better. Whew. Don't bother trying to convince him, Daddy. I've only been working with him for a little while, and I already figured out what his deal is. He ain't right in the head. Whew. The FBI should add a new requirement to their hiring process. Must possess humanity. Here we are, Zack. The morgue. They stored the victim's body in a cold storage warehouse operated by her family. I'd love to shake the hand of whoever came up with that one. Hey, Agent York. Did you just come here to laugh at rural officers who are doing the best they can? We don't have any special facilities like you people. What else did you expect us to do, huh? Don't compare us with city folk. This is Lacare. And maybe you're just disappointed that you didn't get to see the bloated, decomposing corpse of a young girl. Sorry, you're right. I went a bit too far just now. But don't misunderstand. I honestly think it's a fantastic idea. I'd never try and bully your daddy. <laughs> Better not. Thank you for understanding. Look at the thermometer, Zach. It's at 10 degrees Fahrenheit, or a minus 12.2 degrees Celsius. This must not be the ambiguous zero. Zach, these are human footprints, and they're extremely large. Yes, Zach, I agree. These footprints must belong to someone who's used to walking around in cold temperatures. This frost is shaped like something we're very used to seeing. That's right, a body bag. Lisa's body must have been left here, but there are no signs that the bag was dragged away, so our criminal must possess monstrous strength. An icicle. Never thought I'd see one of these down in the south. These pallets are a mess. Looks like this area isn't used often. Still, the idea to store a body here, it's a novel, sophisticated idea unlike anything I'd ever come up with. Boxes that got left behind. I can't tell what's inside. What do you think, Zach? I'm gonna go with... Okra. Yeah, okra. I'm sure it must be okra. That's a staple of the South. 
Zach, can you see that? Look closely. That's right. There are four imprints in the frost on the top of this. It's hard to believe, but I think these are fingerprints. Yes, Zach, that would lead one to believe that the body napper is a giant who's over 10 feet tall. Seems like our flying serpent isn't here. Is this everything, Melvin? There aren't any other rooms in this warehouse? No special rooms? Well, there is the luxury foods warehouse. Luxury foods? Why didn't you say so earlier? <sighs> just thought you wanted to see where the body... Uh, I mean, I just thought you were only interested in warehouse number two. Besides, it's underground, so it's even colder than this. Uh, you sure you really want to go down there? You could darn well freeze to death. All life will come to an end in the icebound zone. <laughs> you feel me? Let's head there at once. I'm sure that must be where we're meant to go. But what about searching for Lisa's body? All we need to do is find a ten-foot-tall man with monstrous strength. That giant knows where she is. Ten-foot-tall? But finding the flying serpent is more important right now. Now please, guide me to the Luxury Foods Warehouse at once. These luxury foods are most likely being used in local Cajun cuisine. I'm so excited to see what we'll find. Aren't you, Zach? A ten-foot-tall giant? All right. Now that one's gotta be a joke. Right, Mr. York? Uh, that elevator needs a key, Mr. York. Do you have one? Actually, no. I didn't think you'd ever want to go down there. So I didn't bother to go and get one. Well then, would you go and get one now? Uh. Yeah, yeah. C.O.G., I know. Tell it to him straight. Uh, thing is, Mr. York, you know the Clarksons? The folks who own this place? Well, they don't too much like the police. And they sure as hell don't like them when they're my color. It was, uh, real hard for me to get permission to open up this place for you to search through. So they ain't gonna be too happy if I go back to them now, asking for another key. What should we do then? Let's just find a worker here who can lower the elevator for us instead. All they need to do is take a break from their work for a couple minutes. And what am I supposed to do? Just stand here and pretend like nothing's happening? Yeah, you FBI folks are good at that, right? That's always what I see you doing on TV. Zach, I think we can move this. Better check back here as well, just to be on the safe side.
Zach, the human ability to adapt is a frightening thing. Some humans have the power to sleep anywhere as long as they set their minds to it. Now we should be able to operate the elevator. No need to worry. This facility no longer has a body to steal. What else do they have to lose? A few cans of crawfish? I feel bad for him, but it's for the sake of the investigation. I'll write him a letter of apology later. Mr. York, did you find a key? Ha! Now that's my special agent. There ain't no stopping you. Wanna head straight down? You bet. Let's sally forth, Melvin. Zach, look at that thermometer. Zero degrees Fahrenheit, or minus 17.7 degrees Celsius. This is the ambiguous zero. Hey, Avery! Open the damn door, Avery! It ain't no use, Mr. York. Once Avery starts working on something, that's all he sees. He just tunes out everything else. We'll have to wait until he finishes and comes out to us, I reckon. Or we could come back tomorrow. I disagree, Melvin. Time may be on our side, but that doesn't mean we should waste it. You gave me Mr. Alligator precisely for moments like these, didn't you? Wait, Mr. York! Those tranquilizers may be non-lethal, but it's still dangerous to use them on humans. Of course, Melvin. I never said I was going to shoot him. You're going to shoot some meat to get his attention. I'm right, ain't I? This is Mr. York, an agent from the FBI. Hi, Avery. I'm Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Uh, please, call me York. York? Uh, you a smarty pants, hmm? <laughs> He's shy than he looks. Come on, just settle down, Avery. Tell him what this here place is for. Lots of expensive food here. Yep. Mighty precious to the Clarksons, so I gotta guard it. I see. So you're this area's keeper? Oh, I help with the research, too. I do like research. Mm -hmm. Research? What are you talking about, Avery? This doesn't look like a lab to me. Oh, ain't no lab. It's a warehouse. Ain't no lab. Uh, smarty pant scientist does the research. <laughs> I ain't no smarty pants, no. <sighs> He's a bit slow in the mind, but he ain't a bad guy. Oh. Your story about the giant who carried Lisa. Don't tell me you think it's him. I mean, it's true that he's free to come and go as he pleases in this warehouse, but... No, as far as I can tell, he's just a bit over 6'5". The one who moved Lisa's body 
must be at least ten feet tall. He's clearly too short. <sighs> too short, huh? Well, if you ever happen to find a man who makes him look small, I'd sure like to meet him. Huh. Uh, ladies. <laughs> what? H hey, cut it out! Uh, Lise, why? Avery, that's not Lise. Not Lise? This is Melvin's daughter, and my precious assistant. Unfortunately, Elise is no longer with us. Lise! Lise! My fault! My fault! He, uh, I guess he's sort of like Lise, you know? See, the poor fella's got himself a child like mine. You know how normal kids tease other kids in order to get attention? Well, with this big lug, sometimes folks who don't know him too well see something and end up calling the police. But I know that deep down, he's got a good heart. Hey, Mr. York, I'll keep him busy, but I'd appreciate it if you'd hurry this particular inspection along. Just holler at me if you find anything. I reckon that'll make it easier for you to go do your thing, yeah? Melvin, I think you're finally starting to catch on. I'll keep an eye on him while we're here. Just relax, Avery. We'll get out of your way as soon as we're finished. And Dewey. Now here's some real Cajun cuisine. The way these sausages are linked up, they almost look like a serpent. But it's hard to imagine them flying. Let's move on, Zack. There are torn off claws and legs scattered all over the ground. I doubt they'll fly anytime soon. I can't tell which ones are from crawfish and which parts are from shrimp. How about you, Zack? Cans of holy trinity paste. Onions, bell peppers, and celery. The absolute basics for any Cajun dish. This product combines them all into some sort of paste. Oof. People actually buy this garbage? Even the name sounds idiotic. Zach, I just made an eternal promise with myself. If I ever happen to come across any food prepared with this paste, I vow to never call it Cajun food. Personally, I'd rather have a cocktail filled with fresh ones. We hunt for more materials than we can eat and freeze them over long periods of time, the human race gives terror a whole new meaning. Hung alligators. I suppose in a way they sort of look like flying serpents, oh, but that's pushing it. Remember, we're in a dark basement here. They'll never reach the sky. Avery, this box looks special. Clocks and food. Mm. For their home. Melvin, is this the Clarkson's family crest? Oh, the dragonfly? Yeah, that's the Clarkson's mark, all right. It ain't no big deal, though. You can find those all over town. Is that so? Well, yeah. They pretty much run all of this town's major industries. Yeah. I do believe they own just about everything there is to own. So their word is law. They got the whole darn town tattooed with their dragonflies. I can't even walk a few steps without seeing one. Zack, this dragonfly is our flying serpent. The flying serpent owns this town. They're related to Lise Clarkson, our victim. And Hoongan's oracle pointed us toward their family crest. The Clarksons must be deeply intertwined with this case. 
Melvin, Patricia, I think I've had enough of this frozen world. Let's head back out to that merciless sun. Well, what are you waiting for? I can't bear to spend another second down here. Whew. So, what do we do now, Mr. York? Zack and I will take things from here. Uh, then what should I do? Tend to your sick wife? I don't know. You're free to do as you please. I'll stop by the sheriff's office when I need your help again. I suppose that's what I'll do then. It'll sure make Candy happy. <laughs> but I am the sheriff of this town, so I do intend to get some work done. I know. How about I search for Lisa's body while you're busy? Not a bad idea. Just be careful that you don't get attacked by a barefooted giant. Hey, don't scare me like that. Why do you keep talking about that giant anyway? You really think some giant was responsible for all this? Melvin, don't be silly. Of course I do. Just when I thought you were starting to catch on. Disappointing, to say the least. But how can you be so sure? I want to see some proof. Proof number one. The footprints that led up to where Lisa's body originally was were made with bare feet. None of the prints looked similar to those of common insulated boots, and the arches of the feet were visible. The person who carried out Lisa's body must have had very large feet. I'd say they were at least 16 inches. Proof number two. I found fingerprints on the cord of one of the hanging lights in the warehouse. The fingerprints weren't aimed up from below. They were coming directly from the side. Clearly, the giant moved the light because it was in his way. He pinched the cord with his fingers. Proof number three. There was nothing else found in the vicinity where Lisa's body was stored. This means the giant carried her out without dragging her across the floor. But there's only one set of footprints. The only conclusion I can draw from this evidence is that a barefooted giant standing over 10 feet tall carried Lisa's body out. That concludes the entirety of my proof. Any objections, Melvin? But there ain't no way a human could ever be that tall. Have you seen every human alive with your own eyes? Well then, you need to forget all your preconceived notions when embarking on an investigation. Whether you come face to face with a 10-foot giant or a skeletal gentleman, you always need to accept everything that comes to you with a clear mind. Do that, and eventually the truth will reveal itself to you. You're a smart kid, I'm sure you understand. <laughs> well, I'll be damned! <laughs> I'm sorry I ever doubted you, Mr. FBI Special Agent, sir. A sharp eye and flawless observational skills. Uncovering the truth with a heady intuition. I won't ever question you again. Heck, I'll do whatever you say. That's it, Melvin. I'm glad you finally caught on. Okay. Time to go, Patty. You know this town well, so I'd like you to accompany me from now on. Patty? Zack, we found the Flying Serpent. Now we simply need to locate the Ten Maidens. It's time to head on to Alexis's Diner and Lane. Want to hear about all the depraved serial killers I've encountered so far? No, thank you. Forget what I said. Ugh. By the way, Zack, Boomgun feels very familiar to me. You might even say he reminds me of someone. Yes, I think I see the connection. A 
cheerful, wise, yet also mysterious African-American who appeared in a variety of different films. My mind must be overlapping him with the skeleton gentleman. Do you remember his name? Ah, yes, that's it. Scatman Crothers. In 1980, he played Dick Halloran in The Shining. And in 1983, he was in The Twilight Zone. He played the man who invited all those elderly folks into a strange new world. I knew it. There's definitely a connection here. But he's a bit too old. Scatman's more of a sage character. Our skeletal gentleman is a little younger, isn't he? Yes. They have different body types, but what about Forrest Whitaker? He made his debut in 1982 in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Then he was in Platoon and The Color of Money, both released in 1986 followed by Good Morning Vietnam in 1987. Oh, and he was in Bird in 1988. What an impressive filmography. Across the 80s, he transformed his rough, young image into a more cheerful, wiser one. That's why the 80s can also be described as the decade that built up Forrest Whitaker's career. I firmly believe that he'll win an Academy Award for Best Actor someday. Yes, I'm sure it's right around the corner. He'll most likely wait until the time is ripe. Maybe around next year, then he'll unleash his best performance yet. Zack, I could go on about famous actors forever, but we have a case to solve here. Let's table this discussion for now. This town sure is peaceful, Zack. Yes, I know. I know what you're about to say. But that's why we're here protect this piece. Isn't that right, Zach? Yes. Perfect. Oh, my dear lost lamb. What are you doing there? Oh, this? This is all part of the Lease Clarkson murder investigation. Something important, hmm? Oh, yes. Very important. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. That's what everyone calls me. But what should I call you? I am Tyrone Sanders, pastor of the Lucare Evangelical Church. And what business does a pastor like yourself have in a place like this? Well, I live over across the way there. Do you have an intimate relationship with Mrs. Carpenter? Why? Why in the world would you suggest such a pitiful thing? Lordy, lordy. How could I ever become intimate with one who is so devoid of faith? After she lost her husband, she stopped coming to church. All she does all day is bowl. She even pruned the shrubbery in that pitiful fashion. Yes, truly pitiful. Mm. And did you see that hideous ox of a dog she owns? Pitiful with a capital P. I tried speaking with her, but she shows no intention of changing her ways. Yes, I fear she never lends an ear when the good Lord reaches out to her. Indeed, I pity her from the bottom of my heart. So you've been spying on her out of pity? Spying? I'm merely awaiting the chance to lend her a helping hand. You best be careful, too. This town harbors much more danger than you're aware of. If you ever find yourself in need of salvation, feel free to stop by our church whenever you like. Our church also functions as a clinic. Someday, you may need our help. Zack, did you hear that? Pitiful. Try saying that to someone in the city. They'd instantly slap you with slander or defamation charges. 
you'd be up to your neck in court papers. I doubt I'll tire of this town anytime soon. We should consider stopping by that church whenever we get a chance. King size, made in France. It looks soft enough to alleviate all our exhaustion. Zach, even though the Bureau is paying for this, it's still tiring to have to live out of hotel rooms day after day. Nothing beats getting a good night's sleep in your own room. That food was unbelievable. I see you weren't lying about undergoing training at that famous restaurant. Ah, now you just trying to embarrass me, mister. I still appreciate it, though. And you must have undergone some rigorous training in order to gain such refined technique. You put so much care into preparing everything just right. And your manipulation of that low-temp flame in order to bring out such a pleasant fragrance... simply perfect. This is true Creole food. You have to tell me now, which famous restaurant did you train yourself at? <laughs> Come on, chef, we need to know. Zach and I are begging you. Ah, you drive a hard bargain, mister. All right, I reckon I can give you a hint. Really? Oh, just a hint now. Fine, we'll take it. Just say it. It's the restaurant that serves the most famous fried chicken in all of Louisiana. Crispy, crunchy, you know what I'm talking about? Bonafide fried chicken. No, you can't mean... Oh, yeah! I'll bet they worked you pretty hard. Mm-hmm, you bet you. So that's how you acquired the mental fortitude necessary to cook such amazing food. Oh, my time there taught me just how tough city life really is. Amazing. Zach, did you hear all that? That's an incredible story, David. You really are a true chef. Both Zach and I have given you our official approval. Whether it's a restaurant or a hotel, the key to charming your customers is how you present your bathroom. I'm sure you feel the same way, don't you, Zach? Now this, this is the kind of bathroom a person can really get excited about. It might even trump the one we saw in that drug dealer's house in Austin. Remember? The art piece on display in there utilized the natural curves of human ribs in such a novel way. It was truly brilliant. Melody always gets stuck in my head. Yes, it's a devilish song, isn't it? Just be quiet. How pitiful. Are you lost, little lamb? It worked like a charm, Patty. Mrs. Carpenter is nowhere to be seen. Now's our chance to topple the Ten Maidens, Zack. Oh my lord, y'all are back? Listen up, y'all ain't gonna believe this. What's wrong? 
Mrs. Carpenter hasn't come in. For the first time in 10 years, what could it be? I just hoping nothing bad happened to her. She's fine. You have my guarantee. Oh, my Lord. I reckon if an FBI agent like you is convinced, then I should be too. What did I tell you, Patty? Value is a relative thing. We needed to find that figurine no matter the cost. You really wanted to bowl that bad? They don't have bowling alleys in the city no more? Wrong, Patty. I have absolutely no interest in bowling. Tossing a heavy ball at lined up pins? Where's the fun in that? You can't even call this a sport. It's a game for cavemen. Nonsense. Utter nonsense. Then can I throw the ball instead? Absolutely not, Patty. This is part of the investigation. I need to do this myself, no matter how stupid it may be. You're the one who's stupid. Sure looks like you're having fun to me. Looks like I finally earned myself a rival. That was just a stroke of luck, Mrs. Carpenter. Despite how I may seem, I've never been any good at any of the ball-based sports that exist here on our planet. Oh, no! You can't fool me! I can tell the FBI's giving you very special training. If I gave you a few lessons on top of that, I'm sure you'd be able to go semi-pro. Semi-pro? That's right. That's what I said. Not pro, but semi-pro. Yes, semi-pro. You'd never be able to go pro. You don't have what it takes. You could become a semi-pro if you tried really hard, though. Well, I guarantee it. Come back and see me when you feel like giving it a try. I'm sure my husband would forgive me if I let someone like you borrow my lane. Well, we gotta give youngsters a chance to grow. That's what we always say. I could actually go semi-pro? I'd take her words with a grain of salt if I were you. Patricia, I can understand why you'd be envious of my talents, but you don't need to worry. You have your own unique talents, just like any other person. You shouldn't have to feel inferior every time you look at me. You're unbelievable. Are you sure you don't need to get your head checked out? It's so strange, Zack. 
I feel like I'm discovering a new side to myself. By the way, Mr. Special Agent, you said you're investigating the Lee Clarkson incident, yes? In that case, there's something you should know. That poor girl, Lise, she was a druggie. And she was into the really bad stuff. Red powder. Oh, no wonder the FBI picked you. You already figured out that much. <laughs> well, the reason Lise turned into such a little hoodlum is because of her mother, Galena. Galena? Mm-hmm. A mother only in name. Oh, as far as I'm concerned, she's still nothing more than a child herself. Oh, dressing up in fancy clothes, always out on the town somewhere. Children giving birth to children. If these aren't the end times, well, I don't know what is. Oh, and they were always cooped up in that jazz bar. Galena wouldn't know proper parenting if it hit her in the tush. Zach, the jazz bar. We first heard about it from Patricia. It must be deeply connected with this case and the red powder. It must be San Rouge. Following the oracle and felling the ten maidens sure paid off, didn't it? So, Mr. Special Agent, are you all finished here? Yes, Mrs. Carpenter. Thanks to you, I've gotten a new lead. Oh, then how about you mosey on and let me get back to my bowling? I need to bowl my first game of the day or else I'm gonna get rusty. Well, what are you waiting for? Get a move on, shoo, shoo! <laughs> when the sun awakens, catch the tip of the baby bear's tail at the false altar. At the entrance to the other world will reveal itself to you. Zack, it's another oracle. It appears that we're being guided by a mysterious power. This oracle is a simple one. The false Alter. You already know what this is, right? The place where Lise Clarkson's body was first discovered. She was found under a bridge at some sort of altar as if she was being worshipped. That's what Chef David said, right? When the sun awakens, refers to dawn, of course, and the tip of the baby bear's tail is the North Star. At dawn. Look straight to the north from where Lisa's body was found. On the surface, this oracle may seem tricky and convoluted, but it's still mere child's play. <laughs> Pathetic. Zach, let's follow the oracle and head to where Lisa's body was found. I don't know what other world refers to, but I'm sure we'll find out once we get there. Oracle? That's right, Patty. This case is a rather complicated one. So Zach and I are following oracles given to us by a skeletal gentleman in order to crack it. This is DC Eagle. I read you loud and clear. Over. Oh, good. Mr. York. 
I'm sure glad you picked up. There's no point in using code names if he's just going to say my real name. Mr. York, can you hear me? Hey, Mr. York! Oh, oh, oh. Right. Over. DC Eagle to Lucare Tiger. Is something wrong? Over. Uh, Mr. York, I got something I need to tell you ASAP. Just sit tight and listen, okay? Oh. Roger Wilco. Go right ahead. Over. I just happened to overhear some of the Clarksons talking on another channel. Apparently, Lisa's mother's been missing since early this morning. I reckon it might be related to the case, so I wanted to let you in on it right away. Oh, over. Lisa's mother. You're referring to Galena, the social butterfly? Over. <laughs> another special agent slam dunk. So... You already did a little research on her, huh? Yeah, that's right. The one who's gone missing is the younger of the Clarkson sisters. And our town's queen of the night. No one can slip one past me. Because I'm the ultimate FBI agent. Francis York Morgan! <laughs> My proverbial hat goes off to your investigative skills, sir. Anywho, Galena used to be an actress. She's also real pretty in the face. Draws attention wherever she goes. If you happen to spot her while you're investigating, would you let me know? Oh, yeah. Over. Wait. Hey, Mr. York, what do you say we cut this out, huh? Over this, over that. It all seems kind of overblown. Don't you think? Size. I reckon we're the only ones listening to this. No need to be so stiff, <laughs> right? Yes, Melvin, I agree. There's no need for us to cling to formalities. Huh, glad to hear it. I ain't never been too good with formalities, you feel me? <laughs> well, Mr. York, if I hear any more news, I'll be sure to let you know. Good luck out there. Daddy's such a goofball. Patty, do you think Galena is really as beautiful as people say? I don't know, I guess. Men just seem to like women like her for some reason. Who's more beautiful, Galena or your mother? What? Candy Woods, your mother. Melvin said she was the prettiest girl in town. How should I know? That's a stupid question. Why is it stupid? My mom is sick. Zach, that was a bad move. We stepped right into a private matter without any shoes on. But these things are bound to happen. After all, I'm a special agent of the FBI. And there isn't an organization out there that's more well-versed in the art of infringing on people's privacy. So you clearly love TV shows, but what about movies? Movies? We don't even have a movie theater around here. So I can only watch what I manage to catch on TV. Like what? For some reason, the only movie channel we get at home is the sci-fi one. So I just watch a lot of sci-fi. Like what? What's the last one you saw? Uh, the one with Schwarzenegger, where there's all these clones. The Sixth Day, 2000, directed by Roger Spottiswood. You must be very well versed in sci-fi if you can appreciate an Arnold S. film. I thought it was way too easy for them to make more clones. And you'd never see a clumsy investigation like that on CSI. That's right. It's realistic. Everything about that film is so realistic. It may be difficult for a child to understand. But, Patty, that's not your fault. All of Arnold S.'s films are filled with hyper-realism, you know. On top... Who might you be? I'm Raven, 
but around here they call me the Speed Witch. You're here investigating the lease case, yeah? And instead of a car, you're using a skateboard? For real? You've already become the talk of the town, you know? Anyway, I was just wondering if you needed any help. What's your name? I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. Okay, Yorkie it is! I'm actually testing out a new kind of business right now. And I was hoping you'd be down to try it out, Yorkie. What kind of business are we talking about here? I drive my customers to wherever they want to go, and once we get there, they pay me. Now that I think about it, I reckon it ain't much different from a taxi. Seems a bit strange to call it a new type of business, then. Only because you haven't heard the details yet. Here, let me explain. I got a feeling that in the future, cell phones are going to get more advanced. And people are going to be able to just order taxis from their phones whenever they need to get somewhere. So I'm thinking, hey, why don't I just start a company that instantly sends out drivers to take folks from point A to point B? How? I want to make it so that anyone out there can just register on my site as a driver. I'm talking normal people, not pros. Then once we get a request, we'll just send out the driver who's closest to the customer. It'll be a hell of a lot more convenient than public transportation, and faster than any normal taxi company. I'm positive it'll be a big hit. And I'm gonna call it Wyvern. The logo will be a Y and a V. Cool, yeah? Is that Lee? Beats me. But if I hire them all as independent contractors, I reckon it'll work out. See, that means each driver and customer will be bound by their own private agreements. My company will just provide them with a platform to hook up. Squeaky clean, right? Now, here comes the fun part. I want to help you get around while you're in our town, Yorkie. For a fee, of course. Keep an eye out for my balloons. Whenever you see one in town, give me a whistle and I'll be there. Why not invite me to use your site then? Why are you out here driving around? I'm still experimenting with this business model. My site isn't open yet, and I'm still trying to figure out what sort of fees will work best. So I decided to go find myself a customer to get a feel for how things will really go. Well, wanna ride? Zach, that was quite the spiel, wasn't it? This seems like little more than a scheme to make some pocket change from carpooling. And what's new about that? Although it will be a bit hard for us to keep investigating here for days with nothing but a skateboard. What do you think? Should we accept her offer? That's what I'm talking about! Come on, get in, get in! By the way, Patty, what do you usually If you don't want to ride with me, I ain't gonna force you to. But if you ever change your mind, just give me a call. I'm always ready to get out on the open road. Sure thing. Why, Vern, the new Cutting Edge Transportation Service. We'll come to you, wherever you are. Bye now. Hey, bellboy, what's this balloon doing here? 
Oh, hey there, boss. <laughs> that balloon belongs to the transportation service. <laughs> the transportation service? Zack, we haven't seen a single taxi since we got to this town, have we? Well, of course not. You won't find a single limo or taxi driving around this town. What does the balloon call, then? That'd be Wyvern. Wyvern? That pushy entrepreneur? <laughs> right on the money, boss. Why are you helping her out? Me? Oh, I'm just in it for the kickback, boss. <laughs> so calling her from here costs more than calling her from somewhere else? Exactamundo. Although there are certain places that you can only get to from here. I see. Zack, it looks like we've run into yet another unique rural custom. Howdy, Yorkie. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, get in, get in. Thanks for calling me. Why, Vern, the new cutting edge transportation service. We'll come to you wherever you are. Goodbye now. This is how it has to be. Why did the perpetrator decide to enshrine Lisa's body here? Hmm. Remember this, Zack? Stone skipping. We did it all the time when we were kids. For some reason, I could never beat you. But I feel like I've got what it takes to win now. What do you say? Shall we take a trip down memory lane? Not bad, Zack. That was just as fun as when we were kids. Hey, what's that? No wonder the word Mississippi means father of waters. It has the power to carry boats down the tiniest of tributaries. It's one of the prime symbols of America's majesty and the vitality of the human race. Now about that boat. What sort of cargo would give it such a deep draft? What else do you see, Zack? I saw it clearly, if only for a second. The Dragonfly Crest. This town never wants to stop reminding us about the Clarksons. Hey, Zack. Do you remember the Oracle? When the sun awakens. Catch the tip of the baby bear's tail at the false altar. And the entrance to the other world will reveal itself to you. In other words, we need to go to where Lise was found and look north at dawn. I wonder what we'll see. It's a skull, Zack. As clear as day. That's the spot. The barrier between our world and the other world. One might call it a singularity. Now, what do you say we go inspect that cabin? Why did you leave me behind? You're not supposed to investigate without me. I'm sorry, Patty. You just missed a special moment. What moment?
the sugarcane plantation, so what? You can't see it? All I see is the Clarkson's plantation and that gross silo. There you have it, Zack. Patty, Zack and I will take it from here. In the meantime, you need to head home and wait for us. Wait at home? Alone? Yes, but only for a while. Once I make some progress, I'll contact you again. Hey, hold on! Also, would you mind telling Melvin that I'm heading to the sugarcane plantation? I'm sure we'll need his help later. Whoa, Agent York! Wait! You're really gonna leave a little girl like me here all alone? Act like an adult for once in your life! I promise to protect you from all the evil in our world? You promised! Protect me! You'll be fine. You made it this far alone, didn't you? Oh, if it is an Agent Morgan. How may I help you? Are you angry with me, Patty? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, good. In that case, please return home at once. Look, Zack, we're about to encounter a new character. Oh, damn it. I know I saw her go inside, but it's empty. The hell's going on here? You won't be able to find the other world. What the? Who in the hell are you? And what are you doing on our plantation? I'd like to ask you the same. Oh, I'm... Hey, shut up. This ain't got nothing to do with you. I see. Well, if you don't want to tell me, then I have no choice but to guess. You just said this is our plantation. I assume that means you're a member of the Clarkson family, and you're here looking for someone. If there's a search being conducted on Clarkson property, it must be a search for Galena Clarkson, who's gone missing. Judging from the way you speak, your age, and most of all the color of your eyes, you must be Danny Clarkson, the father of the victim, Galena's husband, and the manager of the cold storage warehouse. Nice to meet you. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I'm here investigating the Lee Clarkson case. Oh, and just call me York. That's what everyone's always called me. <laughs> you think I give a shit? You better watch your mouth or I'm liable to whoop your goddamn ass. Your daughter was taken from you and now your wife has gone missing. No words can describe what you're going through. I imagine you're doing everything you can, searching every last nook and cranny all over town. But, Danny, listen to me. It won't get you anywhere. No matter how hard you search, you'll never find them. The fuck is with you? You want to throw down with a Clarkson? Absolutely not. I simply wish to solve this case. Then hurry up and investigate, goddammit. I am. That's why I'm here. The Oracle told me there's something in this spot. Oracle? That's right. Zack and I are following oracles given to us by a skeletal gentleman. If you wish to find the person who killed your daughter, you should cooperate. I imagine that not even the Clarksons want to start a feud with a federal power. I've had enough of your bullshit. Why's everyone and their mother been pissing in my ear today, huh? Shit! Does this mean you're ready to cooperate? May I enter the building? Do whatever you want. If you think you can mess with the Clarksons, you got another thing coming. <clears throat> Zack, it appears that the Clarksons have no idea where Galena is either. And judging from Danny's demeanor, the family must be in the midst of their own complications. This case may require more work than we think. Zack, Danny married into this family, didn't he? Yet he's acting like he's a full-blooded Clarkson. I'm surprised, really. That was the most unexpected aspect of our encounter. 
After all, he's only the son-in-law. What do you think, Zack? This is it, Zack. A deadly premonition. You know, for some reason I'm getting butterflies. How about you? It's time we went and saw this other world for ourselves. Zach, the countryside is always so entertaining. It has far more stimuli to offer than the big city. Those movies from the 80s were all predicting the future. Life's simpler than what philosophers make it out to be. In the end, truth and reality are never one in the same. Mr. Alligator, not sure how much help you'll be in this situation, but I guess you're better than nothing. What? What the? Zack, I don't even need to say it, do I? This is right out of that movie. Videodrome, 1982, directed by David Cronenberg. At the time, it was seen as a hard movie to digest for normal moviegoers, but now it's become a cult classic. I always just saw it as another weird Canadian movie, but this changes everything. My arm and my gun have become one. Now I can really understand what Max was going through. Hmm. Zack, I sense something here. Lise was murdered here. Let's take a closer look and find out exactly what went on. Zack, the murder weapon was an axe. Lise must have been dismembered while she was still alive. And the woman holding the axe, flashy clothes, beautiful face, and that dragonfly ring. This must be Lisa's mother, Galena Clarkson. Look, Zack, she's crying. 
It's the polar opposite of Lisa's euphoric expression. Galena is brandishing an ax while tears stream down her face. What was going on in her head? More. More. I want... Zach, there's a tall woman here. Very stylish. She'd stick out like a sore thumb in this town. Is she watching the murder? No. She's clearly more than an innocent spectator. She must be deeply entwined with this case somehow. Wow, it's amazing. I can feel it. I'm getting prettier. Yeah, you are. See, I made this just for you. Not so hot. I'm burning up. Oh, let the sensations take over, Lise. Soon you won't feel any pain. You won't feel anything at all. Zack, Lisa's limbs were severed while she was still alive. But she's smiling. She must not have been able to feel any pain. San Rouge isn't that powerful of a drug. At least it shouldn't be. And look, Zack. Another dragonfly. The tattoo is just to the side of her navel. She always carried the mark of a Clarkson with her, wherever she went. <sighs> okay, let's get started. This is going to be so fun. <laughs> Remember how you used to play with dolls when you were a baby, honey? <laughs> Yay! I love dolls. <laughs> dolly, dolly, dolly! <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Oh, yes. Red powder. This must be Saint Rouge, but for some reason, it looks more vibrant than all the specimens we've gathered so far. <sighs> Lise, you're so beautiful. <laughs> really? At least, it'll all start from you. Now you'll never die. You'll be eternal. Just wait for me, Lise. I'll be with you soon. I'll always be with you. Dolly. 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 Lise Clarkson was murdered here. After she died, she was carried to the spot underneath that bridge. Why did the killer feel the need to move her? Bodies are usually only moved to cover up evidence, but this is different. Lise's body was enshrined. She was being shown off to someone. <sighs> the 
the ritual, the altar. A mother killing her child, a monstrous giant, and a mysterious, stylish woman. There's a real demon out there, and it's got its sights set on the Clarksons. <laughs> but Zach, this is exactly the kind of case we FBI agents are here to solve. Isn't that right? Completed the first ritual. Now the plan will begin. The Red One's plan will begin. Zach, this case is going to be a labyrinth. I certainly didn't expect to run into a monster like this. Honestly, I'm not one for violence, but I'm not just going to stand here and die. What do you think? Should we read off her rights? Now. The red one's turn. The red one. Soon, soon. And in the end, we'll be together. <laughs> together. Plan? 
You can't stop us now. We already made our sacrifice. You don't know how much we sacrificed. How many tears of blood we cried. All for the Red One's plan. <laughs> We've come so far. The Red One gave me the honor of lighting the flame. I'm not gonna let you stop me here! Selena, is this your true form? Gosh, Hollywood would have been all over you. Although you probably would have been typecast as a gross monster. The kind that heroes always kill. We're going to make a new world! And no one's going to stop us! This... Our... Our new world... My... Lise... My sweet... Little... Dolly... Galena Clarkson? You are now under arrest on suspicion of the murder of Lise Clarkson and the illegal disposal of her corpse. <laughs> you have the right to remain silent. 
Anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. <sighs> That's enough, Zack. She can't hear us anymore. Zack, pardon my language, but this case can go fuck itself. I owe you one, Mr. York. I'm awful sorry you had to get all caught up in our town's dirty laundry. I didn't expect you to catch the criminal this soon, though. You never fail to impress me. Come on, CLG. Let's head back to the office. Mr. York and I both got a lot of cleanup work to take care of. <sighs> now I just gotta figure out what I'm gonna tell the Clarksons. That's my biggest problem. Melvin, this investigation has only just begun. What? But we got the killer. This case is much more complicated than it seems. You mean you're gonna keep searching the town? Of course. At the moment, I'm after a tall, stylish woman. Does that ring any bells? Stylish? Uh, you lost me. What's that got to do with anything? Zack and I saw her with our own eyes. We need to find her, I'm positive. You're probably talking about Professor R. Professor R? From the jazz bar? Yeah. I mean, she's the only person in town you could call stylish. She's tall, too. But... What is it, Melvin? Uh... Well... Well? Out with it. Don't let your ten-year-old daughter upstage you here, Sheriff. You're looking for a stylish woman, right? Yes, we've established that. Then I think you're barking up the wrong tree with Professor R. She isn't exactly a normal woman, if you catch my drift. I hear you loud and clear. Melvin, you're careless in every sense of the word, but I believe you operate on the side of good in most cases. With that in mind, I'm disappointed to see that you carry some prejudice with you. Uh, but I, uh... Is she the type to forbid customers from entering her jazz bar due to the color of their skin? No, she ain't like that. Well then, case closed. Melvin, I think we should call it a day. I'm going to head back to my hotel and get some sleep. I also need to prepare a report to send back to the Bureau. Patty, thank you very much for assisting me in my investigation. I'll be counting on you again tomorrow. I just helped an FBI agent. Oh, and Melvin, one more thing. You needn't worry about what to tell the Clarksons. I'm sure they already know that Galena's been arrested. After all, this is Lucare. Zach, let's go over our progress. We've got a complicated case on our hands this time, especially as far as the Clarkson's relationships go. But in a way, it's also a simple one. Understanding them on a deeper level is the most efficient way to uncover the truth behind all this. That's the one thing I'm sure of. Zack, let's start with the people who were closest to the victim. Lise Clarkson, the victim, is the granddaughter of the current head of the Clarkson family. Her mother is Galena, an ex-actress, and Lise clearly inherited her beauty. Except for her eyes, that is. Lise's eye color matches that of her father's. Now, do you remember who Lise Clarkson's father is? That's right. Lise's father is Danny Clarkson. His real name is Daniel E. Clarkson. He's from Florida and used to be the CEO of a talent agency. Danny struck the heart of Galena and successfully became a member of the esteemed Clarkson family. Despite being the son-in-law, he acts like he was born a Clarkson, but he's still just the son-in-law. Next comes what happened to Lise. According to Alexis, Lise said that the man was as tall as an oak tree. I believe that's the same 10-foot-tall giant who made the fingerprints we found in the cold storage warehouse. Now, what did this man do to Lise prior to her murder? No, that's not it, Zach. 
Lisa's mother Galena is the one who always took her to the jazz bar. I don't think our giant is that much of a gentleman. Yes, that's it, Zack. The man as tall as an oak tree followed Lisa around and watched her. Despite his towering stature, he must have been rather shy. Or perhaps he was merely biding his time and planned to kidnap her from the very start. If that's the case, there should have been some evidence left at the scene of the crime. Hmm. Zack, we're still missing some puzzle pieces. Speaking of the scene of the crime, I did some profiling in the plantation's control room. The truth it revealed to us was nauseating and horrific, but we need to touch upon it if we wish to proceed. Isn't that right, Zach? Who actually murdered Lise Clarkson? Time out, Zach. I was expecting you to give me a serious answer. If he really did kill Lise Clarkson, I wouldn't dare to touch another piece of his food. Don't make me imagine such a grotesque scenario, Zach. Zack, you've got to be kidding me. She's too obsessed with bowling to care about killing people. Besides, she's a woman with a gentle heart who was even concerned about the poor young girl. It may sound like I'm preaching here, but I believe that people like her are the ones who make town stronger. Yes, that's right. Lisa's own mother killed her while she was dreaming about some bizarre new world. This is by far the vilest and ugliest crime we've ever seen. The fact that Galena set up her daughter's body at an altar makes this case even more complicated. Remember, not a single sacrificial human murder has ever been proven and documented in all of American history. The real world is far more complex than what we see in films and video games, and sacrificing a human life for something else is no easy task. In conclusion, Zach, through our investigation, we found one character who sticks out more than anyone else. You know exactly who I'm thinking about, don't you? We'll need to have a word with her in the near future. Who's the stylish woman we saw during the profiling? <laughs> Professor R. We haven't met her yet, but she's deeply intertwined with this case. Let's wait for the skeletal gentleman to guide us to her with an oracle. Well, Zach, what do you think? Isn't the Deep South something? The people here are just as warm as the weather, and the food is to die for. Mm, might be nice to move down here after I retire. What, still too early to talk about that? You may be right. After all, this case has only just begun. Galena can't be the killer. They're making all this shit up. If what you say is true, Daniel, how do you plan to prove it? It's nearly been a century since the Clarksons first took control of Lucari. One hundred years. I always thought my legacy would live on for two. No, three hundred at least. I'm gonna find the real killer and beat the living dog shit out of him. Yet it looks to me like times have changed. We ain't in the good old days no more. You understand me, boy. Yes, sir. I'm right there with you, Paul. I'm gonna continue what you started, sir, and make the Clarkson family strong again. First, I need to find whoever really killed Lise and bash their fucking brains in. I saw this coming. Ever since the day Lenny left home, the town of Lucare has been cursed. We can't stop what's happening now. It's too late. It's beyond me. No. 
It's beyond the minds of anyone who comes from the olden days. You understand me now, boy? Yes, sir. Believe me, I do. I'll kill him. Just leave everything to me, Paul. Hmm. Are you serious about this? Yes, sir. Right hand of God. Look right in my eyes. I ain't lying. I'm serious. I just need you to lend me some troops, sir. We need retribution right now. That's the job I've been given, and I intend to do it. Well, then, let me ask you one more time. Are you serious about this? Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm a Clarkson, and all Clarksons have a job to do. Isn't that what we always say? Mm-hmm. Then I'll need an arm. Yeah. What? Well, now, you want to use my troops. I'm going to need to know whether or not you're really serious about this. Just one arm. Slide it on through that wire there, and it'll take care of it for you. Paul, I mean, you're joking, right? Daniel, have I ever told you a single joke? Uh, no, but... If you want to become a real Clarkson, <laughs> then you done got yourself a job to do. Wait, Paul, I, I get it now. You, you, you want me to stick it in and pull it out at the last minute, right? You, you, you want to see if I got guts or not, but there, there's going to be another way. You, you can't be serious, sir. Hey, hey, knock it off, you assholes. Let me go. He's just joking with me. Let me go, goddammit. Oh, please, sir, don't do this. Just tell me this is a joke, please! I am a Clarkson. And no matter how our fortune falls, all Clarksons have a job to do. That be the law of this land. York, York. You, can you can hear me, me right? I'll, I'll be, be with you soon. I'm not, I'm not sad. sad. Honestly, Honestly, I can't, I can't wait. wait. It's all, all I, think I think about lately. I mean, we'll, we'll be together, together again. again. We'll, we'll get, get to, to discuss, discuss movies, and food again. again. Everyone, Everyone around, around here has bad taste. taste. 
They don't understand things the way we do. It's a shitty world filled with shitty people. Oh, that reminds me. There are movie theaters and restaurants over there, right? As soon as I get there, let's go grab some peanut butter hamburgers and yogurt smoothies. I'm so excited, York. Please, York, don't rush me. You just need to wait a bit longer. I still have one job left to do. I need to finish it. I have to. Or else I'd never be able to face you. Just, just give me a little more time, okay? So, Lise's mother, Galena Clarkson, confessed to murdering Lise. But then immediately afterwards, she went insane. So you had no choice but to detain her. What a terribly convenient story. You were the first person to find the suspect hiding at a farm on the edge of town. And you even got her to confess to the crime, right then and there. Did anyone else get a chance to hear Galena's confession? Only us. How did you even find that shack in the first place? Metaphysical offender profiling. Meta what? Should I know this word? Metaphysical offender profiling. The term appears six times in the Lucare report and 14 times in the 2010 Greenvale Report. As long as you're solving cases, the people in charge don't really care what sort of words you use. But we're different. You utilized a highly abnormal method to instantly hone in on a suspect. Then you did it again, and again. And every time you used it, one term kept appearing in your files. Metaphysical offender profiling. Mr. Morgan. Would you mind explaining to us what this term means? We could try. But no matter what words we used, you'd never be able to understand. You see, it doesn't pertain to this side. Come, my fairy. Stop hiding back there and give them the explanation they so desire. <laughs> what? You're too shy? <laughs> Mr. Morgan? Mr. Morgan! Come on out. Don't... Is that all you have to say? Don't underestimate me, Morgan. I know you and the Clarkson share a deeper connection. Much deeper than how it appears on the surface. I need to shake him with something else that's directly connected to the Clarksons. I'm gonna jog his memory by force. Someone stole Lisa's body and it's been missing for the past 14 years. I find it hard to believe that it was simply hidden in that cold storage warehouse the entire time. Why wasn't a more detailed investigation carried out? Reading over it again, I can't help but notice how well organized this report is. One might even call it perfect. Except some parts have been redacted in an extremely suspicious way. Why are all these places blotted out? Mr. Morgan, I noticed that several parts of this report have been redacted. For example, here. One individual's name has been erased from the key figure list. Would you mind telling me why? Someone in charge must have thought it was unimportant, or maybe even inappropriate. 
Why would they think that? How should we know? We've never understood what those people do. Well, I took the liberty of trying to restore what was taken out. Normal ink was used to blot it out, so I was able to recover part of it. Here's what it says. Sapling salesman. All the other redacted parts seem to be connected to this person, but I can't think of a single reason why this individual would need to be removed from the report. Why is he so untouchable? Oh, him. He's nothing. We were barking up the wrong tree. Meaning? Can't include someone who doesn't exist in an official report, now can we? Doesn't exist? You mean he had nothing to do with the case? <laughs> yeah, you could say that. Mr. Morgan. According to you, at the beginning of this case, the victim's body was being stored in the warehouse on purpose. Is that the truth? They really put her body there alongside food and other perishables? It's in the report. No. The report only says it was stored using the most effective and shockingly inhuman method possible. If you can think of a better phrase, we're all ears. The report isn't wrong, you know. In fact, that might actually be the most accurate way of describing it. It's precise, and it's also kind of... poetic. You know? Wow, Simon. We never would have taken you for a poet. <laughs> <coughs> right? You two think this is a joke? Lise Clarkson's body was discovered in that cold storage warehouse after 14 long years. If you'd only done a proper investigation, we probably would have found her much sooner. <sighs> that poor girl. We still regret the fact that we never got to meet her. We're sorry, from the bottoms of our hearts. I only hope it didn't happen that way by design. Will you comfort me? <sighs> Thank you, my fairy. <laughs> stack of old letters. These must be the letters that he mentioned in the report. That dragonfly mark proves it. Those letters look very old. The postmark suggests they were sent out from Louisiana. And I suspect that dragonfly mark belongs to the Clarkson family. <clears throat> Maybe. So what if it does? A stalker has been harassing Patricia Clarkson for several years now. Did you know about this? Constant silent phone calls, unmarked letters. She also spotted a suspicious figure lurking near her mansion several times. And just last week, her employees spotted a strange figure lurking in the vicinity. The day someone else coincidentally used your alias and traveled to Louisiana. That's very intriguing. Aligned symbolism. Lise Clarkson also reported being harassed by a stalker just before she was murdered. You're aware of this, correct? Because I didn't find any mention of this in your report. No direct connection to the case. That's what we must have thought. The visionary lies to himself, the liar only to others. Which are you? That's enough for now. This all has nothing to do with the case. Besides, there's no evidence that proves those letters are from her. Isn't that right, my fairy? I knew it wouldn't go that easily. Maybe I should try asking my questions in a different way. I could use Agent Jones here. Films teach us all we need to know. That's ridiculous. I'd rather read a book than watch a stupid movie. It's bugging you, isn't it, Aaliyah? Huh? I get it, I get it. 
It's bugging me too. It's even got my heart racing a little. I mean, look at this. Nothing but DVDs. Not a single Blu-ray in sight. Just pure, unadulterated DVDs. And he's got VHS tapes, too. I don't even have a VHS player in my house anymore. Whoa, look at this. Check it out. This one's got a lot of pizza in it, remember? You're not wrong, Simon. There's a very large quantity of pizza in that film. 1987, directed by Mel Brooks. The version on that tape is the one we recorded back when you could catch it on cable TV. Oh, seriously? Damn, Morgan, that's incredible. You're really living the dream, man. I hope you both haven't forgotten that this conversation is also being recorded. That's the window that faces the street out front. I can tell just from the layout of his furniture. Now I'm surrounded by everything I couldn't see out there. This is a nice building. Layout isn't bad either. Whew. Must be rather expensive to rent a place like this in Boston. How many other rooms are there in this apartment? That room over there, your bedroom? Huh. Why so curious, Belle? It almost sounds as if you're seeing this place for the first time. Aside from the hardware shop on the first floor, every apartment in this building has the exact same layout. We're well aware that you studied the layout of this apartment before you came to see us. There's no need to act so roundabout. Just be honest. Say it. I want to see your bedroom. Well then? Doesn't mean we'll let you see it though. Agent Jones. Are you paying attention? Or do you intend to waste Mr. Morgan's precious time? Uh, no. Sorry. I'm just a little tired. I'm listening. I'm listening. Take your hand out of your pocket. Didn't they teach you any manners at Quantico? Oh, uh, right. Guess they slipped my mind. My bad. <laughs> I'm actually kind of nervous. I'm not used to this sort of thing. Data analysis is my specialty, you know. I, uh, I'm sure I'd be able to calm down a bit if I had some pizza, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the FBI needs to do something about their lack of personnel. I'll have to ask the questions myself. But how should I start? Maybe I should look back over the files and calmly reassess the situation. An elegant antique lighting fixture. And most of his other furniture is of the same quality. Why is his room such a mess then? This is why instead of calling him a dangerous person, they've labeled him a high-functioning sociopath. Just the usual around here, no need to worry. The usual? Yes. A strange person lives upstairs. Every now and then, he makes noise. What's strange about him? Several years ago, a woman was murdered upstairs. Her husband still lives there. Yikes! He's ex-BPD. And apparently, he's still searching for the killer. But... It seems like they cut all support for the investigation due to decreased funding. The team on the case wanted to keep working on it, but the suits wouldn't hear of it. <laughs> A tale as old as time. Due to his situation, perhaps, he's been making a lot more noise recently, like you just heard. You never noticed anything, Agent Jones. Well, I... I did hear some loud noises every now and then, but I didn't think they were real noises coming from upstairs. 
I mean, look at him. It's not like he's reacting to the noise. He always just went about his business as usual for all the years I've watched him. So I just figured it was coming from the TV. You really amaze me sometimes. So far, everything checks out with the report. But there were always some parts of the report that didn't make sense. He expects me to believe he just happened to solve a case this difficult while he was on vacation? And metaphysical offender profiling? I won't let him distract me with his fancy made-up words. After you arrested Galena Clarkson, you had a run-in with the Clarksons. At least that's what it says in the report. What exactly happened there? Just a simple run-in, that's all. Nothing but a single phenomenon. Chasing hollow instances like that won't lead you closer to the truth. Truth doesn't work like that. A hollow phenomenon, which resulted in a mountain of corpses. <laughs> oh, Belle. We think we finally understand what you're trying to say. But... Don't be so voracious. <sighs> How about another cup of coffee? We've still got a long way to go, you know. <laughs> yes. It's coarsely ground, so there should only be four teaspoons per cup. No more, no less. Next, the coffee travels from the funnel to the siphon. Simon, normally you only do surveillance in order to gather data, correct? Hiding microphones and cameras, sifting through garbage, wiretapping, shadowing, tracing credit card histories. You'll do whatever it takes to gather data in order to prevent crimes. That's how the FBI works. Uh, well, yeah, you're right. No reason in hiding it now, I guess. <laughs> Why do you ask? Our Southern Belle has adopted a very peculiar M.O. It's almost like she has a special power, just like us. Ha <laughs> You've been watching us this entire time, haven't you, Belle? From that window. I don't need to answer that question. You came here on New Year's Eve, then spent 49 hours watching us until you returned to your hotel room last night. You observed us the entire time without sleep or rest, and you only ate once some pizza delivered by Simon. Aside from that, you never drank any water or relieved yourself. You simply sat there and continued to watch us. You have visions, too, don't you? You came here solely to hear us talk, didn't you? But then, why bother watching us for over two days beforehand? You didn't come to talk with us. You came because you wanted to see this apartment with your own eyes and because you're already convinced of something. Isn't that right? He who fights with monsters should see to it that he himself does not become a monster. And if you gaze long into an abyss, the abyss also gazes into you. But I... Oh, coffee. Thank you, my fairy. If you hadn't been paying attention, this coffee would have all gone to waste. The pus in our brains. It really has a way of interfering with our lives. I didn't remember. Christ? 
this is friggin' delicious. I thought I was gonna shit myself for a second there. Come on, Aaliyah, take a sip. Trust me, I'm not exaggerating here. I... I don't believe it. It's better than any coffee I've ever tasted. Of course it is. Coffee is a sacred drink. Coffee saved us. If not for its oracle, we would be on the other side right now. So I never forget to pay my respects to coffee. Especially at critical moments like this. Big black cumulonimbus clouds are in the sky. And that sound. Thunder snow is coming. Ominous. It's almost like a manifestation of the atmosphere in this room right now. Do you hear that thunder? It's probably gonna snow soon. We're in Massachusetts. That's the norm for this time of year. Well, I'm not used to the cold. If possible, I'd like to finish this up before we get stuck in a snowstorm. Agent Jones, after we're done here, I... Agent Jones, is something the matter? Snap out of it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I know, I know. Do you? Then stop daydreaming. Okay, okay, I just... You just what? I just, uh... My stomach's been letting some thunder loose, too. Thunder? The, uh... That coffee was just so good, it... Uh, it what? We don't have all day here. The coffee was just so good, it, uh... <laughs> summoned forth a massive tsunami from within me. Excuse me? What is wrong with you? Now is really not the time for this. Right door at the end of the hallway. Thanks, pal. <sighs> Hold on. You can make... We promise you, we did not put laxatives in the coffee. Coffee is a sacred drink, remember? Mm. Motherfucker. <laughs> There's no doubt that the report omitted information linking Morgan to the Clarksons. I need to get him to confess. Oh, yeah. That reminds me, there's a secret weapon in Agent Jones's briefcase. He's chain-smoking it non-stop. He's clearly dependent on it, which means he might be dependent on other drugs as well. Mr. Morgan, I heard that you were always a smoker. Did you ever wonder if that was the reason you contracted your illness? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. I'm just personally curious about it. Sometimes, people die in car accidents, regardless of how well they take care of their health. Other times, they slip on their bathroom floors and crack open their heads. <laughs> Isn't that right, my fairy? I'm not concerned with statistics. I'm just curious about you, right here, right now. We switched over from nicotine to this. It's less addictive. That's one step in the right direction, isn't it? Perhaps. If we're talking about withdrawal symptoms or physical dependencies. But it still seems like you're smoking too much at once. Honestly, it looks to me like you have a mental dependency. <laughs> Maybe. But so what if we do? Surely you know about gateway drugs, yes? When a person starts to use one drug, it becomes much easier for them to branch out and try other drugs as well. The first drug acts as the gateway that leads them to stronger substances. Oh. Are you trying to say that's going to happen to us? No. I'm simply saying there's a possibility. 
Agent Jones probably won't be back for a while. Actually, now might be my opportunity to make some real progress. Have you ever seen this before? And please, don't say no. Saint Rouge. The drug we once chased. What about it? Saint Rouge is still circulating. It's changed shape and its composition is slightly different now. But it's still very much alive. But only in a very limited part of Louisiana. You aren't surprised? Did you somehow know this would happen? Copies of another drug being circulated isn't exactly a rare case. But Saint Rouge is special. The inimitable Enigma Powder. The origin. It has many names, and no one was ever able to copy it. We've also been trying to figure out what it's made from ever since it appeared. But it's impossible to analyze. After all, it appears to be made from common ingredients that can be found anywhere. But if you try to use those ingredients, all you'll end up with is a mundane hallucinogen like DMT. If you're lucky. No. Saint Rouge requires a special recipe. The original recipe. Which someone's been guarding this entire time. Someone who survived the incident in Le Carré. He read these over and over again, like a prisoner rereading letters from his loved ones. But the last letter was delivered years ago, according to this postmark. That must be the last time he communicated with whoever was sending these. Yet, he left them out in plain sight. All this time. Immediately after they found Lisa's body, I went to go see Patricia. In order to interrogate her, of course. So you told us. But I was unable to meet with her. She refused to speak with you, didn't she? That's so like her. No. She didn't get the chance to. You see, she's gone missing. What? To put it more accurately, no one's seen her since the afternoon of the 28th. According to her employees, she shut herself up in her room for several months before she disappeared. But since that sort of thing happened often, they didn't think anything of it. On the morning of New Year's Eve, they noticed her window was open, and when they went up to check on her, she was gone. But no one knows how long her window had been open for. This is just my hypothesis, but on December 28th, a strange man visited Le Carre and was spotted near her mansion. That man must have found some way to lure Patricia into his car, the 89 Cadillac that he bought used. Then, the two of them drove north to Trenton, where they boarded a train to Boston. They would have arrived here around midnight on the 29th, or perhaps early morning on the 30th. I believe this man is the same Billy Bishop whose name was previously recorded by the airline. So, what do you think of my guess? I'd love to hear your opinion as a former FBI special agent. Ah, we get it. We aren't persons of interest. We're the suspects. But what about our alibi? What alibi? I've had enough of your bullshit. You expect me to believe you haven't taken a single step out of this room? That Agent Jones is your witness? Surveillance cameras can easily be tampered with. Especially by someone like you, who knows all about how the FBI works. You're possessed by death. Go and take a look at your own face in the mirror. You look like the Grim Reaper. After you visited both Le Carre and Greenvale, you left a mountain of corpses in your wake. You can make all the excuses you want. I'm immune to them. Right here, right now, I want to know everything. You tell me the truth. Yes! You're good, Belle. Damn good. You're brimming with potential. Don't you think she's the perfect partner for our last dance? What do you say, my fairy? Don't you agree? She's good. So good. <sighs> what do you want to know? We've got nothing to hide. Go on. Question us. This is how it's got to be. Doesn't this remind you of something? 
You know what I mean, my fairy. <laughs> Son of a... How did this happen in my town? God damn it! The head and limbs were severed and lined up, according to the lines that were drawn with her blood. Just like migratory birds flying systematically across the sky. Hey Zach, what do you think this means? They're severed roots. Severed roots? This is the way the Clarksons kill someone when they want to cut them off from the family. And how do you know about this? Everyone in town knows about it. They're just too scared to talk. What does the V stand for, then? Beats me. What, you think I know everything now? Vilatatio. It means quarrel in Latin. That's what the V stands for. Latin. Intriguing, isn't it, Zack? There are no defense wounds on the corpse. In other words, Galena showed no signs of resistance when she was amputated. But, strangely enough, there are small traces of subcutaneous bleeding around the wounded areas. That's a vital reaction which means she couldn't have been dead. You mean... Yes, that's right, Patty. Galena was amputated while she was still alive. And she never resisted. Is that even possible? It certainly isn't impossible. For example, if she was put to sleep with a drug, or if she desired the amputation herself. Why would she ever desire that? Mr. York, I'm sorry, but there ain't no way that could have happened. How can you be sure of that, Melvin? Our world contains phenomena that could never be explained with logic. This is especially true for phenomena in which humans are involved. Do you really think all the facets of love and hate can be explained with logic? Well, uh, no, I, I don't reckon I do. Yeah, might be too early to rule out those possibilities, just like you say. Zack, now we truly know just how deeply the Clarksons are involved with this. Patty, how long does it take to reach the Clarkson estate? Um, just a short drive. You just gotta head west along the Mississippi. You can't miss it. Got it. Thank you, Patty. By the way, Melvin, no matter how accelerated Patty may be, don't you think she's still a bit too young to see something like this? For the record, I have no intent to instruct others on how to raise their children, but... Holy moly, you're right! Patricia, CLG! Come on, sweetie. Kids shouldn't have to see stuff like this. Daddy, it's too late now. You sure you okay, CLG? I'm fine. Besides, I'm used to seeing stuff like that on CSI. You're the one who looks pale, Daddy. Well, it did shake me up a little. But I'll be back to normal in no time. Uh, sorry about that, Mr. York. What say we rest in the interrogation room till we all calm down, CLG? Sure thing, Daddy. I'm gonna go sit with Daddy for a bit, Agent York. We can join back up later. Galena killed her daughter, so her family cut ties with her. Do you really think that's what happened here, Zack? If 
this is truly the ritual that the Clarksons use to cut ties with someone, why would they go out of their way to do it here, in a holding cell? They could have easily done it after we released her. And judging from how Danny Clarkson was acting, I think it's clear that he really loved Galena. How could he accept this grotesque butchering, even if it was for the sake of the family? There's no point in ruminating on this. We should get back to the investigation. As long as we keep moving, the answer will inevitably fling itself straight at us. found the flying serpent, but now the flying serpent will come to find you. Yeah, that sounds right. And it looks like this flying serpent is a venomous one. Some become feasts, while others are eaten alive. Which fate would you prefer? Both sound marvelous but let me check with Zack. A fine answer. <laughs> Find the one who fired the pistol at heaven. Within the white hall of beds, brandish the ticket to the goddess. And once again, you will see the other world. Do you comprehend the Oracle? Zack, it looks like he's hell-bent on leading us back into that other world. Follow the Oracle. Oh, I will, Hoongan. There are only two types of things in our world. Things that should be resisted and things that should be accepted. And I believe this Oracle is something to accept. <laughs> think we're crazy for believing everything that skeletal gentleman says? No, we're not crazy. Not one bit. This is our destiny, that's all. But I shouldn't need to explain that to you, Zack. The one who fired the pistol at heaven. Firing pistols at the sky might be a rather common occurrence for the South. Remember? Young Guns, 1988, directed by Christopher Kane. There's that great scene where Emilio Estevez keeps firing his Colt M1877 up at the sky. Well, oh, but that film took place in New Mexico, didn't it? And the Oracle probably isn't referring to a situation like that. It's got to be for some purpose other than an attack or a threat. Raising a pistol up to the sky, then slowly pulling the trigger, kind of sounds like the start to a race. Don't you agree, Zach? Unfortunately, Zack, you're wrong. We need to find someone who fired their pistol straight at the sky. The one who fired... Unfortunately, Zack, you're... We need to find... The one who... Unfortunately, we... The one who fired... Bingo, Zack. We're currently running a race here. And the one who started this murder investigation is indeed the one who fired the pistol at heaven. In other words, the person who first discovered the body. According to the files, Lisa's body was discovered by Chuck Thompson, a crawfish farmer. He apparently works out of a fishing hut located in the marshes south of the bayou. Let's go pay him a visit. Who knows? We might even get to see some crawfish. What? Why isn't the murderer the one who started this race? Zach, this isn't like you. Of course the murderer isn't the one who started the race. The murderer is running it. They're currently in first place, and they're breaking all the rules. Any more objections, Zach? 
within the White Hall of Beds. This one is even easier. There are only a few establishments that have a whole hall's worth of beds, especially in a small town like this. I'm sure you've already got a pretty good idea about what the answer is, Zach. Beds all lined up? Only an amateur would hear that and think it must be referring to a brothel. I mean, come on. Who would ever use White Hall as a symbol for a bordello? No, a white house refers to the same place no matter what country you're in. Disinfectant, jars of medicine, and white smocks. That's right. It's a place where people dress in all white. And this town doesn't have any labs in it, which means there can only be one answer. You really think that's a white hall? Sorry, but I have to disagree. There's a more obvious answer out there. A place that anyone would think of when they hear the words White Hall. Beds. You never disappoint me, Zach. It's a medical facility. They invite their patients into rooms full of beds, where they're tended to by doctors and nurses clad in white. It's definitely a White Hall, where people are invited into beds. You always manage to impress me with your intuition. I'm really counting on you here, Zach, and I know I'll always be able to. Agent York, you trying to leave without your trustworthy assistant? Hello there, Patty. I'd never attempt such a thing. I was simply engaging in a battle of wits with Hoongan while I waited for you. Hoongan? Yes, the skeletal gentleman in the top hat. Not that story again. Is this how you always conduct your investigations? This is the way I work. I bet you can't find a single partner. Not even in the entire FBI. That's not true. I always work together with Zack. Oh, right. Zack. Don't worry. I'll be your partner while you're here in our town. Now, let's go investigate. How's your mama? So, you're that hotshot FBI agent I keep hearing about. And who might you be? I came to claim the body of my daughter. My daughter, who was murdered in a holding cell. After you detained her yesterday. Zack, I wasn't expecting to run into the final boss this early. You must be the head of the Clarkson family, P.J. Clarkson. And you've come to claim the body of Galena Clarkson, whose dismembered corpse was found early this morning. Is that correct? Where did you learn that Galena had been murdered? Zack and I just learned of the news ourselves. This is Lou Kari. And I, I am P.J. Clarkson. There ain't a single thing I don't know about this town. I see. So then you must also know about the Severed Roots ritual. I have a question for you, Philip. We suspect that Galena was murdered by someone from the Clarkson family. Have you given that possibility any consideration? Listen up, you FBI piece of shit. You better watch your manners around my paw. Shut up, else? Daniel. But, sir. My bad, sir. I'll have you know I once had three children. But I must not have raised them very well, because my son and my eldest daughter both ran away and never came back to me. The 
only one who stayed by my side was my second daughter, Galena. Then she done married Daniel here into the family and presented me with both an heir and a granddaughter. Seemed for a while as if things were finally starting to calm down. But then, someone corrupted both Galena and Lise. And I lost everything. Well, aside from my shit heel son in law, that is. You understand me, FBI? Galena's death is nothing but a loss for the Clarkson family. It doesn't mean the Clarksons are automatically innocent, though. Humans don't always act out of self-interest, do they? That mouth. You're starting to sound more and more like your mother. We're leaving, Daniel. What? But, but my treasure is... Now, whether you end up being an angel or a demon, I reckon you're the man I've been waiting for all this time. Once you finish that autopsy, and we're clear to take her home, I want you to give me a call. They're phenomenal, Patty. So perfectly rural. Ominous statements, foul-mouthed insults. This town possesses a complicated system of communication that you just can't find in the city. Work-centric emails are so cold and lifeless. This is what true human connections feel like. Connections as visceral as blood itself. <sighs> so, Agent York, what's next on your agenda? The last boss may have gotten the jump on us, Patty, but I didn't let him shake my resolve. I intend to obey the skeletal gentleman's oracles, and that's that. First, we should head to either the home of the person who discovered Lisa's body or to the town's medical facility. Well, Zach, what do you think? It really seemed like you knew who Galena Clarkson was. Well, I've never actually talked to her, but it's a small town. Pretty much all folks know who the Clarksons are, and Galena's supposed to be extra scary compared to the rest of them. Back when we saw her in town, I felt like she was glaring right at me, so I got real scared. No one will come out and say it, but I'm pretty sure they're all relieved that she was the killer. We're lucky the killer ended up being a member of the Clarkson family. Otherwise, the whole town would have turned into a battlefield. You've got a point, but did everyone really hate her that much? They didn't hate her. She hated them. She had this real peculiar way of treating people. I don't know how to describe it. Contemptful? Yeah, I guess that's it. She never opened up to anyone in town. She was rich, beautiful, and wanted to become an actress. So she went to a metropolitan city to refine herself. There's always a chance that people like her may develop prejudices towards those who stay in the countryside. A big chance, even. But just because a person has prejudices doesn't mean they'll go out and murder people. That's where my doubt lies. Was there any sort of omen which made people happy that she was the killer instead of someone else? I'm just telling you how I feel. How am I supposed to know if everyone else in town felt the same way? I never thought she'd actually go and kill her own daughter, though. There it is, Zach. It appears that her attempt to kill me wasn't simply a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Maybe she was... You didn't even twitch when you saw Galena's body. Why would I? Dead things can't hurt us, right? Girls your age don't usually think that way. Do you have kids, Agent York? No, I don't. I'm not married, either. Then you have no idea how girls my age usually think. Besides, I'm used to seeing dead bodies thanks to CSI. 
especially dismembered corpses like hers. You know, for a so-called profile and professional, you're pretty clueless. In that case, allow me to apologize. But don't you think it's a bit of a leap to discount my observational abilities simply because corpses don't scare you? I don't know. I mean, you're completely wrong. Do you know what I was thinking back there then? Of course not. I'm not a pro. The same goes for me, Patty. No manner of pro could ever know 100% of what another person is thinking. Unless, of course, that pro has a mental connection with them, like Zack and I have. If I was telepathic, I wouldn't have joined the FBI. I would have taken over a small country or become a messiah. Now who's making crazy leaps? I will admit, though, Patty, I feel like you and I have something in common. We definitely have similarities, even though they aren't as strong as the ones that Zack and I share. Whatever. Perhaps you and I grew up under similar circumstances. We're both unique cases. Huh? Unique cases? In your case, your beautiful mother's second husband became your daddy. But then your mama got sick, forcing you to take care of things, while you use CSI as your escape. Would you just knock it off? I ain't trying to act like some tragic heroine here. And I don't care that my daddy isn't the same color as me. You're way more narrow-minded than I took you for, Agent York. Narrow-minded? You're just realizing this now? Of course I'm narrow-minded. I'm a selfish man who lives life according to his own rules, with no interest in common sense. Naturally, this makes me terrible at reading situations, and I often end up angering people by total accident. But is it really that big of a problem? I've still made a contribution to society by solving numerous difficult cases, and I'm still terribly charming. And I'm still terribly charming. You and I have absolutely nothing in common. What kind of circumstances does a kid even need to end up like you? Try asking Zack. It's not my place to answer that one. <sighs> what else have you seen on that sci-fi movie channel? Agent York, why are you asking me that? Discussing movies is one of the most basic forms of communication in our country. What time period do you live in? It's always been that way in every era. In this country, all dialogues always begin from films. Ugh. Says who? You're making me sick. Sick? Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna puke. I know just what you need to do, Patty. What? Tell me what other movies you've seen on that sci-fi channel. Ugh. You're so annoying. Fine, fine. Um, I saw this one movie where a pretty lady and an old guy fight, and they were both robots. Ah, Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. 2003, directed by Jonathan Mosto. I knew you were an Arnold S. fan. Oh, you said it again. Oh, whatever. I'm not a fan of his or anything, okay? He just happened to be in it. So, what did you think? I knew of the name Terminator, but it was my first time seeing one of those movies. What? You've never seen Terminator? Well, the first two came out before I was even born. I know, but come on. It's Terminator. Boys probably like it, but I'm sure most girls don't give two craps about it. Oh, but I know it was directed by the same person who did Titanic. Titanic? Oh, you mean Raise the Titanic. 1980, directed by Jerry Jameson. But he didn't direct Terminator. He's famous for Airport 77 and The Deadly Tower. You probably know this already, but The Deadly Tower was based on the 1966 Texas Tower Sniper incident. I learned about it at the FBI Academy in Quantico. In the film, Kurt Russell plays Charles Joseph Whitman, the assailant. He really brought the character to life with an awe-inspiring performance. What's wrong, Patty? I'm just trying to talk about Terminator 3, that movie you saw, but you're not paying any attention. So be it. If you're not in the mood to talk, then let's return to the investigation. It's a shame, though. We really wanted to hear more about the films you saw, didn't we, Zack? That melody always gets stuck in my head. Yes, it's a devilish song, isn't it?
Just be quiet. Hey, let's shout something out loud. Like what? Chocolate Sunday. Okay, sure. <gasps> Actually, never mind. This is stupid. It's a beautiful day, Patty. Really? Seems kind of normal to me. Now that you mention it, yes, it is a normal day. I just felt like saying that. What? You know, sometimes you really get on my nerves. You didn't even twitch when you saw Galena's body. Why would I? Were you thinking about Galena too? And all the other women we've seen so far on our travels across the states? So, I'm right, aren't I? This is a vast country. Incredibly vast. And it's mostly composed of mountains, deserts, and farmland, with small towns scattered about here and there. That's how America looks to me. Compared to the scale of this entire country, New York, Chicago, and LA are all microscopic. Sometimes they even feel like figments of my imagination. Think back to what Las Vegas looked like when we were driving up I-15. It was a mirage. But TV and movies dress up those mirages and broadcast them to people all around the world. Meanwhile, American women become fascinated by the gorgeous city lights and are drawn toward those illusions. The very same women who were chosen as prom queens in their small towns. In the end, all they find are ghosts. Once their eyes adjust to that blinding light, they realize there's nothing but vanity and lust surrounding them. They finally figure out that it was all in their heads. Then they quickly try to satisfy themselves with something else. Drugs. And drugs are the gateway to a whole pantheon of crime. Zach, remember what you told me once? The women who turn to crime aren't the evil ones. The drugs aren't evil either. They're nothing but chemicals. The ones who feed off those women and use them. They're the ones to hate. Let's go, Zach. We need to find the person who's hiding behind Galena and drag them out into the blazing southern sun. Hey, Agent York. Just so you know, dealing with Pastor Sanders is going to be a big pain in the butt. A big pain in the butt? That's what I said. But I guess you have no choice but to obey your oracle, huh? I don't like hospitals. Why not? They soup folks up with medicine, cut them up, and then they try and act like they're your friends. Something ain't right about that, you know. It goes against the laws of nature. Plus, this is a church. So you got a pastor, a servant of God, actually playing God with his patients. I think you have a point there, Patty. These days we can neither determine death nor reproduce without the help of modern medicine. Yeah, our world's become quite an unnatural one. Oh, excuse me. This is Lucare. You need to watch where you're going, or someone might end up tripping you. Zack, it's her. The stylish woman who watched Lise die. I've been waiting for you, lost lamb. Uh, hi there, Pastor. Would you mind letting go of me? I'm in a bit of a hurry right now. So pitiful. The Lord hungers! <sighs> Here we go again. Uh, what? Pitiful! Truly pitiful, my little lamb. Uh, no, neither Zack nor I... Oh, so pitiful. So pitiful, just pitiful. The Lord hungers. One can of Spam. One can of red beans. 
and one can of spinach. You are to offer up the taboo trinity. Taboo? Don't you mean the holy trinity? Oh, how I pity you. Unlike us humans, the Lord never errs. Now, my pitiful agent, bring forth the taboo trinity at once. For it is the will of the Lord our God. See? I told you this was going to be a pain in the butt. But Zack and I need to go after that stylish woman. Too late now. We need to obey God's will. The Lord hungers! Come on, hurry it up. We need to go. Well, Zack, I don't know what to say. First an oracle, and now an order from God? Maybe this is the trial that will yield the ticket to the goddess. Either way, it looks like we have no choice but to gather the taboo trinity. I guess it just goes to show that small towns are always filled with the bizarre and unpredictable. One can of Spam, one can of Red Beans, and one can of Spinach. You are to bring forth the Taboo Trinity, for it is an offering to the Lord. Hey, Tyrone. Pastor? One can of Spam, one can of Red Beans, and one can of Spinach. The Lord hungers! I suppose that even an FBI badge is powerless in the face of God. It's no use, Sack. We'll just have to go out and assemble the taboo trinity. Do you carry any canned goods here? Canned goods? The vermin of the grocery store? Nay, I think not. Understood, Mirror. Well then, if you'll excuse me. Wait. Woman, yes. I can see it. I can see the canned good thou seeketh. How intriguing. Well then, where is the canned good I seek? In a place where no man could ever peddle it. I see in a place where it can't be bought from a person. Got it, Mirror. Twas but a trifle, for the Lord hungers, doth he not? Zack, it's in a vending machine. It appears that God wants us to go on a wild goose chase all around town. to such great lengths to collect his victims' tongues. You know, the one who would French kiss them every day as they slowly decompose. As I drove him to the station after his arrest, he started lecturing me on the proper way to give someone a kiss. Anyway, back to Duluth. They have a famous lift bridge there called the Aerial Lift Bridge. The lift bridge here is the first one we've seen since then. But this one looks a lot smaller than the Aerial Lift Bridge. Its smaller size was most likely chosen due to the width of the river and the sea level of this area. The height and structure of a bridge is what determines which sort of boats can travel down the river. Normal bridges' base heights are set at a higher point so that boats can freely pass underneath them. But I imagine it would be difficult to create a bridge with a large arch here due to the river width and the sea level. That's why we're seeing all these mobile bridges such as lift bridges and draw bridges around here. As far as Louisiana goes, it appears that they've built mobile bridges over most of the bayous. Fascinating, isn't it, Zach? 
so many different types of bridges. I'm curious to learn even more about bridges now. Let's do some detailed research next time we get the chance. There don't feel right today. You feel it too, honey? <laughs> oh, coming right up, honey. I'll put my heart and soul into it. Alexis, could I have some red beans and rice? Oh, my Lord. Sorry, honey, but no can do. We only serve red beans and rice on Mondays. That's a meal you eat when you're busy, like folks usually are on Monday. It's been a tradition here in Louisiana for as long as I can remember. Wait, honey, don't tell me. You're the type who does your laundry every day? <laughs> Oh. Tradition, Zach. This is it. The Deep South. Louisiana. We need to obey tradition here and come back on Monday. when we were driving that hybrid car before we switched over to the skateboard. We passed over the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway, the longest bridge over water in the entire world. Remember the sudden downpour that made it impossible for us to see the road? The rain was so torrential that we couldn't see more than a few miles ahead of us. I'm sure local drivers are used to that sort of thing. They were all going normal speeds. I bet that scene reminded you of a certain film, or perhaps a certain person. Violent City, 1970. Directed by Sergio Salima. I only ever saw it on TV when I was a kid, so I don't remember it very well. But I definitely remember that it featured a bridge. A long bridge. During the New Orleans part, that's the one thing I remember. That bridge must have been the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway. And the film starred Charles Bronson. Charles Bronson. Charles Bronson. What an amazing sound. You couldn't possibly find another man whose name matches his appearance so perfectly. Yes, yes, of course I know that Charles Bronson isn't his real name. Charles Dennis Buczynski. That's his real name. But he's Bronson. Period. Zach, what's your favorite Bronson film? Death Wish? The Magnificent Seven? Rider on the Rain? Or Farewell Friend? They're all masterpieces. But to me, his greatest work lies elsewhere. That's it, Zach. No wonder we get along so well. I don't care what anyone else says. His greatest film by far is 10 to Midnight, 1983, directed by J. Lee Thompson. There's no realism to be found in this movie, but that's what makes it so great. One might even call it a fantasy masterpiece. It was certainly filled with unprecedented fantasy compared to other police thrillers, that's for sure. You know, Zach, I'm suddenly getting the urge to watch it again. Let's hurry up and solve this case so that we can go rent the DVD. What's the buzz, Mr. FBI Special Agent? Oh, 
Uncle, what's the buzz? Well, if you ever need anything, you know who to call. When you need me, I'm always here. I'm the sentinel who guards this town. Most people call me the sheriff. So, Mr. York, what do you think of my castle? Pretty cool, ain't it? I've been curious about it since the first time I saw it. You've got excellent taste, Melvin. <laughs> I dub it Lou Crawfish. I'll have you know, crawfish is pretty much its own food group in this town. Since this store carries all the bare necessities you'll need for daily life, I reckon it was an apt name. If it's sundries you're looking for, <laughs> there ain't much you won't find here. Mr. York. Spam, huh? You a part of me kind of guy? No, Melvin. I've simply gotten myself tangled up in a little mess. Oh, I get it. Mr. York. The Lord hungers! Right? Yes, apparently the Lord is starving, and I'm a lamb with no sense of direction. Zack, we finally found our can of spinach. Look, Zack, even this vending machine is managed by Clarkson Food Delivery Services. But who in their right mind would sell canned goods in a vending machine in the middle of nowhere? I only hope that it's not expired. Okay, Zach, it's time to put our skills to the test. Well, Zack, it seems as if we've reached an impasse. Mm. I'm afraid we won't be able to proceed any further like this. Hikari Tiger to DC Eagle. Is everything all right? Hello, Melvin. Sadly, my darling just gave out on me. Your darling? You mean... Yes, that's right. My beloved skateboard. I know the chances are slim, but... Do you happen to know of any establishments in town that can repair skateboards? Please, I hope this doesn't defend you. Neither Zack nor I would ever dare to assume that a remote country town like this would have a skateboard shop in it. But perhaps you have at least one eccentric who likes to tinker with them in their spare time. I know just the person. Double bass player by night, trick master by day. God blessed her with two talents. And her name is Emma Sanders. Emma? That's right. She's Pastor Sanders' adopted daughter, and was also Lee Clarkson's best friend. Emma really knows her stuff. She's got tools and a mountain of parts, so I'm sure she'll be able to help. I owe you one, Melvin. Zack, I never thought we'd find our very own skateboard mentor out here in the sticks. Let's head straight to Emma. What is it, Zack? Why didn't I just ask the sheriff to tow away the old cars? 
but isn't it obvious? I want to overcome this obstacle using my own strength. In fact, I want to soar over it. Hey, let's chat. Patty, you're getting more and more curious about all the depraved serial killers I've encountered so far, aren't you? N-O. I'm getting tired of this joke. Hey, Agent York. I feel like someone's in there. Let's go and see. Huh? What do y'all want? I'm kind of busy here. Hi there. Are you Emma? Yeah. Who are you? Francis York Morgan. I'm an FBI special agent. Please call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Agent York? So, what does the FBI want with little old me? I already told the police everything I know about Lee's. Emma, I haven't come here to talk to you about Lee's. Although I suppose it's sort of connected in a way. My darling is broken, and I need you to fix her. <laughs> You call your board your darling? I never heard that one before. All right, let me see it. I'll try and assess the damage. I replaced all your trucks, wheels, and gave you some brand new deck tape. Also, you were missing a tail guard, so I put one on for you. That way you should be able to do a few tricks here and there without any risk of damage. Well, what do you think? It's beautiful, Emma. The wheels were scraped down and the base plate screws were all about to fall out. Oh, and the axles were also warped. It was pretty much in critical condition. Now, what I want to know is, how did it get that way? Well, my car was stolen on my way here from Houston. So, I switched over to my darling and rode her here instead. <laughs> you know, you're crazier than you look. Emma, would you mind answering another crazy question for me? I want to use this board to soar, literally. Would you mind teaching me a trick that would allow me to do so? Oh, you mean you want to do a wally? Ooh, well, I'd be happy to teach you how, but it's too cramped in here. Hmm. Oh, I know where we should go. You want to learn too? You sure? Seems like you're interested. <laughs> Whatever. I know you're just going to come along anyway. So you should at least learn the basics. Okay, Agent York. Now we should have enough room to practice. I'll show you how it's done first, then you just practice till you learn how to do it, okay?
Yeah. Thank you, Emma. I only learned that new trick thanks to your guidance. Now I'm sure that Zack and I will be able to reach our destination without any trouble at all. Thank you for assisting in the investigation. <laughs> Glad to be of service. If your board breaks again, or you feel like customizing it a bit more, just stop on by my workshop. I'm pretty much always there during the day. I'm also taking some time off school because of what happened with Lise. Skating and playing music are the only things that help me escape the pain of losing her. Zach, did you see the expression on her face just now? She works hard to act cheerful, but she's yet another person who was hurt by the tragedy. Lisa's death is like wildfire, spreading embers of sadness throughout the entire town. By the way, Patty, what do you usually do when you're at home? Is this an interrogation? York, are you sure you really want to talk to this guy? He kind of scares me. Patty, there's no need to worry. Just hide behind me and you'll be fine. Chuck Thompson. You were the first person to find Lisa's body, correct? I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Ah, uh, Agent York. 
Seems like he ain't in the mood for talking. Chuck Thompson, may I have a word with you? I'm looking for the one who fired the pistol at heaven. You trying to say I gotta aim up to shoot because of my height? Hmm? Not at all. I was merely quoting the skeletal gentleman's oracle. Skeletal gentleman? You ain't making a lick of sense. What do you all want anyway? What do y'all come here to waste my precious time for? I'm currently running a race around town thanks to you, who fired the starting shot. The murderer and I are competing to see who can cross the finish line first. Unfortunately, the murderer got a generous head start on me. If he gets away from me, I'll lose. But if I can catch up to him, then I'm sure I'll win. So please, Chuck, tell me, how did you find Lisa's body? Her body was hidden under a bridge on the bayou, very close to the Mississippi River. It's got to be at least a few miles away from your farm in this swamp, right? Now, the Claxons are the folks who gave me the damn permission to find Crawdaddy's here in the first place. Now, why the hell would I ever want to kill that little girl? Then what were you doing out there? Hmm. You know, lately I've been seeing a queer boat around these parts. Ain't too big. Probably only holds five or six. And it's got a deep draft. Assholes think they can just drive right through my turf, right through my dang crawdad farm. So you gave chase, which led you to Lisa's body. Yeah, that's right. Fucking poachers. Where did the poachers go? Oh, hell if I know. Fog was thick that day, thicker than usual. So I lose sight of them. The next thing I know, I'm under that goddamn bridge. Then I felt a chill run up my spine. And I knew. So I drove up to the bank and got out. And there she was, strung up on that there altar. Did you know Lise personally? Yeah, I knew her a little. She never showed me no disrespect, unlike the rest of those damn Clarksons. They so rotten I can smell them from here, same as the shit at the bottom of this here swamp. Heavy, heavy. Yeah. They was a little better when their boy Lenny was still around. Lenny? Yeah. Leonard. PJ's son. He never showed me no disrespect, neither. And he's the one who gave me permission to farm here. But... Well, ever since he left home, his whole family's gone straight down to Shitter. Lisa was the only decent one left. She was wise, just like Lenny. Ain't right, I tell you. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Now I'm done talking, goddammit. Now go on, get the hell out of here. Philip mentioned something about his son leaving home. That must be Lenny. Did you know about that, Patty? Everyone in town knows about it. By the way, Zack, do you remember what we saw when we were skipping stones? That boat with the dragonfly crest. Zack, no matter where we go in this town, we're constantly assaulted by information related to the Clarkson family. Just where is that skeletal gentleman trying to lead us? We successfully found the one who fired the pistol at heaven. 
Now we need to visit the White Hall of Beds. You know, Zack, it almost feels like we're orienteering here. Doesn't it remind you of our training in Quantico? Looks like a case of bad timing, Zack. Alexis, would you mind keeping the red beans in the can? I'll pay the regular price, of course. Oh, my lord. Why don't you want me to take them out of the can? They're for an offering, you see. Oh. Why didn't you say so? The Lord hungers. Exactly. As you can see, I'm a pitiful lost lamb. Now I get it, Zack. This is nothing but a shameless fetch quest. Zack, we finally managed to assemble the Taboo Trinity. And it was certainly no small task. I just hope it rewards us with some data that will help us push this investigation forward. Okay, Pastor. I've brought you your Taboo Trinity. I'd like to exchange it for a ticket to the Goddess. Oh, how I pity you. You see, my dear lost lamb, our Lord still hungers. One anaconda skin, one squirrel tail, and one pressed white guara. This is what you must bring next. Are you kidding me? How? <laughs> Our Lord never speaks in jest. Uh, I told you this was going to be a pain in the butt. Come on, we need to get going. <sighs> it looks like we'll need to work harder to get God's attention, Zack. Part of me just wants to say to hell with it and go have a smoke. You know, Patty, I just remembered something. When we met Philip in the sheriff's office, he mentioned your mother. What sort of history does Melvin have with the Clarksons? What do you mean? The Clarksons know everyone in town, and everyone in town knows the Clarksons. This is Lucare. That's all there is to it. Zach, something isn't right here. I just hope the Clarksons don't have anything to do with her mother's illness. That's all I'm concerned about. Either way, the truth will reveal itself to us eventually, just like it always has. Okay, Patty, I'm going to try asking you that question again. What do you do when you're at home? Found it, Zack. An anaconda skin. And freshly shed from the looks of it. Now let's get a move on before we run into its former owner. What do you think God wants with something like this anyway? Hey Zack, remember this movie? 1997, directed by Luis Losa. Anaconda. The movie where the famous John Voight goes crazy with a rifle. Jennifer Lopez, Eric Stoltz, even Owen Wilson and Ice Cube were in it. 
Is that an all-star cast or what? The scene in the beginning where Danny Trejo climbs up a ladder with a pistol in one hand is a must-see. It stole my heart within the first five minutes. Okay, back to the real world. We're on an important mission right now, aren't we? About three years ago, I met a man who had a pair of anaconda skin shoes. He said they were a trophy from a snake he hunted and skinned all by himself. Could you kill something and then wear its skin? I fail to see any difference between that and a crazed murderer who carries pieces of his victims home with him. There's our squirrel tail. I hope we can gather the rest of the materials this quickly. Honestly, we don't have the time to help God out with his heavenly errands. Certain countries consider squirrel tails to be wards against demonic powers. Apparently, the tails quiver whenever evil draws near. So when people go out on journeys, they always carry squirrel tails with them. The fresher the tail, the higher its price. Hey, Agent York. Yes? Is that... Sorry, never mind. I think I was just seeing things. Ripping a squirrel's tail off its corpse is an eye-opening experience, Zack. I don't care if God commanded us to do this, it's pure butchery. But we'll just have to live with it. After all, humans are wild at heart. Zack, I never knew that following oracles was such back-breaking work. I really needed this cigarette. I think I'm on the verge of losing my mind. <sighs> now we just need to find one pressed white Gora. He was very clear that it had to be pressed. Do they sell pressed flowers in stores here? I think I'm stumped, Zack. Perhaps we better go ask our well-informed concierge for help. What else have you seen on that sci-fi movie channel? Agent. Okay, Zach. Let's go talk to our concierge. It'd be impossible for us to find a white Gora all on our own in such a vast area. Welcome back, Mr. Morgan, sir. Hello there, concierge. Do you mind if I ask you a question? How may I help you, Mr. Morgan? I'm in need of a pressed white Gora. Do you know of a store where I could find one? The Lord Hungus? Correct. Jolly good, sir. In that case, please ask our bellboy. His hobby is pressing flowers, so I'm sure he'll be able to assist you. Very good, sir. Please, come right this way. Serving you is my greatest pl- Please do let me know if there is any other way for me to assist you. Got a minute, Chef? 
What is it, mister? I got my hands full here. Do you know where I might find a pressed white Gora? <sighs> now, what did I tell you? I'm a professional chef. I don't flap my gums about any old thing. If you want to know about the town, you best ask our concierge. May I ask you a question? Sure, boss. What's cracking? I need to find a pressed white Gora. You like flowers, boss? Well, not exactly, but it's the will of God. The Lord hungers! <laughs> Excellent, David. Way to cut right to the chase. Do you know where I might find one? Sorry, boss. We only have one white Gora bush in our garden. Yep. What's the problem? Well, yesterday I picked them all and pressed them, see? That's perfect. Would you mind giving one to me? Sorry, boss. No can do. What do you mean? I used all the pressed flowers I made to decorate a very special spot, see? What spot? The bathroom on the first floor. The bathroom? Yes, sirree. <laughs> so I don't have a single pressed flower left now. Well, then I'll just go and grab one from the bathroom. I wouldn't do that if I were you, boss. Taking a pressed flower? From a bathroom into church? Ah, Jesus ain't gonna like that. Sorry, but it looks like you're all out of luck, boss. Zack, Deep South. The White Gora, also known as the Whirling Butterfly. They certainly look just as beautiful as one. Never thought I'd ever have to pick a flower from a bathroom and deliver it to a church. <laughs> but he left us no choice. Did he, Zack? God himself commanded us to carry out this very act. Therefore, I'm simply doing as I'm told. My own will has nothing to do with it. We never get to engage in adventures like these while living in the city, do we, Zach? No, the cases of the city are honestly quite boring. Who wants to fish through the garbage for a missing corpse's genitals? Or chase a stray bullet that got lodged into a moving taxi? Talk about stupid. And usually, it's all just a formality so that we can accuse a criminal who's been obviously guilty since day one. If I have to search for something, I'd much rather search for something out here. It's just so much more dramatic. This is the countryside, and it's sensational. You know what I mean, don't you, Zach? I sincerely hope this is the last of God's divine errands. That makes two of us. Heavenly. Truly heavenly. He threw away all the spam, the red beans, and the spinach. I don't believe this. All this time, he was only after the cans? Shh, be quiet, Agent York. He's doing holy work. Just be quiet and watch. <sighs> what a fragrant press flower. Thank you for this blessing, O oh Lord. Yes, Zack. As fragrant as a urinal cake. Shh. Behold! It is finished! <laughs> Our Lord is enraptured! Take this, my lambs, and let it serve you. Just take it, Agent York. Folks say Pastor Sanders' instruments have special powers. Special powers? Yes, it is the truth, my lost lambs. 
Have faith. The Lord guides me to create the perfect instrument for each citizen of our town. Each instrument's effects differ by person, too. In your case, you were blessed with three drums and a special flower. This is the will of the Lord. You must accept it and have faith. <laughs> if you ever find yourself lost again, return to me at any time. Patty, I'm curious. Do you have an instrument too? Huh? Me? Of course not. Why would I ever want one of those stupid things? I'm fine just watching you adults play your silly little games. <sighs> Zack, the pressed flower we took from the bathroom ended up coming straight back to us. Hey, Agent York, what's next? Fear not, Patty. Our next stop is that stylish woman's house. Her name is Helena Doman, and apparently she lives in this town. What? You want to go meet her? You know her? Uh, yeah. Everyone calls her Lena. Hey, how'd you figure out her name anyway? No one told you, right? That's true. No one told me. Verbally. By pure chance, Zack and I happened to acquire this. We picked it up from the ground while the pastor was busy crying. Patty, this is a prescription for a female hormone medication, which means this person is undergoing hormone treatment. Understand? It's the oracle. This is the ticket to the goddess that we were meant to find at the White Hall. I just remembered something that Melvin said to me in the holding cell. Professor R isn't exactly a normal woman, according to him. Now it all makes sense, Patty. Lena Doman is the stylish woman we've been searching for. Professor R. in the flesh. You know, Agent York, you might actually have some talent after all. Yes, I'll be honest with you, Patty. Both Zack and I are extremely talented. So I hope you can trust us and continue working as our assistant. The address on the prescription led us to this house. Seems like she ain't home. No lights on either. <laughs> Professor R's never home, you know. Patty, why do you know so much about Professor R? I don't know that much, really. But you're the first person in town who mentioned her name to me. You also knew about San Rouge, didn't you? And when I tried to ask you more about it back then, you gave me an evasive answer. You're my assistant, aren't you? If you are, then you need to tell me everything you know about this case. Daddy don't like Lena. He said it's stupid for a man to want to turn into a woman. What? And he told me I ain't supposed to talk about her. He said that if you knew someone like her was living here, Agent York, you'd start to hate this town. That's ridiculous. Why would I ever hate this town? Because one of its inhabitants is transgender? Why in the world would that make a difference to me? The other folks in town said the same thing as Daddy. They all know about Saint Rouge and Professor R, and about how she's waging war against the Clarksons. But they all say we ain't supposed to talk about it. So I... And here I'd assumed that ignorant way of thinking died out with the 20th century. I guess I really am an outsider after all. 
I thought that everyone was cooperating with my investigation. But it turns out they were all hiding key information from me. Damn it, Zack. This just made me hate the countryside for the first time in my entire life. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for being so loud, Patricia. But just remember this. Person's birthplace, nature, race, and physical features have no bearing on their value as a human being. We're always free, and we should respect each other just the way we are. So you shouldn't feel a need to hate Lena for no reason. No matter what the people around you say, you can't let them control you. Sometimes things like common sense and decency can end up deeply hurting other people. I sincerely hope you don't forget that. Okay, I won't. But, if Lena's committed a crime, that's a different story altogether. She may be a social minority, but she's still free and capable of knowing the difference between right and wrong. Professor R, I sincerely hope she's smart enough to understand that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Listen to the two ends and drink dry the fire water. Do this and you will see the other world. Zach, did you hear that? It's another oracle. I assume this means we're getting closer to the truth. Well, this is good. We don't have any other big clues at the moment. What do you say we continue the skeletal gentleman's game? After I spent the 90s listening to nothing but punk rock, I fell out of touch with music, but the digital audio player I received last Christmas changed everything. Nowadays, people can walk around with thousands of songs in their pockets. You following me here, Zach? That's right. This oracle is connected to music. The two ends refer to neither periods nor a movie's credits. They refer to the last letter of the alphabet, Z. And what's a word that has two Z's in it? Jazz, of course. Remember, we're in Louisiana here. The fire water is even easier. It's alcohol. Let's go to that jazz bar and have a drink while we consider our next plan of action. Don't worry, this is all part of our job, isn't it, Zach? Lucari Tiger to DC Eagle. Lucari Tiger to DC Eagle. Come in. Daddy. DC Eagle here. Got any news for me? Well, Mr. York, uh, we got ourselves a bit of a problem here. What sort of problem? <laughs> Looks like Daniel's gathered up a group of people to help him find Galena's killer on his own. If the Clarsons get serious, they'll probably put an end to this case before we even know what hit us. And it sure won't be wrapped up the way you want it to, Mr. York. Yes, that certainly is a problem. Judging from Daniel's temperament, things are bound to get out of control. Hmm. Melvin, I need to find Professor R as soon as possible. P Professor R? That's right. That ain't such a good idea. I didn't ask for your personal opinion, Melvin. Especially if it comes from an antiquated, xenophobic way of thinking that's characteristic of rural towns. Whoa now, Mr. York. What's going on here? I didn't... This conversation is over, Melvin. You need to figure out what the Clarksons are planning. Call me again as soon as you know. Uh, fine. Whatever you say. Also, sorry, but would you mind coming to pick up Patricia? I would never think to take an innocent girl like her into an adult watering hole. Yeah, you're 
right. CLG's still too young for that. Wait, Daddy! Agent York! I'm going too! Don't let me out of this! No, Patricia. You signed a contract with me, remember? I promise to protect you from all the evil in our world. That's not what it means! Patty, you're smart. Shockingly so. But you're still a child. And there are certain things a child like you doesn't need to learn about yet. Just go home for today. Zack and I are both in agreement on this one. <laughs> I'm so glad you understand, Patty. Okay, Melvin, that's that. I'm leaving her here. The rest is in your hands. Roger that. I'll take care of her, Mr. York. Patty, I'm sorry I have to do this. I don't mean to abandon you. I hope you understand. This next stop feels dangerous. It's okay, I get it. I'll go home early today and take care of Mama. I'm pretty busy too, you know. Good. And do tell Melvin I said hi. Hey, Agent York. About Professor R, is she really a bad person? What do you mean? I only ever got to talk to her once. Oh, uh, is it okay to say her? How do I know what to call her? Her is fine, Patty. Simply respect the gender that the person chose. Okay. She once got arrested for causing trouble with some of the Clarkson's workers. They got drunk at her bar and went crazy or something. When she came into the sheriff's office, our eyes met just for a second. Then she said something to me. As you grow into an adult, you will witness a great deal. But you don't need to take it all in. Just stay focused on the beauty of our world. I didn't get what she meant. And because of what Daddy said, it kind of scared me. But now, I reckon I understand what she meant back then. Oh, sorry, Agent York. I shouldn't have gotten into all that when you're in such a hurry. No, that was a very important story you shared with me just now. You really are the perfect assistant. Thank you, Patricia. Zack, it appears to be closed. Let's come back during business hours. Look, Zack. That seat is beckoning us. Listen to the two ends and drink dry the fire water. Do this and you will see the other world. Hungan's oracle pointed us to this bar. So we must have to do something here. But I feel like the fire water part is missing something.
Zack, do you see that? It's a gigantic go sign. I think someone's trying to send us a very powerful message here. That settles it. This must be a singularity. Beautiful lipstick. The color red suits you. Thank you. Red is the color of life. No human who knows the joy of life would ever hate this color. Or would they? Maybe. Maybe not. But I know of a drug with a red color that certainly doesn't signify life. It sometimes even steals the lives of those who drown themselves in it. Catch my drift? Before a candle's flame burns out, it burns brighter than ever before, blazing like a shining red star. Don't you think that instant is more valuable than a century of smoldering? That blaze doesn't cast out the darkness. It only emphasizes it. But where are my manners? I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Let me get straight to the point. You were present when Lise Clarkson was murdered. And you were also involved with Galena Clarkson's death. Correct? Agent Morgan, are you a man who can hold his liquor? I'd love some fire water. We're similar, you and I. Really? I don't see the resemblance. Well, you should. Look deeper. Think about who you were when you were first born, and who you are now. Different selves exist inside your body. Are you talking about Zack? I was born as a man, but in my heart, I wasn't so. And this is a small town. I experienced far more scorn and discrimination than anyone could ever imagine. Especially from my father. Parents are supposed to raise their children with love. That's the norm, right? Not for me. I was raised by my father's flesh-seething hatred. So you ran away from home, started making drugs, then seduced a young life and destroyed it? That story makes no sense to me. Think about it. They didn't burn you in a witch hunt, nor did they ever try to take your life. Yet here you are, letting your selfish fantasies drive you to torch the entire town with vengeful fire. Now tell me, Leonard Clarkson, why did you abandon your inheritance only to end up in a place like this? What do you hope to achieve? <laughs> You've already figured out that much. Leonard doesn't exist anymore. He disappeared from me a long time ago. All that's left now is the Red Soul. The Red Soul? The Red Soul gives me strength and courage. And I vowed to use that strength to change this world. The Red Soul has the power to amplify the unique characteristics we all possess. Mentally and physically. That's why I created the Holy Red Powder. So that everyone can enjoy its divine benefits. Mm. 
That's ridiculous. Our world is home to scarier monsters than violence and prejudice. Ugh. Zack. Someday, even your best friend will abandon you. No. Never. And in the end, you'll be all alone. Zack and I will always be together. Ugh. <laughs> I can't, I can't find, find mommy, mommy either. either. <laughs> don't, don't, don't leave, leave me alone. alone. Please? Please, Daddy. Please, Daddy. Oh, she got a sack. She spiked the drink with some sort of sleeping pill. No wonder they call her the professor. Whew. But that was a rash move. Perhaps she realized that she's finally crossed the point of no return. Or... <sighs> we need to head to the Clarksons at once before it's too late. We can still stop this. Zack, it's a singularity. The Oracle was right on the mark. The mouth to the other world is open, ready to swallow us alive. I think this case is finally starting to come together. Here we go again, Zack. You're as excited as I am, aren't you? You don't have to explain everything. No need for words right now. Not while this centric, provocative experience is begging us to come inside.
Zack, do you feel it? Something happened here. It's the same feeling I got when we entered the place where Lise died. <sighs> Professor R. Lena came in here alone. It looks like nothing but a suicide attempt to me. Did she have some trick up her sleeve? That face, Zack. She looks so calm and collected. Perhaps she intended to take her own life after she murdered Philip, but that wouldn't solve anything. We know how calculating she is. Surely she must have understood that. Now you decide to come back, huh? What for? I know you've been hiding from me. Planning God knows what. Too bad it ain't gonna amount to anything. It don't matter what you do. The Clarkson family is already on its last legs. After only a single century, we're on the verge of losing all that power our ancestors built up for us. Ever since the day you left home, that was the beginning of the end. Zack, that's a miniature bomb. Lena must have set it here. Is this her trump card? It looks pretty elaborate. Another accolade for the professor. She also displayed expert precision when she used that fire to make my cocktail. Her wisdom gave birth to San Rouge. She must also have an advanced understanding of chemistry. I just hope she hasn't laid any other traps for us up ahead. Yes, I abandoned my family. But that has nothing to do with the Clarkson's downfall. It's much more complicated than that. Oh, I agree. It's a hell of a lot more complicated. <laughs> Just look at these assholes. They're so goddamn stupid. They won't even shit unless I tell them to do it. And you know what? Back in the old days, that was A-OK. -okay. Don't like someone, beat the piss out of them. Need something? Steal it from the sucker next door. Life was so much simpler back then. And time flowed in proper accordance with human behavior. But now, It's all so complicated now. Everything's changed. Philip J. Clarkson, the horrible father that Professor R. spoke of. Of course, he looks perfectly calm. It's hard to believe that it's only my second time seeing him. He's an overwhelming man, Zack. The legacy of the Clarksons is like a candle in the wind, a sad vestige of what it used to be. But it's not completely dead yet. So what? Uh, you came here to snuff it out yourself? Oh, no. I didn't come to snuff anything out. I came to make it burn red once more. What in hell is with you? Did that red powder finally make you lose your mind? They certainly look a little rough around the edges. Perhaps we should just call them the Clarkson Gang. They're holding their weapons like total amateurs which means they must not have had any formal training. 
Even if they came rushing in all at once, they'd still be no match for us. Maybe the Clarksons aren't as fearsome as the rumors make them out to be. Or perhaps they've fallen into such a decline that they can't even manage their own allies any longer. Just like you said, times have changed. You've gotten old. Your power is waning. But I'm not going to let things end here. After you and all the old tumors die, the goddess will take control of Lucare. And all of Louisiana, for that matter. The goddess of fertility, with all her newfound might. And who's that supposed to be? You? Ha! <laughs> That's a good one. You know, you're just as dumb as everyone else. You never see things for how they really are. Oh, no. <laughs> Here, go on. Take my life. You can have it. Do whatever you want with me. But don't you forget. That's clogs in blood you got running through those veins. <laughs> oh, you. You took the long way to it. But it looks like you be inheriting our legacy after all. Just like I always wanted you to. <laughs> oh, I won't be inheriting anything. What? I'm not the goddess of fertility either. Well, then... But I'm still powerful. Professor R fought hard in this hall. And the last gunshot we heard sounded ominous, Zack. Everything she says seems to hint at some deeper meaning. The goddess of fertility taking over all of Louisiana with her newfound power? The details elude me, but she's clearly plotting something big. But if she dies here, she'll never be able to complete it. Why risk it then? Oh well. Let's continue on, Zack. I'm sure we'll find the answer once we reach the Inner Sanctum. Now this is a surprise. Huh. Zack. Yo, surprised. This is my house. And I can set foot wherever I please within my own house. Or oh, is that against the law now, too, FBI? Where's Professor R? I know she came here. One hundred years ago, my father, Isaac Clarkson, came to this town and subjugated its people with his might. In time, he created an empire that put the entire southwest region of Louisiana right in the palm of his hand. Whenever any of his kin betrayed him, he'd cut them limb from limb and make an example of them. The shadows need a way of keeping the balance, too, you see. That's why the seven roots exist. Sometimes they chop a fella's ears off maybe scoop his eyes out. Then they chop off all the limbs. Either way, they all ended up looking the same in the end. No different from mixing up the ingredients in your food. But this, this is sick. Why would any soul ever need to line up the stumps all neat like this? What's happening in Lucari right now ain't right. It ain't nothing like what we got up to back in my day. You know, it kind of feels like what you call pure evil. I'll be real honest here. Right now, I'm afraid. The evil that's taking this era by the balls is trying to gobble up Lucari too. 
Francis York Morgan? You FBI son of a bitch. Just what in hell did you come to this town for? Well, I hate to rain on your sensational parade of a monologue, but my answer is simple. I came here chasing a drug called San Rouge that's been steadily permeating the southern states, and I plan to arrest all the perpetrators involved in the name of justice. <laughs> oh, you sure sound like a devil, all right. So be it. You're free to interpret my words any way you like. Well, interpret this. You've come here to bring death and destruction to our town, or my name isn't P.J. Clarkson. You leave a mountain of corpses in your wake. So go on and suffer in the name of justice or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Zack, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to prove that we fight on the side of justice. But why was Philip here in the first place? I thought we were inside her mind. Hmm. No need to answer, Zack. The only reason this world's so fun is because of all the mysteries it holds. I grew up in this room. As my back broke under all my father's expectations. Your cocktail was delicious. So delicious, in fact, that it carried me off into a dream. Huh. Professor R. What did you hope to achieve by coming back to this house? I don't believe for a moment that you'd ever risk your life just to get revenge on your father. <laughs> Leonard Clarkson. That was my name when I lived here. Everyone called me Lenny. My father taught me all sorts of things so that I would grow up to become a proper heir. How to manipulate people. How to properly use tools such as violence and rewards, but I could never bring myself to care about any of it. You left this place in order to find your true self. But what did that achieve? In the end, you fell back into Lucare, and now you spend your time selling the new drug you created, preying on the weak. You and the Clarksons are exactly alike in that regard. No, you choose your victims indiscriminately, which makes you even uglier. Some people find joy in ruining themselves, offering up their lives to whatever they worship. This cycle has repeated itself since long ago. To me, it's the most noble of actions. Surely you must agree, Agent Morgan. Stop trying to rationalize your crimes with that dramatic gibberish. Vici situdo, the Latin word used to describe a fluctuation between two polar opposites. Galena's body wasn't a declaration of war. It was this, wasn't it? Those severed roots were fakes. Who did you force to kill Galena? I can't believe you figured out that much. You're dangerous. What you're talking about is true madness, not some noble fairy tale. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to shoot me. Okay. Go ahead and shoot. Come on! Shoot me! Ugh. The Clarkson bloodline is cursed. It needs purification. A blood purge! <laughs>
Zack, here it is again. A red tree and a translucent cocoon. I think we've reached the core. The goddess of fertility will descend into Lucari, and then the sweet fruit will be ours. Destruction is the first step to creation. <laughs> Lisa's death sent everything into motion. There's no stopping it now. Her death proved how determined I am. How dedicated I am to all who trust in me. Alina and Lise, their deaths were not in vain. They led us to the harvest. The Clarkson blood curse will be washed away. Life must be sacrificed. Blood purge. Blood purge. Blood. Blood. I need blood! Galena and Lise, they're both dead. I can't turn back now! The Red Soul can't die here! You can't erase it! Blood Purge! The Blood Purge! We will create a new world! A new generation! Must be purified. That's the true self you worked so hard to find. I'm sorry, Lena. I gave you far more credit than I ever should have. The Clarksons have always been the chosen ones. Proud souls. Divine life-given form. But at some point, that blood became tainted. So I decided to reset it. I need to purify this corrupt blood for the one I love most. After I left home, I met the Red Soul and acquired a guide. And so I created the Red Powder and became an apostle for the Red Magic. The Red Powder transforms the body from within. It creates empowered souls. And mature souls are the greatest offering one can present to the Goddess. Lise and Galena didn't lose their minds. They both died with honor. Died with honor? Just how deluded are you? Dismembered them and strung up their bodies in the name of vapid symbolism. Where's the honor in that? So what if they said they wanted to die? Cultists have been saying that for centuries. Silence! You will impede us no longer. You're always so smug. Oh, how I hate you. This is the last you'll ever see of my plan. Now die! Ha 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 ha! 
about the plan. No. How could I lose? But it's too late. No one can stop my plan. Now. Not even me. Red Tree! Lena, let go. I'm going to count to three, then you're going to get down on the ground and put your hands behind your head. Got it? See this? If I let go, the bomb in the fireplace will explode. Do something smart for once, Lena. Detonating that bomb won't solve anything. You're wrong. Agent Morgan, it'll give me the ending I've always dreamed of. Leonard, you're wrong. Killing me will bring back our family's prosperity. No, I know I'm right. You. Never change. Once you make up your mind, that single idea possesses you. It's almost like you're cursing yourself. Oh, my. Always holding on to all your pain. No! You're the one who's wrong! When you. First told me about the disparity between your mind and your body. I didn't know how to love you. Stop it! I don't want to hear this! But I... I always knew from the very... Stop! Stop talking! There was something special inside you. I also know that you had any cause with your older sister. Your own flesh and blood. Shut 
Shut up! I just didn't know how to treat you. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Stop. Please. I never, ever hated you. I always loved you from the bottom, bottom of my... I said shut up. Don't, Lena. This is necessary. All of the corrupt blood must die. The Clarkson's blood must be purged. Then, the purity that's left behind can rebuild the Clarkson's legacy. Is that the goddess of fertility? Go and see her with your own eyes. You're an FBI special agent. Surely you can find her. No one can stop my plan now. Not even me. No, stop! Patricia Clarkson. <laughs> Agent York? Can you hear me? What is it, Patty? Where's Melvin? Well, I don't know. He won't answer me, and he ain't at the sheriff's office either. What should I do? You think he got caught up in some kind of trouble? <laughs> oh, I did. No. I did. Oh, shit. I got nothing now. Oh. oh. Uh, I can't. I can't. Patty, I need someone at the Clarkson's house ASAP. I don't care who you send. They can also ask Daniel Clarkson about the details once they get here. And you should also call an ambulance just in case. Got it? Huh? Uh, sure. I'm going to head straight over to the sheriff's office, Patty. Let's meet up there. Did you find Melvin? Nope. I can't find either of them. Either of them? Yeah. When I went home, it wasn't just my daddy who was missing. Mama was gone, too. This never happened before.
Zack, we need to stop Professor R's plan, no matter what it takes. Relax, Patty. You don't need to worry about a thing. I'm sure that Melvin just stumbled across an important clue that's stolen his attention for now. And I'm sure he's protecting your mother while he's at it. Let's just leave the investigation to the local police and rest for today. I need to prepare a report for the HQ anyway. How about staying with me in my room until we find them? But... You don't need to worry. I can't make you any homemade food, but I've got a first-class chef and a first-class concierge at my disposal. Oh, <laughs> and a very affable bellboy. It's a lot of fun at that hotel. But... Okay, I guess. Thanks, Agent York. You're a lady, so you take the bed. Zack and I will be fine on the couch. Zack, the Clarkson family tree is nothing like we thought it was. We need to reorganize everything we've uncovered so far. She was so tired she fell right to sleep. Hey, Zack, I'm in a very difficult spot right now. I feel like this case is heading in a direction that will be extremely unpleasant for her. I've never felt anything like this during any of our cases thus far. First, let's go back to the beginning. Lise Clarkson's body was found hanging under a bridge over the bayou, in a deserted spot close to where the bayou meets the Mississippi. The one who fired the pistol at heaven surely had no idea what he would find there. Speaking of which, Zack, Chuck, the man who started this race we're running, what's his occupation? There isn't a single pro bowler in this town. Think again. Mrs. Carpenter is an elderly madam who lives off her pension, not a pro. That reminds me, didn't we spy Pastor Sanders lamenting her lack of faith? If you ask me, she puts her faith in bowling, period. Now, Zach, could I trouble you for a serious answer? No, that title belongs to our sage-like mentor, Emma Sanders. Zach, don't tell me you already forgot about how she gave us special training. She's the only reason we were able to keep forging ahead. I feel indebted to her, and I don't think she'd appreciate this error. That's right. He's a crawfish farmer. And after chasing a poacher's boat that crossed over into his farmland, he went up the bayou and was fortunate enough to find Lisa's body. I doubt it was a very pleasant experience for him. But if not for his discovery, Lisa's body might have started rotting out there. He's a difficult person to be sure, but I don't think he's a bad guy. Chuck said something peculiar. He claimed the Clarksons were a little better when their son was still around. I don't know exactly what he meant, but we ended up meeting the person he was talking about, didn't we? Under very unexpected circumstances, Leonard Clarkson. He ran away from home, found his true self, then changed names. Sozak. Do you remember her name? Zach, are you trying to be funny? It's true that as of now, Danny's the last standing heir, and I guess it also makes him their eldest living son, but you know that wasn't what I meant. So let me ask you again, who is Professor R? Philip J. Clarkson. He took the empire his father created and made it bigger and better. Imagine his shock when it all suddenly started to crumble and decline. No matter the age, Zack, people are always prone to destroying their own families. Betrayals, rebellions, coup d'etats, public executions. Our history has proven this time and time again. Professor R was simply honoring a human tradition, but no logic could ever justify what she did. Come on, Zach, I know you can remember her name. Helena Doman. The townspeople call her Lena. 
She was also known as Professor R while she plotted against the Clarksons. She's the mother of the new drug known as Saint Rouge. She must have also had a group of followers who worshipped her fanatically. I can see it now. Lena sprinkling down the red powder, corrupting every last pure and innocent girl in town. Lena mentioned her plan each time we met. She must have taken us for utter fool sack. She thought she was always one step ahead of us and that we'd never see the full scope of her plan. Well, her plan isn't complete yet, and I know we can still stop it. That's why we need to learn all we can about her. Her alias was Professor R, and she was well-learned in the areas of medicine and fire dynamics. By the way, Zach, do you remember what weapon Lena used to murder PJ? A machete and an axe. Now that's a classic combo. Pamela and Jason Voorhees. A sad tale of a mother and son who truly loved each other. And perhaps it was also meant as a warning for young people who planned to go camping that summer. 1980, directed by Sean S. Cunningham, Friday the 13th. But my personal favorite character has to be the adult Jason who first appears in Friday the 13th Part 2. I even cried when they showed us just how well he'd taken care of his mother's head. Okay, Zach. I think that's enough digressing for now. Ready to give me a straight answer? If she used poisonous gas, we might not be here right now. Remember, our investigation led us into the same building they were in. The murder weapon was something else. Correct. She used a miniature bomb. To tell you the truth, she surprised me. That bomb was so well placed. It left hardly any damage on the building itself, yet still did amazing work on them. Lena should have used that brain of hers for something more productive than that saga of revenge. For example, Reviving Lucare's economy from the industrial sector. Widen your perspective, and you'll see that Louisiana is an industrial treasure trove. With her intelligence and her charisma, I'm sure she would have found some amazing opportunity. It's such a tragedy. Zach, there's one more important matter we need to think about here. Galena Clarkson, who was murdered in jail. Her body was dismembered, then rearranged into a V-shape. Patty and Melvin claimed it was a severed roots killing, but that doesn't make sense to me. And PJ Clarkson disapproved of it when I met him in the other world. He saw Galena's parts lined up and was overcome by an inexplicable fear. Tell me, who killed Galena? Unfortunately, we don't have the answer to this one yet. And it's too big a problem to solve with mere speculation. The answer to this question may lead to a major turning point for this case and the final turning point for this story. You know it's true, Zack. I only hope it doesn't push us down an avenue we didn't plan on exploring. Hey, Zach, do you remember PJ's last words? Lenny had intercourse with his older sister. His own flesh and blood. This means there's still one more person out there who inherited PJ's blood. Oh, fucking poachers, now I gotcha. Caught you red-handed.
Soon, I'm almost there. Just... Please, someone, stop that noise. Let me try and summarize this. Helena Doman was the mastermind behind the entire incident. But Helena Doman was actually P.J. Clarkson's son, who had severed ties with the family. Helena was also known as Professor R, the mother brain behind the drug known as Saint Rouge. That's right. She was responsible for everything? Not everything, but most of it. Almost everything went according to her plan. But if you'd already figured out that much, why did you continue to stay in Lucare? Because we had to. You had to? Whatever for? The goddess was still there. The goddess? The goddess of fertility. Lise Clarkson's body. <laughs> Not her. She was as beautiful as a goddess, but she wasn't the goddess. She was just a tragic victim. Then who is the goddess of fertility? The person at the root of this case. Is it some kind of metaphor? For example, the vast wealth that the red powder yielded? <laughs> the goddess of fertility embodied abundance on the outside. But on the inside, she was a hollow void, and that void was threatening to swallow up all of Lucare. Mm. Oh. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! <sighs> Are you okay, Mr. Morgan? Morgan almost sounds like a prophet talking about the end of the world. Vague, elusive, and intent on deceiving those who listen. But every now and then he adds an interval of truth. Patricia Clarkson is one of those. She's something special. Something irreplaceable to him.
The sound of a baby crying got him that agitated? He may be sick, but that's still no excuse for this behavior. Instead of kicking your floor, perhaps it'd be wiser to invest in a soundproofing mat. Are you irritated, Belle? Yes, of course you are. You think we lack a common human trait, and that bugs you. We're crazy. Human refuse. That's how we look to you, isn't it? I would never go that far, but you did surprise me. Just doesn't seem like the kind of attitude one should display when in the company of others. Yes, we're sorry. We agree with you. It just made us remember a time when that noise kept ringing out and we couldn't stop it. That flight from Newark Liberty to Seattle Tacoma. It was the first flight we took as FBI agents. The plane was shaking violently due to turbulence. And when we looked to the side, we saw a young mother cradling a baby with a frightened look on her face. We got worried, so he spoke to her. Then the baby started crying. It was so loud. We couldn't resist plugging up our ears. And since it was so loud, the rest of the passengers started glaring at us. At first, the mother and I waved our hands, trying to quiet down the baby. But our efforts were in vain. It never stopped crying. The more our anxiety levels rose, the louder its cries grew, shrill and piercing. As if they were heralding the apocalypse, we were powerless, and the baby's mother was helplessly bewildered. Once the plane landed safely in Tacoma, the baby finally stopped crying. We heaved a sigh of relief and looked at the mother. Then she said, Whose child is this? We were shocked. So we asked her what was going on. Apparently, sometime after she boarded the flight, that baby randomly appeared on her lap. Then it ordered her to call me over and kept sitting there as if nothing was wrong. Can you believe that, Belle? Bizarre, isn't it? While we were talking, the baby disappeared. The being responsible for all that loud, grating noise simply disappeared without a trace. Ever since then, whenever I hear a baby crying, I remember that bizarre experience. Well, what do you think, my fairy? Was it some sort of sign? It looks like he burned something other than firewood in here. Did he destroy something when he figured out we were coming? Or maybe it's just a red herring meant to throw us off. I know how he operates. I can't take anything at face value. The logs in the center look far more burnt compared to the rest. Almost looks like they were used in conjunction with some kind of accelerant. Did you recently burn something there? It's our fireplace. We're free to use it as we please. I see traces of resin. Which leads me to believe you burned up some sort of toxic substance. It doesn't matter what kind of fireplace you have. Burning anything other than firewood in it is dangerous. Next time, don't burn it up at home. Dispose of it like you would any other non-burnable refuse. Especially if it was something like a smartphone or a USB memory stick. <laughs> Non-burnable refuse like a smartphone? Let's be serious here, Belle. That's exactly the sort of data one needs to thoroughly immolate. Remember what you learned at Quantico. I'm so close to finding out where she is. So close now. By the way, you're still searching for Patricia, yes? 
You don't need to worry about that. We're investigating. In fact, we've almost reached our goal. We just need to find some conclusive evidence. Oh, we sincerely hope that's the case. Hard to believe, though. After all, so far you've just been barking up the wrong tree. Barking up the wrong tree. That's right. You shouldn't be wasting time here. You should be out there, looking for her. Then I'll just ask you straight away. Do you know where she is? No, we don't. But we can feel her when we close our eyes and become one with the world. It's very faint, but we can see her. We can see Patricia. Are you trying to distract me again? Or do you really expect me to believe you're clairvoyant or something? <laughs> what do you think we are, X-Men? It's metaphysical offender profiling. He actually asked me where Patricia is? Does he have full confidence that we'll never find her? Fine. I can deal with that. I'll just ask him everything I can about the Lucare case. Professor R was a Clarkson, and also the mother of Saint Rouge. By the way, how did the FBI find Lisa's body after 14 whole years? That's none of your business. Are you saying they just happened to be investigating the Clarkson's cold storage warehouse by pure chance that there was some undercover terrorism plot at foot there? I said it's none of your business. Well, then we'll just have to guess. It was an anonymous tip. A tip related to Saint Rouge. Did we hit the nail on the head, Belle? <laughs> but that's not what we want to know about. After all, the FBI gets hundreds of tips every day. Right, my fairy? It was always that way, even back when we were on duty. Here's what we really want to know. Why, out of all those tips, did you select that one? Would you tell us that much, Bell? What urged you to make a beeline straight for this case? That's none of your business. Low-fat vitamin D milk cartons. Why are they all lined up so neatly? This square area enclosed by milk cartons. Is it another sanctuary? The more I look around, the more I feel like there's some sort of system to all this. The sanctuary on this table. The fireplace sanctuary. And the milk carton sanctuary. They all lead into the room back there. And there's one more by the window, and yet another by my feet. Are they signs? Or is this all some sort of path? Hey, Belle. Is that a serious question? Of course it is. We're drying them out. We line the milk cartons up to dry them out so we can turn them into Halloween decorations. Halloween? It's only January. This is America. Land of the free. Got a problem with that? If Professor R really was the mastermind behind everything, if she wanted to rebuild the Clarkson's legacy, then why did she feel the need to kill everyone? So you think Galena was murdered by Helena Dolman, her own brother? No, not her. Galena was someone else. Then who killed her? It's written in the report, isn't it? Yes, but I'm asking you. Would you mind answering me in your own words? You see, I find your entire story highly suspicious. <sighs> it's a complicated matter. Extremely complicated. Don't let him draw you into his game. 
Stay calm, Aaliyah Davis. Am I winning here or... No. I need to stay positive. I have to solve this case no matter what it takes. I can't lose courage here. The future influences the present just as much as the past. You asked me why I spent an entire two days observing you before I came to speak with you. Well, here's why. Over those 49 hours, I observed the intervals between your actions, when you were neither doing something nor doing nothing. I intently studied your intervals between action to action, and action to inaction to action. People reveal everything during the intervals between their actions. For example, when you eat alone versus eating with someone else. The most prominent differences always appear when someone either begins or finishes eating a meal. And since these are unconscious actions, they can't be consciously hidden. When you prepare to eat or finish eating, when you move in to clean up, when you pick up a book or close one, when you raise a cup of coffee to your lips. Human actions speak volumes. Not even the person doing the actions is conscious of them. That's what lies in those intervals. That's my modus operandi. And here's the conclusion it helped me reach. There's one other person in this house, isn't there? <laughs> You're incredible, Belle. You outdid all our expectations. Impressive, to say the least. You're right, Bill. But only half right. Half? You should still be proud, though. Honestly, we never thought you'd make it this far. You've got real talent. <laughs> if this goes to court, I won't let you claim that your testimony is inadmissible just because of your little indulgence there. Fine by us. We can even put it in writing if you want. We... Won't run or hide, will we, my fairy? Where's the, the paper? I know I had it around here somewhere. Where, where is it? Oh. 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 We're fine. Hey, everything okay? What's going on out here? Oh, don't tell me. He's just suffering from nausea. I was more worried about you. You were in there for quite some time. Yeah, sorry. Ever since you got here, I've been all backed up. <laughs> Mr. Morgan, can you stand? Oh. Is this a sign from a coffee? What could it be? What is it trying to tell me? Think. Is that a dragonfly? Footsteps. Big footsteps. Footsteps. Big f footsteps. Some odd fella was following her around, stalking her like. That poor girl, Lace. She was a druggie, and she was into the really bad stuff. The Red Soul has the power to amplify the unique characteristics we all possess, mentally and physically. That's why I created the Holy Red Powder. You okay? Hey. We're fine. Just feeling a little tired. Would you take us to get our medicine? Uh, sure. It's in the bathroom, right? Whew. <sighs> Seems like he's calmed down a little. We should let him rest for a while. One more step and I could have cornered Morgan. So be it. 
I can still keep investigating even if the owner of this chair isn't present. Simon Jones, what a piece of work. How can anyone have such bad timing? Agent Jones has been acting strange the entire time we've been here. He told me he wasn't very good at dealing with suspects in person, but can anyone be this bad at it? Is he hiding something? Or maybe our suspect found some dirt on him. Either way, I wish he'd stop trying to drag me down with him. Let me get one thing straight. You started this investigation based on an anonymous tip, right? What kind of a tip was it? Phone or mail? What does that matter at this point? <sighs> this may surprise you, but these kinds of details really eat me up inside. I always get hung up on the most insignificant of details, especially during the most vital times. For example, uh, you know how people go to bed early the night before they have a big job? That's exactly the time where I start focusing on, on, on meaningless nonsense. Hmm, when did I last clip my nails? How long is my milk good for? I just can't help myself. I can't resist the need to know. It's just the way I am. <sighs> It was sent in an envelope, postmarked December 28th, sent out from Louisiana. What did it have inside? A postcard with a dragonfly on it, a wrapped sample of Saint Rouge, and a note. Ooh. What did it say? Investigate the Clarksons. F.K. That's it? Yes, that's it. Who's F.K.? Anonymous tip, remember? It's obviously just a fake name. Did you confirm that? Of course I did. Louisiana has a population of 4.5 million. The FBI database has a list of 6,682 individuals whose initials are FK. One out of every six individuals is a child under the age of 14, born after 2005. The remaining 5,500 people include those whose initials changed after they married or incarcerated individuals. After subtracting those, I was left with 3,800. That's when I stopped searching for FK and I decided to change up my approach. It isn't important where the tip came from. All that matters is solving the case. I got this far by taking the most efficient route possible. Are you satisfied now? Yeah, thanks. I feel a lot better now. Yep, it all checks out. I didn't think he'd gotten this bad. I can't let him die on me yet. I need to get more clues out of him before his time runs out. Shouldn't you look after him? I gave him his meds and let him rest. Let him rest where? In the bathtub. It happened to have a blanket and a pillow in it. What? But why? I don't know. Maybe he sleeps in the tub. I feel like I saw that once in some vampire movie. I don't know what you're talking about. More importantly, how long has he been like that? It's stage four cancer. He's had it for a while now. No. No. I'm talking about his face. It looks as white as a sheet. You can even see all his veins. I've never heard of any cancer side effect like that. Uh, who knows? But now that you mention it, he started going really crazy around the beginning of December. In what way? He changed pizza places. This better not be another joke. It's not, really. It's not. Before December, he always used to order delivery from a Chicago-style joint all the way up near Medford. But one day, he took one look at one of their trademarked red boxes and totally lost it. Red, huh? You better believe it. He started screaming gibberish at the pizza boy and chased him away. Next thing I know, I see him toss the pizza box out his window. Do you think that's when his fear of red began surfacing more prominently? Beats me. I mean, there isn't a better Chicago-style pizza place that delivers around this area. How could someone give up on that, just because they don't like the box? I don't get it. Were you serious for even a fraction of that story? The letter that was delivered to me bore the Clarkson symbol. A postcard decorated with a dragonfly. The mark of the Clarkson family. A single sheet of paper ordering me to investigate the Clarksons. And...
What's wrong, Aaliyah? You hungry or something? Excuse me? What are you insinuating? Well, you're staring right at an empty pizza box. Please don't compare yourself to me. Besides, I have a refined palate. Hey, that was uncalled for. Pizza is a sacred food, remember? You don't need to feel embarrassed for being unable to stop staring at it. It enthralls all who gaze upon it. That's the power of pizza. Stop, Agent Jones. I've had enough of this sacred pizza bit. I'm sick of you Chicagoans and your obsession with pizza. Pizza, 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 24 hours a day, that's all you ever talk about. D Ugh. What's next? You gonna launch into a tirade about how deep dish is the only proper way to make pizza? No, 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 Aaliyah. You just don't get it, do you? As a Chicagoan, I'm proud of the deep dish pizza. But get this. I love New York-style pizza, too. It doesn't matter what kind of pizza it is. As long as it's a pizza, it's beautiful. What? Still don't get it? Okay, here. I'm gonna put it in terms that I'm sure even you could understand. All pizzas are created equal. Eat your heart out, Nietzsche. Just forget I mentioned anything. Professor R, the mother of this evil powder, is dead and gone. So then why are her demon seeds still being passed down? This drug has already taken so many lives and more are bound to follow. It has to be stopped. So, why did you decide to take this case? Because it's my job. Really? I don't buy it. Why not? You aren't just following orders here. You've got way too much emotion invested in this. Some kind of special emotion. There's no use trying to hide it. Despite how I may look, data analysis is my forte. I know how to see through lies. I don't mean to be nosy, but would it kill you to confide in me a little? I didn't manage to live this long simply because I'm fiendishly handsome. And besides, we're going to be tiptoeing across a thin line of legality with the rest of this case, so I'd prefer to have some probable cause. That way, at least I can back you up when you need me to. There exists in the world a single path along which no one can go except you. Whither does it lead? Do not ask. Go along it. You're pulling out Nietzsche at a time like this? Come on! I have a little brother. After overdosing on a certain drug, he was thrown into rehab. He's been clean for two years now, but he still won't utter a single word. All day long, he's plagued by hallucinations. He can't tell if he's dead or alive, if this is reality or if it's all a dream. Saint Rouge? That's right. The doctor can't tell what's causing his condition, so they can't treat him. He just told me to prepare for the possibility that I may never get my brother back. This was his. I bought it for him after he graduated high school and found a job. He never got a single chance to wear it, though. Someday, I believe that he'll get better. And I'll get to see him put this on and head out to work. So you think that if we nab the person behind all this, we may figure out how to conquer the addiction? Right. You really think it'll be that easy? I don't know. But I can't just sit around and do nothing. He's the only family I have in the entire world. What about your parents? When I was only 13, Katrina took them, leaving my seven-year-old brother and I behind. I'm sorry. It's fine. I've already dealt with my past. Now I'm just working as hard as I can to complete the duty I've been given. Yeah. Hey, Agent Jones, I just want to double check one thing. You didn't find anything in the bathroom. Nope. Nothing in there. It must be the bedroom, then. Just like I thought. Are you serious about this? Huh? Now you're having second thoughts? Well, not exactly. Then what? I understand how you feel, but he's got an incurable disease. And he used to be one of us. So? The truth he's given us so far could all be completely fabricated. He's a genius lone wolf agent who solved nothing but difficult cases during his years of active duty. That's what they told me at Quantico, at least. 
over and over again. I had to listen to them talk about how no one could ever replicate the kind of work he did. But let's be real here. You saw his face, didn't you? It was inhuman. It looked like the face of a killer who's been possessed by death. Patricia Clarkson is here, in the next room, only a single wall away from us. After 14 years, he went back to Lucare, kidnapped her, and imprisoned her here. He's trying to complete something big right now, something that's deeply connected to Saint Rouge. What is all this? <sighs> Pictures of people from Lucare. And this wall is dedicated to Greenvale. All the deceased have been crossed out. Sheriff Melvin Woods. Lise Clarkson? Where's Patricia? That's our altar. What are you doing? York? Hey! <laughs> hey, Agent York. <sighs> You're Lise Clarkson. What's wrong? You're acting weird. Sorry, Patty, I'm fine now. More importantly, do these red seeds come from some kind of plant that grows around this area? I don't know. What do I look like, a botanist? This isn't your average backwoods town. The Clarkson's ego and control has been piercing the town's heart like a massive dinosaur bone. But over this past century... Time has been busy eroding the beast's power from within. And now, the very thing that once fortified this town is polluting it with putrid gas and rotten marrow. Zack, this is the point where it all collapses.
Did you notice anything strange before your daddy went missing? Did he seem different from usual, or say things that didn't make sense? Nope. He was the same as always. We talked a lot. I reckon he was in a better mood than usual. Almost even too talkative. Zack, she's putting on a strong face, but it's clear that she's very worried. Let's try and cheer her up a bit. What's the best thing to say in times like these? You don't need to worry about me, Agent York. Let's just focus on the work we have left to do. Unfortunately, it looks like your parents disappearing is connected with this case somehow. Yeah, I know. Melvin seems to love you so much. It's hard for me to believe he would just disappear and leave you all alone. Something must be afoot here. I wish I could tell you I'm sure they're okay, even without any evidence. But I hate lies, Patty. I can't guarantee that they're safe. That's my honest opinion. I'm trying to prepare myself for it. But I want to hope that they're okay. Of course. Zack and I feel the same way. But if you happen to think of anything that might help, please let me know. Even the tiniest piece of information could end up coming in handy. Yeah, I understand. But I really don't know anything. I just feel like I know that Mama's okay somehow. Meaning? Even when we're apart, I can always tell how my mom is feeling. You know, like how twins can sense each other's feelings? But that's it. I can't tell where she is or what she's doing. Besides, I'm just a kid. Can't really trust what I'm saying, can you? Zack, it seems like she and her mother possess some kind of secret bond. But we shouldn't try to force it out of her. Yes, you're exactly right. Let's just keep our eyes on her for now. After Lise Clarkson was murdered, her body was put back together here, just like how Galena's body was dismembered, then rearranged within the holding cell. Lena Doman and PJ's bodies were also blown to pieces in the end. Perhaps that's the nature of the curse that's taken hold of the Clarksons. What do you think, Zack? Is there any significance to these similarities? This altar is covered in burn marks, but there's hardly any residue left. There's no way for me to tell what was burned here. I could send it home for analysis, but is that really necessary? It'll just end up giving Abrahams more busy work. More importantly, Zack, someone who knew how to manipulate fire was behind all this. In other words, these roots prove that Lena was here. And that's enough for me. Zack, this is an ominous sign. Among all the different footprints here are a set made from engineer boots. Yes, I know, I know. He probably only made them when he came to inspect the scene. I'm sure that Patty and I left our own set of prints here too, but how do you explain the set that's inside the yellow tape? There's some decomposing cloth here. We saw the same type of cloth at the sugarcane plantation. They must have used that cloth when they transported Lisa's body. But who cares about mundane evidence like that? This isn't a case that can be solved by gathering the kind of evidence we'd need to submit to a court. The growth is all missing from this particular section. It wasn't just cut away. She used fire to burn it out. Everything was planned so meticulously, as if she wanted to show this altar to someone. That's why Chuck ended up discovering it. Solved the case, yeah? So go on! Get your ass out of town! Why do you think I solved the case? Shoot! Exactly how stupid are you, FBI? This is Luke Carre, remember? Every fella in town already knows that Professor Orr's the one behind all this shit! 
Hey, Chuck. Can you see the altar from there? I'd see the whole damn thing, along with your stupid ass standing there, trying to act all smart and shit. You told me that the poacher's boat you were chasing disappeared around this area, correct? Yeah, that's what I said, all right. What, you forget already? If you're just gonna waste our tax dollars out here, least you could do is catch them goddamn poachers. Fucking FBI, go and make yourself useful for once in your damn life. Chuck, we don't chase down fishing boats. Unless it's a terrorist boat that plans to overthrow our government, that is. Huh. Then stop acting all leery, like I ain't being truthful or whatever. I'm busy too, you know. So long, FBI. Zack, he just taught us what the true purpose of this altar is. It was built here so that the ritual could be watched from a boat in the bayou. What do you mean? They could have just walked out here. There's no reason why they had to watch it from a boat. The goddess of fertility, Patty. <laughs> <laughs> the goddess of fertility. A fine name indeed. So much blood has been shed. Yet you remain in this town. Surely you know why. Of course I do, Hoongan. My work here isn't finished yet. You know, I could really use one of your oracles right now. <laughs> You're more fun than I thought. Here's the oracle you ask for. Listen with your heart. Speak to the 17 comrades who saw the birth of New Orleans. Feel the holy Allah. The giant lady's finger points down toward your goal. The entrance to the forbidden. Poetic and graceful as ever, Hoongan. <laughs> Hoongan's oracles are leading us toward the core of this case. That's the one thing I'm sure of. But don't misunderstand, Zack. I'm not blindly following him. I only follow my intuition. Metaphysical offender profiling. That's all there is to it. The 17 comrades must refer to some area that has 17 of the same thing in it. We may need to use history to figure this one out. After all, we need to find someone or something that saw the birth of New Orleans. That's not it, Zack. The 17 comrades must have survived for a shockingly long time. Remember, they were here to see the birth of New Orleans. That's not it, Zack. The 17 com- Remember- Wait, that's not it, Zack. The seven- Remember, they were here to see the birth of New Orleans. Wait, that's not it, Zack. The seven- Remember- that's it, Zack. The French established the colony of La Nouvelle Orléans in 1718. Just about 300 years ago, the only 17 comrades that would have been around back then are the 300-year-old oak trees along this road. A majestic road lined by oak trees. Come on, let's go ask these sages of Lucare for some help on our investigation. Zack. The Holy Allah is a shockingly simple metaphor. Especially, it seems as if Hoongan's poetic muse is finally running dry. The great thing about us Americans is that we can recreate our homeland anywhere. We're happy to transport crunchy bacon across the deserts of Africa if we need to. That's what it means to be American. And this Holy Allah is just another example of that. From the early days of the frontier era, they've been helping us Americans be what we've always meant to be. Zack, there's no Allah there. Don't think so hard about it. The holy Allah refers to that one thing we see so often in American towns. Zack, there's no Allah there. Don't think so. The holy Allah. That's it. I never doubted you, Zack. The holy Allah refers to a water tower, specifically that water tower with its Clarkson family crest. It must be hiding some sort of clue. 
Let's fill the ala and see what it yields. Zach, what do you think the giant lady's finger is? I'm at a loss. I never thought one of Hoongan's childish riddles would force me to think so hard. But, oh well. I'm sure that as we deal with the rest of the oracle, it'll reveal itself to us. Wh what is there something on my face? Listen carefully, Patricia. As my skilled assistant, I trust you a great deal. So I want you to answer me honestly. Answer what? Do you have any idea where Melvin might have gone? No. He didn't seem to be acting or talking differently than usual? No. I don't think so. Okay. I believe your words. Zach, we have a lot of work to do. It feels like we're finally approaching the climax here. There's no movie theater in this town, nor is there a video rental store, and the TV in the hotel room doesn't get any of the on-demand movie channels. We'll just have to get lucky and encounter a movie being shown on TV. The movie environment in Lucare is no different from that of the 70s, Zach. No, they don't have a movie theater. So I suppose it's even farther back than that. But it's true that these are the times in which one always encounters the best movies. It's always been that way, hasn't it? Think back with me. Remember that hotel in the rundown town near Monroeville, just outside of Pittsburgh? I took a shower, and by the time I got back into bed, it had already started. Time Walker. 1982, directed by Tom Kennedy. I started watching it without any idea as to what it was about, but it instantly got me hooked. The plot highly exceeded all my expectations, constantly revealing shocking truth after shocking truth it was a hyper-realism masterpiece. Even after we checked out from the hotel, we couldn't get that film out of our heads. Not even when we stopped by the Monroeville Mall, the primary filming location for Dawn of the Dead. Instead of the living dead, both you and I were totally preoccupied with thoughts of that living mummy. And we were so excited to visit the Monroeville Mall, too. You kept insisting that you were going to track down those kumquats that Roger had eaten. In fact, I'm pretty sure the only reason I took on that case was because I knew it would let us travel out there. Instead, Time Walker blindsided us, and that's all we could think about. Even when we were inside the mall, we were both off in a different world. There you have it, Zach. A beautiful memory of an encounter with an 80s masterpiece in a very unexpected place. Professor Park, how could such an intelligent person like her suffer such a tragic downfall? Does the South really corrupt people like Patty said? Zach, do you sense that? These trees have watched over this land for the past 300 years. Long before the Clarksons built up their town, these trees were here. If they could speak, I wonder what they'd have to say about this case. Has there always been a different number of trees on each side? Yeah, I heard that by the time our town came along, there were only 17 left. So, what other movies have you seen on that?
A general from the South might have cut one down during the Civil War. Intriguing, Patty. Why did he cut one down? I don't know. Folks say he planted a red tree in its place. I don't know if that's true or not, though. Zach, the shape of these seeds. They look just like the ones we saw at Lisa's altar. Patty, it appears that legend about the red tree wasn't a total lie. The first tree is withered and gone, but the shells from its seeds remain. Perhaps that red tree left some descendants somewhere else. Zach, he seems to know something that we don't. Doesn't it seem like he's trying to guide us somewhere? Um, what? What's going on? Change of plans, Patty. Let's go on a little stroll with that Dalmatian. Is this the red tree that General planted? No way! This is a maple tree! A maple tree? Then it shouldn't be red at this time of year. You're right. 
That's strange. A long time ago, my mama and daddy used to come here together a lot. They told me they used to go on dates here, back before I was born. Mama would make sandwiches, then they'd come here and eat them together. My mama was really pretty, you know. When I was a kid, I believed she was a real goddess. Under the boughs of a legendary tree that stayed red all year long, a small miracle was born. One man managed to win the heart of the most beautiful girl in the world. And they call him Melvin Woods. Looks like it's time to move on. What a fantastic guide we managed to find. He actually waited for us to finish talking before taking us on to the next spot. Hey, Patty. How would you rate this creation? Not bad, I reckon. They made good use of its natural form while also pulling out the soul from within. The artificial color also looks pretty. You don't usually see this level of harmony. Something unnatural always ends up getting left behind. Zach, did you catch all that? She sounded just like the curator of an art gallery in New York. I think we may have just uncovered a new side of her. But unfortunately, I can't see anything artistic about it. Honestly, it looks insane to me. That's all I get from it. And there's no way that this is a descendant of the tree that the general planted. Zach, now this is interesting. It looks like a tree that you could find anywhere, yet it's also unlike any other, completely alien. And look how it's weaved its way into the landscape. Almost like cancer cells invading a human body. You might not even notice it unless you're focused on finding it. And this feeling. As I gaze upon this tree, I can feel evil emotions rising out from within me. Why on earth did that southern general bring this tree into this town? I promise to protect you from all the evil in our world. Do not touch this tree. Got that, Patty? Got it, Agent York. I promise to protect you from all the evil in our world. Do not touch this tree. Got that, Patty? Got it, Agent York. We successfully spoke with the 17 comrades. I feel like they showed us a side of nature that transcends the realms of human knowledge. Next up is the Holy Allah. According to the Oracle, the Holy Allah needs to be filled. We may be due for another childish puzzle soon, Zach, but that's okay. After all, we came all the way out here to the boondocks. Why not enjoy playing by their rules for a bit? Hey, let's shout something out loud. Like what? 
Why do you think the Clarksons chose a dragonfly for their family crest? In some European countries, dragonflies are called devil's needles, and folklore suggests that they fly around sewing up the mouths of children who don't do as they're told. In Japan, some samurai helmets are also shaped like dragonflies. There, dragonflies are seen as beneficial insects who march valiantly ahead, preying on the pests that devour crops. In other words, dragonflies symbolize opposite things depending on whether you're in the east or the west. But why did the Clarksons choose this insect to be their symbol? I can't help but feel like it's something deeper than the cliched image of dragonflies as guardians of crops. Hoongan called the dragonfly a flying serpent. What if his interpretation was right on the mark? The Clarksons are serpentine. Savage, cunning, and skilled at protecting themselves. But they don't slither along the ground. They're serpents with wings that allow them to soar above the rest. But now, those wings are starting to fail on them. That's what really triggered this incident. After acquiring wings, the serpent attained prosperity and was crowned in glory. But now it's lost its power, wavering, moments away from plummeting back down to the earth. So it started lashing out against others, just like it used to do before it gained its wings. Sort of sounds like an ancient myth, doesn't it, Zach? This thing sure looks tall when you look at it up close. But why do they gotta build it up so high anyway? The height gives them the necessary pressure to pump the water out. Also, building it in a spot where anyone could easily access it would only create more problems. Problems? In a certain Missouri town, they built the water tower low enough that a person could easily climb up to it. And that's exactly where a mass murderer decided to hide the bodies of all his victims. The water tower was so low to the ground that he could even climb up to it while carrying a dead body on his back. Incidentally, they ended up finding a total of 43 bodies in there. But the part that truly shocked Zack and I wasn't the number of bodies, Patty. What? It was the fact that over the six months from the first murder to when the case was solved, that whole time, the townspeople had been drinking the water. Agent York, look, I think we can climb up from there. Let's go. But, Patty, I was just getting to the good part. So this is our town. Looking down on it from here, it's hard to imagine any bad stuff ever happened at all. Listen carefully, Patricia. You just leave Melvin to me. I promise I'll take care of things. You're grown up. You're more of an adult than anyone else in this town, I guarantee it. But that doesn't mean you have to suffer through everything without ever saying a word about it. Just remember that, okay? Zach, it looks like the Holy Allah hasn't been sucking up water properly. No wonder the shower in our hotel room felt so weak. Patty, who manages this water tower? This is Lucare. You should know the answer to that by now. The Clarksons. Judging from their current situation, I don't think they'll be able to give us a timely response. Yeah. Do you know where the water comes from? Probably Isaac Lake. That settles it. Let's fill the Holy Allah and solve this problem ourselves. I knew you were gonna say that, Agent York.
Isaac Lake? That's the name of the former head of the Clarkson family. When he retired, they built this lake to commemorate his career. That's why it's called Isaac Lake. They wanted people to remember the power of the Clarkson family every time they used their water, huh? You sure don't miss a beat. The water level's higher than I expected. They probably haven't been out here to check on it since Lise was murdered. I bet that's where the water gets sucked up into the water tower. <laughs> Mr. Alligator, never thought I'd have to use you to fight a real alligator. Just what does that skeletal gentleman have in mind for us, Zack? Open the door, Patty. <laughs> now, Patty. Okay, Zach, let's head back to the Holy Allah. We need to confirm with our own eyes that we've completed the skeletal gentleman's oracle. Zack, the Holy Allah is filling up. Looks like we'll be able to take a warm, invigorating shower tonight. Patty, are you okay? Um, no. Not really. Worried about your parents? Well, of course I am. My mom is sick, you know. And she got even worse starting about a year ago. She used to be so beautiful. But now, she looks like a completely different person. She can't even get up out of her own bed no more. I'm sorry to hear that. I already hurt you once in the past, and now it looks like I've gone and done it again. No, I know Mama's illness ain't your fault, Agent York. It's more about Daddy. He... He what? Nothing. Just forget it. <sighs> hey! Y'all get down from there right now! I said get down here, goddammit! Hmm. The heir to the Clarkson legacy has come for us, Zack. And he doesn't sound very composed.
You rotten little snakes! This is private property, goddammit! Uh, I guess you really do want to throw down with the Clarkson, huh? Get out of here! I never gave you permission. Yeah, you think you can just walk all over us, huh? Hey! You hear me? Climb down here right now! You're gonna pay for, for pissing off the Clarksons! Oh yeah! You'll get yours! Oh yeah, you will! Yeah! Son of a bitch! I could arrest you for drunk driving, but I simply haven't got the time. What? What did you say? Ever since you got here, my whole family... And now they're all dead. You're Satan. You came here to destroy the Clarksons. You destroyed them. Satan. Satan? Not quite, Daniel. I'm just an agent carrying out a mission in accordance with federal law. On the contrary, I came to put a stop to all these problems. You might even consider thanking me for it. Federal law. Mission accordance. <laughs> You hear that? Bastard wants me to thank him. <laughs> I, I lost everything. My treasure. <laughs> At least my old baby girl. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do now. You reap what you sow. God damn it. Whether you like it or not, you're the new heir to the Clarkson legacy. You could rebuild their empire or resign it to the ravages of time. Do whatever you like. But you'll no longer be able to borrow a certain someone's power and march around like you own this town. You need to accept that and prepare to survive. <sighs> Zack, it's no use. The skeletal gentleman is a strict one, that's for sure. We're going to have to figure out what the giant lady's finger is if we want to continue on with this oracle. Lady's finger. Lady's finger. I'm at a loss, Zack. The only thing that comes to mind is a certain lady in glasses who displayed her middle finger to a truck driver. The student driver who was driving the car that Leslie Nielsen jumped into in order to chase down a criminal. 1988, directed by David Zucker, The Naked Gun. That car chase was terrific. It felt like we were watching one of our own car chases from the real world. That director must have gotten some advice from actual police officers. Otherwise, there's no way he would have been able to film such a realistic chase. Hey, Agent York, can I say something? If you're looking for ladies' fingers, you know that's another name for okra, right? Another name for okra? Yeah, okra's pretty common here in Louisiana, so most people know about its other name. Huh. Okra. My talented assistant strikes again. You solved the oracle instead of me. Let's hurry over to the okra farm at once, then, and find the biggest piece of okra while we're at it. Hey, Agent York. The key word is giant, so it must be rather large. I'll bet it looks positively grotesque, Zack. And just imagine the stickiness. Oof, I think I'll refrain from taking a bite. Hey, Agent York! Our town doesn't have an okra farm. No? Okra farm? Relax, just follow me. I reckon I know where we're supposed to go. This 
is the giant lady's finger, Okra Boy. He's kind of like the town mascot. Okra Boy. You're right. No matter how you look at him, he really is a giant lady's finger. But, Patty, there's no okra farm in this town, is there? That's right. Then why did they choose okra for the town mascot? Good question. He's been here for as long as I can remember. Daddy said he remembers Okra Boy being around when he was a kid, too. The plot thickens. Hmm. Zack, doesn't it look like he's pointing at something? Let's follow that white glove. Patty, that's it. So this used to be the control device for the drawbridge, but it looks like its insides have been replaced with something else. Oh yeah, I remember Daddy telling me about this. This drawbridge hasn't been used for decades now, so the control room doesn't work, and the power's been disconnected. A password that requires three letters? Looks that way. What's this then? There's an H on the top, bottom, and left sides of the leftmost panel. Patty, trial and error won't get us anywhere. There are 26 letters in the alphabet, which makes for 17,576 different combinations if we use three of them. Let's try something more efficient. I know that. I was just fiddling with it. So what do you want to try, Agent York? Just leave this to Zach and I. Zach, this password may look complicated at first glance, but you needn't worry. This is a chemical formula, a challenge from Professor R. The H that's tattooed all over the leftmost panel stands for hydrogen. In other words, the leftmost panel represents the molecule you get when three hydrogen atoms merge. All we need to do is figure out which chemicals go in the remaining panel. Try reviewing what we know. We spoke to the 17 comrades who saw the birth of New Orleans, filled the Holy Allah, then found the giant lady's finger pointing toward the entrance to the Forbidden. After we met the 17 comrades, we encountered that ominous red tree. There was sap dripping out from the red tree's trunk, wasn't there? That must have been a metaphor for wood vinegar. Then, in order to fill the holy Allah, we went to the reservoir. The water tower represents a distillator, and the water represents coolant. Wood vinegar, distillator, and water, Zach. Figured it out yet? The chemical formula is CH3OH, methanol. It's got to be C-O-H, starting from the left in that order. Methanol is highly flammable and used as the base ingredient in formaldehyde. This has Professor R's name written all over it. That oracle really sent us on a roundabout mission this time. It almost feels like we're playing a video game here. Talk about stupid. That must be the entrance to the Forbidden, Zack. You can't touch that! Smarty pants scientist said no. Avery Smith. Draw bridge don't work no more. 
the machine's junk. Yup. You're right, Avery, but don't worry. I got permission to touch it. <sighs> permission? Agent York, you got permission? That's right. Permission from the President of the United States. The President? Oh, he's a smarty pants. <laughs> okay. I didn't see nothing. <laughs> yup. Oh, won't tell no one, neither. <sighs> <sighs> Hey, Agent York, are you really going in there? Yes, I have to, for the sake of the investigation. I'm getting kind of scared. That's a rare word to hear coming from your mouth, Patty. I don't see much in there aside from some overgrown weeds, do you? No, that's not it. I'm not scared of the weeds. I'm scared of what you'll find, Agent York. You don't need to worry, Patty. You're my precious assistant, remember? I promise I'll protect you, no matter what happens. Patty, the truth is, when I first saw Okra Boy, I remembered something horrific. The most evil monster I've ever seen, in fact. A monster? Oh, yes. A demon incarnate who plunged New York City into mortal fear. The Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. Marshmallow? Ghostbusters, 1984, directed by Ivan Reitman. Now that's a film that was filled to the brim with bona fide horror. A true masterpiece that boasted an honest depiction of just how frightening a real ghost would be. Even if you watched it now, I'm sure it would still chill you to the bone. First night I watched it, I was too afraid to go to the bathroom alone, so I made Zack come with me. Ah! The, the, the door! Hey, Agent York. Yes? Is that... Sorry, never mind. I think I was just seeing things. Zack, I think we found a laboratory.
A research log? No, it looks more like a journal. Look, Zach. This belonged to Lena Doman. Hmm. A professor to the very end. This book is filled with all sorts of detailed notes. Hmm. She studied abroad during school, most likely in order to get as far away from her father's prejudice as possible. Abroad, she studied chemistry and fire dynamics, then cultivated the groundwork for San Rouge. Huh. If what's written in this journal is to be believed, San Rouge is a naturally derived substance. That must mean it's something akin to ayahuasca, the hallucinogen found in the Amazon region. But San Rouge wasn't actually produced here. It appears that a special environment is necessary to summon the Red Demon. Zach, look at this. It's her. No, him. It says that when Lena was still known as Lenny, he once fell in love with a woman. He fell in love with his older sister. That matches up with what PJ mentioned just before he died. And apparently, they had a daughter. The Clarkson's family tree is far more complicated than I could have imagined. You can say that again. And here it says that the Clarkson's older daughter later fell in love with someone in town and got married then she must still be somewhere in this town. Hey, Patty, did you know about all this? Uh, I don't know. This entry is from right after Lenny became Lena. Zach, what could this mean? A salesman passing through town gave me an epiphany that changed my life. She didn't create San Rouge until after she met this person. And from that point onward, she started fanatically worshipping someone. She also ceases to mention anything more about her older sister. And the word goddess of fertility starts appearing everywhere. Final entry, written just before she headed to the Clarkson's house. No one can stop my plan, not even me. My only worry now is P. I only pray the fool king can stop him. Zack, it looks like we've uncovered yet another new character. Who's the fool king? This is starting to read like a badly written tragedy. And P. It appears that Lena's worried about whether or not the Fool King will be able to stop our investigation and successfully murder this P character. P. Philip? Or Professor? No. It can't be. Oh! Whew! <laughs> oh. Hi there, Hoondan. 
Long time no see. Hmm. This is definitely your simplest oracle by far. <laughs> Patty. Now it all makes sense. Zack, we need to hurry back to the hotel and put all this in order. Just do me a kindness and shut up. We found many new truths hidden in Lena Doman's journal. And some of them went far beyond our wildest dreams. First, we should clear up who PJ's first daughter is. She was a complete mystery until now. But after reading Lena's journal, I became convinced of something. She still lives somewhere in this town. Lena's journal stated that this woman married someone from the same town. Did you figure it out yet, Zach? Who is PJ Clarkson's first daughter? Lise Clarkson, the first victim in this case. She was still just a teenager. And she wasn't PJ's daughter, but his granddaughter. She was the daughter of PJ's second daughter, Galena, and his son-in-law, Daniel, remember? PJ's first daughter should be blonde, white, and much older. You must know the answer by now, Zach. Who's PJ Clarkson's first daughter? The Clarksons are of Irish descent. PJ's first wife was also a town elite who came from Irish ancestry. In other words, Alexis couldn't possibly be his daughter. His actual daughter should also be a little younger. Zach, once more, who is PJ Clarkson's first daughter? Yes, Melvin's beloved wife and the most beautiful woman in town Candy. She's PJ Clarkson's first daughter. Which means that just like Galena, Candy also carries his blood. Now we know why Melvin said that Galena was a beauty who could attract a lot of attention. Candy had no interest in the inheritance and was also sexually liberated. That must be why PJ ended up coddling Lenny so much. Candy is supposedly sick, but she's now become a key person in our case. She must be why Melvin's gone missing. Melvin's beloved wife, Candy, committed a transgression in her past. Zach, what was it? What's wrong with that? Every couple and every family have their own ways of getting along. As long as they're happy, who cares? No one has any business telling them how they should behave. A shocking guess, but I have to shoot it down. I think we can say without a shred of doubt that she didn't have intercourse with Philip. He was certainly violent and possessed a very antiquated set of values, but he also had his own code of honor. All right, Zach, back to the drawing board. Tell me what Candy's transgression was. That's right. Candy had intercourse with her younger brother, Leonard. Then she gave birth to a child, a child that we know very well. We never heard any mention of her biological father anywhere in town, despite how much these country folk love to spread rumors. I knew there had to be some secret connected to her birth, but I never thought it'd be something like this. It's beyond anything I ever could have imagined, Zack. 
Next up is the Fool King, Zack. All you need to do is pick out the person who acted most like a fool when we encountered them. Honestly, the answer is clear. And it's a painful one to accept, isn't it, Zack? True, Chuck Thompson might make a good fool. But that's an old custom which died out in the Middle Ages, Zack. Our age is all about diversity. People shouldn't be discriminated against due to their unique characteristics. Rather, society should adapt to them. Therefore, in our case, anyone can be a fool and anyone can be a king. Let's try this again. Who is the fool king? Danny Clarkson. You're right, he's one of the bigger clowns we've met. He came all the way from sunny California to marry into the Clarkson family. His father-in-law belittled him and the townspeople ostracized him. No, he isn't the Fool King. He's more akin to the first gravedigger from Hamlet. Right now, I bet he feels just like that gravedigger did when he was digging Ophelia's grave. Okay, that's enough of that. Zach, right now I need you to focus on determining who the Fool King is. Melvin. He's got the way he's acted from the moment he located Lisa's body up to now. The way Galena was murdered silenced without any resistance his discord with the clarksons the words pj left behind and the engineer boot prints we saw at the discovery site it feels like the missing puzzle pieces are all falling into place now but why did he decide to take part in lena's plan according to patricia he seemed to be avoiding lena there's no way he actually could have believed that the goddess of fertility would come and save the town <sighs> so that's it melvin as you nursed candy you too became corrupted by San Rouge. Drugs rob people of their judgment. They slowly but surely eat away at their users. That's most likely the reason it took Lena so long to enact her plan. I don't know what to say, Zack. This is absolutely unbearable. Lena fell in love with her older sister Candy, and the two of them had intercourse. But afterwards, Lena realized that there was a disparity between her body and her mind and descended into suffering. Finally, Lena left home and decided to live on as Professor R. Meanwhile, Candy fell in love with Melvin, which led to her leaving home as well. I could only guess that Lena and Candy's relationship continued after they left home. Then, their strange love transformed into something else that bound them together in a powerful new way. Lena must have periodically delivered San Rouge to Candy as offerings to the goddess of fertility. It's hard to keep going with this, Zack. You know where it's all leading, don't you? If Lena's plan was to kill off every last Clarkson aside from her goddess, then her next target is PJ's last living descendant. She's in danger. We need to hurry. Zack. The climax is upon us. Whoever hit me in that control room sure wasn't holding back. The blow was so devastating that I passed out instantly. There aren't many people who could do that. Hmm. Oh, they hit me right in my head, so my memories are fuzzy. Not my finest hour, to say the least. Now, what should we do next? First, we're going to need to refresh ourselves a little. Sunbathing, Zach. Let's go bask in some liquid sunshine that's just as hot as the sun out there.
got a minute? I'm the bartender here. I ain't gonna stop you from talking to me. This is America. Land of the free. So folks just do whatever the hell they want. That's one of the beautiful things about America. Yeah. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. But please, call me York. That's what everyone calls me. A bureau man, eh? You hear about lease? Yeah. That I am. Very astute of you. What do you know about her? No one lives forever. Eventually, all life must come to an end. Yeah. So you don't know much about her? The girl I love was her best friend. That's all I know, man. Sounds like you're deeply connected to this case, then. Why are you giving me the runaround? Truth bomb number one. Think good and hard before you reveal yourself to someone you don't know. Just some common sense for daily survival. Yeah. Hey, Bureau Man. You change your underwear every day. Here's another truth bomb for you. Clean white underwear without a single stain on it. So pristine it shines. Your day doesn't truly begin until you slip them on. Yeah. Our world's filled with truth bombs. And that's about all I can really tell you. Zack, this man has got a very unique style to him. I reckon it's about time we stop flapping our gums here, Bureau Man. Don't give up the good fight. Yep. Later. One last thing. Do you always dress this way? I'm not quite sure how to put it, but you're practically naked. This is America land of the free. I'm simply exercising my freedom. And as my fellow American, you need to respect my freedom. So Professor R owns this place and you manage it all on your own? Pretty much, yeah. Professor Oz, really busy. What sort of relationship do you have with her? You interrogating me, bureau man. Professor Oz is my boss. I'm her employee. End the story. What's your job? Bartenders make drinks and serve them. Yeah. No special drugs on some secret menu? Louisiana's got music. We don't need drugs. Even in Louisiana, drug use is rampant. Not here, it ain't. Folks come here to enjoy a drink and listen to some jazz. I came across this spot when I was looking for a place where my buddies and I could play. Professor all happened to be looking for a bartender to sell some drinks and keep track of the money. And if that bartender can also play some music on the side, well, that's a match made in heaven. It's just one big truth bomb, Bureau Man. Irrefutable. Yeah. Now you're a man that can hold his liquor, Bureau Man. You know, you remind me of someone. Who? Oh. A historical figure from another country. Oh? Well, I'd certainly like to hear about him. Michelangelo Buonarroti, the Italian sculptor. You know of his work? The Pietà, David, Leocoan and his sons, 
if I listed everything, we'd be here all day. He's famous for his sculpting work, but he was also a fantastic painter. The Sistine Chapel ceiling is definitely one of his best. It's on a whole nother level. Yeah. I completely agree with you, bartender. But why did you bring up Michelangelo? When Michelangelo painted that ceiling, he did it standing up, looking towards the heavens for four long years, little by little. The ultimate task a single human can achieve over a period of four years. It truly is a masterpiece, worth every compliment. But why do I remind you of Michelangelo? Bureau man, what are you in such a hurry for? All right. What I've been trying to say is, I bet it was a real pain in the ass to draw that whole thing. And? And your job is a pain in the ass, too. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Well, there you have it. Have what? Just another truth bomb. Zack. He really got the jump on us back there. After all that dramatic build-up, I never expected him to reach such a vapid conclusion. Perhaps he's nothing but atmosphere. I'm completely outmatched, that's for sure. I could never hope to exude as much sheer atmosphere as that man, especially during such pointless conversations. Today the town feels kind of weird. Yeah. Sometimes folks feel like drinking. One more truth bomb for you. Yeah. You'll be back, yeah, Bureau Man. Remember, live jazz on the weekends. Yeah. Today the town feels. Sometimes folks, yeah. You'll be back, yeah. Remember. Oh, my Lord! You sure look pooped, honey. Hello, Alexis. Yes, someone did quite the number on me. Must have given you one heck of a shiner. Well, let me get you some coffee so you can relax, honey. Yes, that's it, Alexis. Just what I was waiting for. Would it be possible to get an especially pungent cup, smoldering with all the heat of the southern sun? Coming right up! Whoa, 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 <laughs> Patty. No, Melvin. No. My lord, what are you trying to do? Wake the dead? What's wrong, honey? Where is this boathouse located? Oh, my lord, what's going on with you? Your poor voice is positively trembling. 
Just tell me, where is this boathouse located? There's lots of boathouses around these parts, honey. Your guess is as good as mine. Well then, can you at least tell me when this photo was taken? Looks to me like it was taken during the Clarks and Campbell wedding party, when PJ married his ex-wife Audrey. There was a building this tall in town back then? Oh, you know what? That must be the cold storage warehouse. That big billboard on the roof is the Clarkson's, see? I bet you'd be able to get a great view of all the boathouses in the swamp from up there. Thank you. That's all the info I need. Would you mind if I borrowed this? Shoot, of course not, honey. <laughs> Thanks for your help. And keep the change. <gasps> oh, my lord. Do you think Patty's okay? She acts strong, but it seemed like she was deeply distraught. Where did Melvin disappear to? The same goes for her mother, Candy. We never even got a chance to meet her mother. Did they get swallowed up into the Clarkson's vortex as well? We need to hurry, Zach. As of now, Patty could be in danger. We can't stop moving until we find the source to all this chaos. Evidence falls along. Oh, it's you. Hmm. I... I reckon I owe you an apology for how I was acting before. I think I get what you meant now. You'll no longer be able to borrow a certain someone's power. Well, those words woke me up. I need to get myself together or I'll sink. And you saved me. <laughs> so, uh, thanks. Now this is a surprise, Zack. Can a human being really turn themselves around this quickly? Hey, come on, don't say that. I was drunk, you know. I lost my baby girl, my wife, then my father-in-law. I, I didn't know what to do. Blaming it all on someone else was the only way I knew how to cope. All right? What are you here for, anyway? Thought you already investigated this place. I'd like to get your permission to climb up to the roof. Right up to that hideous sign there. Oh, is that all? Well, go on ahead. I know you're a genius agent. If you need to go up there, then by all means. Danny, I'm not a genius. I'm a complete failure. I never even gave a single thought to PJ Clarkson's first daughter. I was practically oblivious the entire time. I never considered the possibility that Lena had a child either and that misstep cost us many sacrifices. But you know all about it now, right? Then just move on. You figured out that it was Galena who murdered Lise, and that Galena was being manipulated by Lena. You proved that my treasure wasn't evil after all. It may have cost us a lot of sacrifices, but that still makes you a genius agent, and that's how I know I can trust you. Now, I don't care if you're FBI. I'm still going to come clean and say it. Whoever killed my treasure is going to pay. I want to track him down and kill him with my own hands. But I'm a Clarkson too. So I made up my mind. All Clarkson's got a job to do. Which one is it, Zack? Patricia must be in the boathouse we saw in that photograph. Along with Melvin and Candy, the goddess of fertility. What I saw at Alexis's restaurant. Not only was my mind still reeling, but the oracle was also rather vague. But so what, Zack? We just need to find the same boathouse that we saw in that picture. There's got to be another singularity inside it. Zack, that's the boathouse. It's right where the photograph was taken. But I have no idea how we're supposed to reach it.
Zack? It looks like we have no choice but to head back to the starting line. Let's go and see the one who fired the pistol at heaven. He should be able to transport us straight to that boathouse. Remember, his love for justice is so strong that he chased a poacher's boat all the way up the bayou. I'm sure he'll be happy to help us. Zack, stop and just imagine it for a moment. Chuck's face. Once he hears that poacher's boat is actually a shrine housing the goddess of fertility. <laughs> What's this? Who left this message for her? Zack, you know what? I forgot all about our ten-foot giant. We still have a lot of work left to do in this town. Zack, there's the biggest man we've seen in town thus far. Let's talk to him just in case. Hello there, Avery. I need your help. Would you mind raising your arms up high like this for me? Raise my arms? Like this? <clears throat> Thank you. That's perfect. It appears that, even with your height, you'd have a tough time reaching a spot up that high. I love Lise. Yep. <laughs> but Lise got cold. Lise turned white. My, my poor sunlight wouldn't move no more. Avery, I understand how you feel. I'm sure that Lise does, too. Really? Oh, yes. I guarantee it. Right now, I'm trying to eliminate the cause of her death, but I need your assistance. If you ever see a man who looks taller and stronger than you, I want you to let me know. I will. You bet I will. <laughs> Hello, Chuck. The time has finally come to catch that poacher's boat you spoke of. Oh, now he wants to catch the boat. Thought you FBI boys don't chase down boats. Ain't that what you said? Unless it's a terrorist boat that plans to overthrow our country? Right? You're exactly right, Chuck. I discovered that boat does contain perpetrators who are potentially capable of overthrowing our country. Perpetrators who are deeply connected to a new drug called San Rouge. And you expect me to help you? Yes, I need your help. <sighs> I see you got the balls to match just how big a goddamn prick you are. Poachers can fuck with my form all they want, but the moment drugs get involved, all of a sudden you're raring to go. Guess what? I don't give a shit. I can't solve this case without your help, Chuck. If you're angry about how I acted earlier, then please allow me to apologize. I don't want no apology. Then how can I get you to trust me? You really don't know when to shut up, do you? <laughs> As you can see, I'm busy here. So if you're done harassing me, then, uh... Chuck, that was amazing. Absolutely incredible, fantastic. How did you do that? Uh, thanks? I don't know. The answer lies in his physical advantage. That's it, Zack. Your stance when you toss makes all the difference. I can't get over how beautiful his stance was. Just what am I missing? 
you like skipping stones? You know, I always trust a man who knows how to skip good. See, the key to skipping is how close your arm is to the water when you throw. You also need accurate speed, an accurate wrist snap, and accurate timing when you let go. That's why short folk who stay low to the ground and keep a low profile like me can skip better. And that's how I reckon I can trust a man who knows what skipping's all about. Got it? If you want my help, you gotta impress me with your skipping. Then I'll lend you my boat. You can't skip for shit. Might be I gave you too much credit. If you want my help, you gotta impress me with your skip. That's the only way I'd ever trust your dumb ass. Now you're talking. Remember now, the stone, the course, and the rebound timing are all important. But the most important thing is to stay low and stay humble. Humble yourself in body and mind. Damn, woo! You're a natural. That was flawless skipping, all right. Really? Oh, yeah. You got talent, boy. And you're humble, too. Well, I did have a great teacher. That's what helped me to stay low. Yep, that's the key. Gotta keep low profile. Folks can learn a lot about life from stone skipping. Fellers gotta stay humble. Keep yourself from getting all arrogant. Know what I mean? Okay, maestro, I trust you now. I'll take you into the swamp or wherever the hell else you want to go. Want to shove off now? Gotta make hay while the sun shines. Let's head over to my boat. Follow me, maestro. Zach, this is exhilarating. It's like an amusement park ride, only better. Hold on tight now, maestro! This is yet another reminder about just how vast and varied our homeland of America is.
This is as far as I can take you. You're gonna have to walk from here. Thanks, Chuck. Hey, you hear that wind a-howling? That there's a storm coming. You better watch yourself out there. You hear? Oh, yeah. Some folks don't usually come round this end too much, so be careful. You got a weapon? Just give me a holler if you need me to come get you. I do always trust a good skipper from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate all your help. Zack, a deadly premonition. How do you feel about this one? Honestly, I'm torn. I know the truth that awaits us here isn't one we want to accept. But we have to keep marching ahead. We're FBI special agents, remember. The United States Department of Justice has authorized us to deliver justice in their name. You know, sometimes I get to thinking, why did I ever decide to work in the justice sector? Zack, we've reached the final stage. Are you prepared for the truth? do anything for you. I'll make your wish come true. Yes. You stand before the goddess. Mind your manners. Sorry, but I don't worship that deity. You always were a rude one. Patty, everything's all right now. Just come over to me. She can't hear you, York. Patricia's already in a trance. Outside voices can't reach her. You didn't. Saint Rouge? Now, what kind of fool do you take me for? She's the consecrated virgin, and virgins need to be pure. She won't be able to serve the goddess if she gets all corrupted. Now, will she? 
And besides, she's got a resistance to the stuff. Might be due to the blood she inherited from her parents. Or might be Saint Rouge was designed that way on purpose. Not that it matters now, cause she's about to die. I wouldn't do that if I were you, York. Or did you forget who gave you Mr. Alligator to begin with? You think I'd hand you a weapon without any sort of safeguard in it? This is straight out of a bad C movie, Melvin. Call it what you want, York. But I'm the main character here, and you already played your part. Now that Candy's become the goddess, I will take her once more and claim my seat as the king who rules this town. Yes, I will be the one who reveals the Clarkson's legacy! Power isn't important to you, Melvin. All you care about is your loving family, remember? The man who won the heart of the most beautiful girl in the world. Melvin Woods. We can still stop this from happening. Just need to wake up, Melvin. <laughs> York, you really are a second-rate man. You're incapable of understanding how other folks feel. Lena was the one I loved. Candy's merely the symbol we use to restore the Clarkson's glory. The goddess of fertility is just an idol designed to guide our people down the proper path. I devoted everything I had to Lena. Hey, Patricia! Ah. I was obsessed with Lena ever since I was a kid. She lived in a big mansion and also had skin as white as snow. All I ever wanted was to be just like her. My friends were too close-minded to understand. Don't let the white man brainwash you, they said. But race was never a part of it for me. She was always far above that shit. A higher being who surpassed it all. By the time I grew up, she already changed forms and abandoned her home. At first, I was so shocked. It felt like my dreams had been shattered before I ever got a chance to pursue them. But when I finally got a chance to meet her face to face, everything changed. I loved her female form with all my heart. The moment I saw her again, she completely possessed my soul. Hey York, you know how they say God created man in his own image? That's what Lena is. She's God's finest creation. The Section of the human race. She wasn't perfect in any way, Melvin. She was just another criminal who happened to be a bit smarter than most. <laughs> you never understand. Anywho, I decided to follow her plan. And so I became the one who supported her from the shadows, working to fulfill her dream of restoring the Clarkson's glory. That's why I seduced Candy, married her, and kept giving her Saint Rouge whenever Lena told me to. Then, you know what happened? About one year ago, we finally saw a sign. A sign of the birth of the goddess of fertility. You mean she started growing horribly obese? Eight years. It felt long, but also short somehow. I knew from the start that much blood would be spilled. But I had no other choice. It was the only way for me to make my beloved angel need me. So you murdered Galena, too? Yeah. That didn't exactly go according to plan. Galena was supposed to kill Lise. And Lena was supposed to take Patricia's life. Then Lena and Galena were supposed to kill PJ and end their own lives. Phyllicide? Patricide and suicide. These three types of sacrifice were gonna complete the blood purge. But then you came to town. You're such a pest, York. I load every fabric of your being. Always buzzing around us like a gnat, trying to upset our faith. 
but no more. I'm going to stop you right here, sacrifice my daughter, and complete Lena's plan once and for all. There may have been some hiccups in the plan, but the result won't change. After all, I'm her daddy. In the end, the goddess of fertility and her king will be the only ones left. We'll find a way to make do on our own. Hey, yo, haven't you been wondering why I'm talking so much about myself? Because this is the last stage of the game? And nope. I've just been waiting for this. The bud. Soon, she'll be reborn, and the goddess of fertility will be among us. It all ends here! Are you all right? <sighs> Die! Stop, goddammit! Get away from her! Daddy! Mama! Get out of the way! But the goddess! Let us play as... Daddy! <laughs> no! Damn it! I was supposed to be the king! I need to stop the fire! Shit! Damn it! Patricia? If Mama and I die, it'll all end, right? I know about the real you. I know that my blood's cursed. So I'm just gonna die. I'm gonna die here with Mama, so it'll all stop. Just please, please run, Daddy. You're a good man, aren't you? I... I... Daddy, you saved me. Patty. 
Zack, I need you. Give me strength! Are you all right? Agent York, save my daddy! Get out of here! Yon, take my CLG! And run! No! I can't leave both of you here! Just go! No! I'm not leaving! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> I... And I can't come back to this world. We have to say goodbye here. I'll take your mama with me. It's time for you to start a new life, sweetie. One where you won't be shackled to your destiny. York. I've confessed my sins. I'm gonna die here. I know this isn't how you wanted things to go down. But she's innocent. My CLG is pure. Please. Just take her and get out of here. No! No! I'm staying with you! Oh! Ah! My daughter's in your hands now, York. Let's go, Patty. No! Let me go! Daddy! Mama! No! <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, CLG. I've been a horrible father. Before we ever met, I was always heading down the wrong path. <laughs> but I finally understand it now. I love my family from the bottom of my heart. Both you and your mama. Me too. I love you with all my heart, Daddy. I'm sorry, Candy. Red tree. Lena, I'm such a failure. Screwed it all up again. Your whole plan's been ruined. I'm sorry. Right up to the end. I, I could never do anything right. Oh. Really? So... It's all okay? Oh. Good. Well, just hold on then. Candy and I will be right there. The worst father, graced with the sweetest daughter. Life can be a bitch sometimes. <laughs> 
but it wasn't all bad. Oh, <laughs> I just love the look of glistening green grass. You know the green I'm talking about. <laughs> Moist with sprinkler water, reflecting the radiance of the sun. In that regard, Louisiana's grass is in a class of its own. <laughs> just picture it. On a clear summer day, a cold beer in one hand, gazing out from your porch onto the garden you're so proud of. This is the life. Doesn't get much better than this. That's how you feel. A well-kept garden and a cold beer the ultimate combination. They go hand in hand, just like hot dogs and sporting events. But that grass... It's, it's got, got a, bit a bit of a nerve, nerve to it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, matter how many times you cut it down. It'll, it'll always keep coming back and turn, turn your eyes away for a bit. <laughs> and, that's and that's when it'll really sprout. Up, up until last week, week your, your garden, garden was, was perfectly pruned and balanced, symmetrical and pristine. But, but you, you wake, wake up the next morning, morning and you, you can't, can't even stand to look at what it's become. become. That's, That's why, why people work so hard to cut their grass. Like, like it's some ordeal they've, they've been tasked with by the big man in the sky. sky. Oh. <laughs> and it never ends. Understand me, Zach. If you want to stop cutting your grass, you need to either submit to its growth or force it to wither. That's all humans can really do. Hard work never really gets us anywhere in the big picture. Nothing but wasted efforts. You following me here? Now just be honest with yourself. Be honest, Francis Zach Morgan.
Oh, howdy, howdy Zach. Zach. So, so we, we meet, meet again. again. Such, Such a, a touching, touching reunion. reunion. Like, like a, a little, little boy, boy who was given up for adoption, adoption finally, finally reuniting, reuniting with his true parents. Uh, look, look, even, even little, little Willie here is beside himself, himself with, with joy. Kason! Ah! <sighs> oh, oh dear. <laughs> Damn it! Damn it. Ah, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna kill you! you. Hey, let her go! What the hell's gotten into you? Jeez, are you okay? <laughs> that should do it. Well, no turning back now. How should we clean this up? I'm searching the room. This room is pure insanity. But I can't let it shake me. Why did you come here, Aaliyah? Remember the real reason you decided to investigate Morgan's house in the first place. We came here to find a missing girl. Patricia Clarkson isn't here. And he's done nothing except narrowly skirt the thin line of legality in all the right ways. He's so abnormal. How can there not be a single shred of evidence against him? Come on, Agent Jones. I know you're hiding something. Uh, what are you talking about? You've been watching him for four and a half years, haven't you? Can you really stand here and tell me that you never saw a single one of the strange signs I'm picking up on now? Uh, what signs? Deadly premonitions. Preparations for kidnapping or terrorist activities. Sexual depravity, violent tendencies, self-mutilation, or even just contacting a specific person periodically. Nope. Nada. He doesn't fit any of that. You think I'd really ignore something that obvious? I may be a schlub, but I'm still an FBI agent. Then why didn't you do anything about this room? Or did you merely choose to ignore his abnormal proclivities? You want to know what I did? I did my damn job! End of story! I was outside the entire time. How do you expect me to notice a room like this from out there? It's as simple as that. At least it was. Until you drag me into this whole mess. Don't blame me just because your big investigation ended up leading nowhere. Then tell me the truth. After seeing this room, can you really say that man is in his right mind? He kept this room a total secret from you for over four and a half years. No normal human is capable of such a feat. Only a true genius. Or a true monster. Can you really guarantee that he won't try anything if we just let him go here? Well, I... Then you need to help me. Find some sort of evidence that we can use to make him reveal what he's plotting. Okay, okay. Daniel Clarkson. The file said his only real talent was his ability to pick up women. But when I spoke with him in the warehouse, he seemed dignified like a truly accomplished man. Marrying into the Clarkson family must have put him through a lot. Daniel Clarkson, the 
Why do you think Jethro here survived? Why? I mean, doesn't he look like the kind of guy who'd die first in a horror movie? He married into the Clarkson family. He didn't possess Clarkson blood, so he had nothing to do with Helena Doman's plan. The blood purge thing? But if that was all there was to it, then Helena Doman wouldn't have killed anyone but Clarkson's, right? Yet a ton of the Clarkson gang members died, along with Sheriff Woods. It doesn't add up. She did whatever it took to achieve her goals. She'd kill if the plan required it. But killing people outside of the Clarkson family was never a priority. Her ultimate goal was to cut off the Clarkson bloodline. Maybe he was always meant to be an assistant to the goddess of fertility. What, like a servant? He was the kind of person who was most in his element when he had someone to serve. Even afterwards, he let Patricia take over the estate while he became her assistant. As soon as he settled into his role, the townspeople started to respect him. Now they practically revere him, and he's even earned himself a nickname, One-Armed Danny. So you think his life played out exactly the way Professor R planned it to go? Talk about tragic. Photograph of Patricia Clarkson. I thought she was imprisoned right here in this room, but there was no one here. Where could she be then? I was so positive, but she isn't here. There is something about this room, though. Agent Jones, what do you think? Me? I'm not as smart as you. Why are you even asking me? Are you hiding something? <laughs> of course not. Knock it off. Me? Hiding something? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Come on. I got nothing to hide. I thought I would find answers in this room. I thought that Patricia would be here, but I was wrong. This room is only filled with photos of people related to the case and the handiwork of a madman. Feels like I'm wandering through a heavy mist. Why is Morgan showcasing those women's photos and that bed? After she lost her family in the Lucare incident, she went to go live at the Clarkson estate. And once she grew up, she assumed control of their empire seemingly without any hesitation. She must be strong. How did she eventually come to accept her cursed blood and the fate it placed on her shoulders? The one who took her in after the incident was Daniel Clarkson, the next in line to succeed the Clarkson family. He's the one that ended up raising her from that point onwards. Isn't fate strange? In the end, two people who were completely unrelated by blood ended up inheriting that house. Yeah, you're right. But sometimes I wonder, what is family anyway? Go back far enough, we're all strangers to one another. We're talking countless generations, marriages and birth, you know. Humans love to deify the rules they create. It's almost like that's been an unwritten law from the very start. Sheriff Melvin Woods. I never met him myself, but his face makes him look like a very nice guy. His background and childhood didn't have any red flags either, yet we're supposed to believe that he was one of the masterminds behind that entire incident? If you loved someone from the bottom of your heart, would you ever be able to marry someone else? Or kill for them? Whoa, uh, what are we talking about? I never heard of any kind of motive like that in any other murder case. I just keep feeling like we're being fed a story that he made up in his mind. <sighs> True. Honestly, without having experienced what that's like, I can't really say what I'd do. But I'd never try and force love to happen, if it didn't seem like it was meant to be. There are 3.5 billion women on this planet. There's got to be more than one specific person who anyone can fall deeply in love with, right? But what if we were talking about pizza, not women? You just discovered the perfect ultimate pizza, but you aren't allowed to take even a single bite unless you kill someone for the cook. Have you ever loved someone with all your heart? <laughs> what kind of person do you take me for? That's my line. 
Is this supposed to be the altar from the site where Lise Clarkson's body was found? Why would he want to replicate that inside of his own home? There's no way this man is sane. Why did Lise have to die first? What is this? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. This room paints such a bizarre picture, but upon closer look I can see some strange sort of pattern to it all. Was Morgan trying to recreate something with all this? If so, there must be a reason for all of these weird and hideous things. I've seen the bedrooms of countless violent criminals, but this one is on a completely different level. It's beyond insane. What's that? A hunting trophy, a brown bear with a dragonfly eye patch. Why is it smoking a cigar? It's probably supposed to represent Philip J. Clarkson's body. And the elk is? Helena Doman. So that's why it's got such good taste in fashion. And this one is Galena Clarkson? Why did he want to line up corpses that were killed in different places, all together in a single room? Red seeds? When Helena Doman attacked the estate, he just happened to be somewhere else. Whether it was through luck or simple coincidence, that's how he managed to survive. When Helena Doman returned home, someone must have let her inside. You think that was her brother-in-law, Daniel? I don't know. <sighs> well, alligators did chomp his arm off. He probably had it in for old man PJ, too. But, you know, I don't think he had anything to do with this. Why not? You're making it out to be more complicated than it really is. That's always the problem with people like you. Too smart for your own good. Just get to the point. <sighs> Professor R marched straight through the front door to the mansion. She arrived right at her destination using the quickest route possible without having to undergo a single security check. I know. My question is, how was she able to do that? Because she's family. It doesn't matter if PJ disowned her. He never stopped loving his son. A father would never abandon his child, no matter how much they failed to fulfill his expectations. That's what being a parent is all about. Don't look at me like that. I know, I know, I don't have a son myself, but I have a father. He's still back in my hometown, managing the printing plant my grandfather started. He'll be turning 80 soon. He wanted me to take over the place, but as you can see, I'm out here. But I know how this whole thing works. Even though I haven't seen him in forever, the minute I go home, he'll welcome me with warm, open arms. A woman so beautiful she felt like she could make it as an actress in Hollywood. And sometimes it seems like God abandoned us humans a long time ago. I feel it more and more with each new case. Galena Clarkson went to California to become an actress, but things never took off for her, so she eventually returned home. Then she murdered her own daughter and ended up like this. Where did she go wrong? She did manage to appear in a few movies, right? 
Not as any characters with actual names. And never with much clothes on. So that's the only value they saw in her, huh? Sorry, that was insensitive. It's an everyday occurrence in that world. She was also bullied a lot. Bullied? How? They'd cut up her costumes, her scripts, and even her own clothes everywhere she went. Then after three years of that, her stylist chopped off a chunk of her hair. By accident. Are you kidding me? I did a little investigating on this. In the end, a self-titled Big Cheese producer tricked her. She almost ended up going into porn. <sighs> Not hard to imagine what would have happened after that. One witness said that after returning to Lucare, she refused to use scissors to cut anything. Rope tied around a lighting fixture. What could it mean? Uh, uh, you sure it's okay to press that? Won't know until we try. Hey, hey, it's Woodstock. Look, a peace sign. Love and peace, man. Even I can figure out what this is from. It's Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Grateful Dead, and Led Zeppelin. But I shouldn't have to explain it to a music nut like you, right? That isn't a peace mark. It's upside down. You don't need to be a music nut to see that. Well, who says that's the top part? If you're looking from Lisa's head, this is the top part, making it a big, fat peace mark. No, this is the ground. Where's your proof? The red seeds. Seeds go in the ground, right? That makes this wall the bottom. Lisa's head is clearly at the top. Period. <sighs> also, Agent Jones. Led Zeppelin never played at Woodstock. He's representing a human with a hunting trophy made from an animal. I feel like I'm looking at a piece of modern art done in really bad taste. <laughs> According to Morgan's story, she was the mastermind behind everything. The whole purpose of her plan was to protect her declining clan from their imminent downfall. She had to kill all her family members in order to purify the bloodline, so that in the end only the goddess of fertility would be left behind. I don't buy it. This plan has so many holes in it, I don't know where to begin. Yes, Katrina may have carried all of the evidence away. But I still can't believe he was actually able to turn in this fairy tale as an official report. She planned a string of murders all in order to restore the Clarksons to their former glory, right? Yeah. According to Morgan's story. Matches up with the files, too. But the only proof of that is the confession she privately gave to Morgan just before she died. Galena Clarkson was also murdered immediately after she confessed. Don't you think it's all a little too convenient? Well, story-wise, yeah. And the sacrifices. None of the FBI's official records contain an example of an actual human sacrifice. Aside from the cases that Francis Zack Morgan handled, that is. There are tons of examples of animal sacrifice, though. And remember the witch hunts back in the Middle Ages? Meaning? Meaning, there are always exceptions to the rule. And Morgan alluded to the existence of some sort of journal, right? I think he said he read it in Professor R's lab. If we could find that, maybe this would all become easier to swallow. The report didn't mention anything about a journal. And if it truly did exist, it surely would have been submitted as evidence. Unless he tried to cover it up on purpose. Or... Unless the journal never existed in the first place. Exactly. <sighs> Philip J. Clarkson, the central figure behind the Clarkson's rise to power. He took two wives and fathered three children. But despite all his successes, he's been immortalized as a hunting trophy. Nothing but a sick joke. He was taught how to rule as a child never confided in anyone, and married for purely political reasons. Then he prospered so much that he became powerful enough to rule an entire town on his own. But in the end, his own child betrayed him, and ended his entire clan in a series of violent deaths. If that was your life, how would you look back on it? Yeah, beats me. 
I wasn't born into a rich family, nor was I ever taught how to rule. And for what it's worth, I've also never knocked up a young ex-actress. But I guess the one thing we can say is that any good life needs balance. Get too hung up on one thing and you lose sight of everything else. And if you betray someone, you'll get betrayed too. Someone thinks they can step all over people and then live out the rest of their life in peace. They're fooling themselves. We always get to see how those people end up in our line of work. In the end, they die horrible deaths. That is why pizza is the only thing I trust. Pizza never betrays you. This case took place in Lucare and centered around the Clarksons. Oppressive authority, cross-purposes, madness, and love. But Katrina took the truth along with many innocent lives and buried it all at the bottom of the swamp. But there's one truth that can never be washed away. This all started with the death of a young girl. I think she's the biggest mystery out of all the people involved with the Lou Carre case. How could she agree to kill her own daughter? Then herself. It's hard to imagine ever being okay with that. No matter how depressed I became. Why did she believe what Professor R told her? The whole blood purge story. There's no way anyone in their right mind would ever believe that. You got a point. No matter how badly all the bullying must have broken her heart. I just find it too hard to believe. Don't you? Yeah, but you shouldn't think too hard about it. Why not? Human beings don't make sense. We always do things that can't be explained with common logic, especially when it concerns our parents, children, and siblings. Mm, mm That doesn't satisfy me. No matter how irrational an action may be, I want to know exactly why that person made such an irrational decision. Otherwise, what hope do we have? You're never going to be in a situation where everything makes perfect sense. Just stop sticking your nose so deeply into everything. That's my advice, as an old guy who's lived twice as long as you. You and I are nothing alike. You decided to give up on your life and spend the rest of your time on Earth sitting around and playing Sudoku. <sighs> the 16-year-old girl who was murdered in Lucare in 2005. After that, she remained frozen for 14 years, waiting for someone to discover her. I was the one who found her. Which means I have a duty to lay her soul to rest. Everyone thinks that the principal thing to the tree is the fruit. But in point of fact, the principal thing to it is the seed. Now I know why Lise Clarkson was murdered first. Lise's death was Professor R having second thoughts. According to Morgan, her plan was to perform parricide and filicide, then commit suicide. Those were the three deaths necessary to complete the ritual, remember? Which means she technically could have killed Patricia first. That would have been the best way to delay any interference from the Clarksons themselves. The reason she didn't kill Patricia first is because Lena was actually following a different plan inside her own mind. Or perhaps she merely changed her plan as she followed through with it. At some point, new emotion started to take root within her. She had second thoughts about something. And in order to shake those off, she used Galena to kill Lise first. In order to cut off any possible escape. But that only made her plan move ahead quicker than she could have ever imagined which forced her to rush right up to the end with those misgivings always in the back of her mind. Huh? Uh, wait, hold on. Yeah, you lost me. What are you talking about? In other words, at some point, Helena Doman decided that she wanted to make Patricia the next heir. The blood purge wasn't for the goddess of fertility. It was for their daughter, Patricia. Wait. Are you saying Helena knew from the start that Sheriff Woods would die with candy? That's the only explanation I can think of. Huh. Remember, this is only assuming that everything Morgan told us was true. Until I can trust that man, this is all nothing more than conjecture. Uh, considering how insane this all is, it sounds perfectly believable to me.
<laughs> Francis Zack Morgan. Remember me? Oh, cat got your tongue. Understood. You know why I'm here, don't you? Surely, you must know what this means. To commemorate our reunion, allow me to give you another oracle. The contract, once signed, will last for eternity. But only in the presence of true love. Did you hear that? Good. It's been a while since I felt this. You know, there's hardly anyone in this era who can see me like you can. And they've been dropping like flies since you first came to see me. Breaks my heart. time. Do you have any questions for me? Excellent. You pass. You haven't changed, Francis Zach Morgan. But that question isn't for me to answer. Go and see it with your own eyes. Oh, time's up. We'll have to finish this during our next reunion. <laughs> oh, this is bad. Agent Jones, what is this referring to? Avery Smith kidnapped Patricia Clarkson and escaped. Avery Smith? The vault manager? Why would he kidnap Patricia? Tell me what's going on right now. Well... Answer me, Jones. I made a deal with Morgan back when he took me to the bathroom. What? What? Morgan said something to me. If we want to find Patricia, we need to look at Avery Smith. Have you lost your mind? <sighs> what he said made sense. Ever since 2005, Avery's been working deep inside that cold storage warehouse. He was also arrested in the past for getting too friendly with Lise Clarkson. And... After Katrina, he apparently worked on renovating the warehouse for free. What if that allowed him to freely modify the warehouse as he pleased? That would explain why her body remained missing for 14 whole years. Then, I did a little check and found out that he never went back to work after Christmas vacation ended. So what? Why would you trust him? Uh, I don't. I just decided it was worth investigating, that's all. So, I sent two agents to Avery's house without telling anyone. I just called in a favor from an old friend in the New Orleans branch. No one gave you clearance for that. You think you can just... Uh, but what if Morgan's telling the truth? If he is, we're both gonna look like total clowns. Clowns who went barging into a former agent's house on completely unfounded suspicions. HQ will have a field day with us. They'll string us up as the two dumbest agents to have ever graced the field. I just wanted to take some precautions. And besides, if he is lying, it's still no skin off our backs, right? If things work out, we'll end up solving a difficult case that's been driving everyone crazy. Imagine that. You and me, just the two of us, solving a case like this. 
I'll be able to jump ship on this crappy job, and you'll be able to freely investigate all things San Rouge, just like you've always wanted. Besides, you know that Morgan is Director Abraham's favorite. Even if we get into some sort of trouble, if Morgan testifies to Abraham's for us, we'll totally be in the clear. I don't care. This isn't the way things are supposed to be done. Well, I'm sorry, but I had no other choice. You were so engrossed in this, and come on, you know how I am. <sighs> Besides, saving the hostage should take priority above all else. There's no time for squabbling. We need to find Avery Smith, no matter what it takes. <clears throat> but how? Uh, well... Thanks to your heroic maneuvers, we just lost our suspect. I know, but... I know how to find him. I should be able to see the other world, the way I am now. Just let me go, please. Morgan? It's okay, my fairy. I know I can convince them. Definitely not the best thing for them to see right now. If I saw that during an investigation, I wouldn't be able to stay calm and listen to someone either. I found the first one last autumn, a dead rat with a bud coming up out of its stomach, just like this one. A rat ate a red seed, died, and the bud sprouted. Honestly, it shocked me. Up until this point, I had only ever seen red seeds saplings and big trees, so I decided to grow one of my own. What are you talking about? I needed to solve the mystery of the red trees. Why do they exist? But all of my sprouts died without ever growing the tiniest bit. Forget about a big tree. I couldn't even grow a single sapling. So you kept experimenting? Two days after the seed enters a rat, it takes the rat's life. On the third day, a bud sprouts up, then grows to that size after five more. <sighs> I tested this on 137 corpses. In only a few months? But I was never able to grow a bud any larger than this size. I still remember what he told me. Apparently, there's a special trick to making these grow. You're totally insane. <laughs> Maybe. Simon's lost in thought. What will his next move be? Will he follow the plan? Or... I don't have much time left. I'm pretty sure that's why I can see the other world now. I'd lost that sense ever since the Greenvale incident, but it's back now. Please, will you just trust me? Come on, Simon. You'll trust me, won't you? Uh, what? No, Agent Jones. Remember the warning I gave you at the very beginning? You can't let him take control of the conversation. Yeah, I, I know. I know. Aaliyah Davis. She's on edge as she should be. Who wouldn't be after seeing this room? Please, Aaliyah Davis, let me go. This is our case to finish. No, you aren't an agent anymore. But you don't know how to find him. Neither of you ever could. Oh, I'll find him. I swear on my pride as an active agent that I won't give up until I do. That won't get you anywhere. It's beyond you. Shut up. You think we can't find him, but you can. Just how stupid do you think we are? If you want us to believe you, then it's about time you showed us some proof. A lot of times passed since I last saw Patricia. If I hadn't gone back to Lucare, she probably would have never been kidnapped. I dragged her back into her cursed destiny. Hey, Belle. Your hypothesis was pretty much on the mark. Last week, I went back to Lucare. Then I bought a used car and got on a train in Trenton. But not for the reason you think. I wasn't stalking Patricia. 
And I'd never try to kidnap her. Then why would you go there? Why would you risk so much, especially since you knew that you were under surveillance? Because, once again, I'm chasing San Rouge. San Rouge? Even after I quit the FBI, I continued to study the red trees on my own. And now, I've come to the conclusion that those red seeds and San Rouge both come from the same roots. I also found proof that someone's inherited the original recipe. That's why I flew to Lucare, to confirm my suspicions. But I was more powerless than I ever could have imagined. I couldn't move like I used to. No badge, no gun. So, after wandering aimlessly around town, I swallowed down my torment and my weakness and left. You expect me to believe that? I know you've got it in you. What's that supposed to mean? You found Lise Clarkson's body. The one thing I never did. And only a few days after discovering the body, you came to visit me. You should be fully capable of discerning that what I'm telling you is the truth. Talking much about oneself can also be a means to conceal oneself. You can't trick me. Helena Doman, a.k.a. Professor R., also once known as Leonard Clarkson. Her depraved life only added more complications to the Lucare case. She's the one who gave the red tree a chance to take root inside her. If your story is true, then why did Avery Smith kidnap Patricia? Patricia resembles Lise. I even got them confused once, and Lise reported being stalked by a ten-foot man. That's Avery Smith? Exactly. But he's only 6'7 at best. His physical characteristics don't match the person you're talking about. I once concluded the very same thing, but now I know. That was definitely Avery. He protected Lisa's body for the past 14 years, until you discovered his sleeping beauty. So after losing Lisa's body, he kidnapped Patricia as a replacement? Th that's ridiculous. Is that really what you think happened? Even if Avery did possess that sort of mentality, it doesn't make sense. If Lise was really that important to him, he would have tried to steal her back. Not now, maybe. But certainly after she was buried. <laughs> would you be able to go on worshipping a goddess who had been defiled by so many hands? That ice was a barrier. A shield that separated the divine from our world. Avery showered me with key words. Smarty pants scientist, research, and lab. Why didn't I pick up on any of it? If shallow prejudice is what prevented me from taking his words seriously, then I truly am a failure as an agent. No, I know why. I was still immature as a human being. You said that someone inherited the Saint Rouge recipe. Is that someone Avery Smith? It has to be. Avery used to help Professor R do research in secret. What? Well, that wasn't in the report. I only realized it just now. The moment I spilled my coffee on the floor. Avery revealed that he was helping with some sort of research. <sighs> but at the time, I let his confession go in one ear and out the other. Now that I look back on it, I realize it was solid proof that he was helping her produce San Rouge. What makes you think that? He had free access to the deepest parts of the cold storage warehouse. Oh. Wait. Uh, meaning... San Rouge needs to be produced in an extremely cold environment. Exactly, Aaliyah Davis. You already considered this possibility, didn't you? That's why you investigated the cold storage warehouse as soon as you got to Lucare in order to locate where San Rouge was being made. Then, you came across Lisa's body by pure chance. Melvin's cheerful exterior betrayed all the darkness that lurked within him. His happy-go-lucky personality was probably just his way of coping with reality. It all makes sense. Now I understand why he kept insulting Lena. 
Melvin wasn't the Fool King. What? Many different characters pop up in Lena's journal, and I mistook one of them for someone else. What are you talking about? After Simon hit me and I fainted, I had a dream. Now I'm convinced I'm the Fool King. The Fool King was always meant to be an outsider who suddenly arrived in Lucare. And the man she felt a need to eliminate wasn't me, but Avery. Lena realized her plan was on the verge of falling apart. She also guessed that I would be able to save Patricia from Melvin. The one worry that remained in her heart was leaving Patricia behind and how her life would play out from that point on. Especially since she would be left behind with Avery, a large, childlike man who's beyond anyone's control. She wrote that journal entry hoping that I, the Fool King, would be capable of stopping Avery. And she wrote it in a specific way in order to try and rouse me to action. Lena and Melvin both entrusted me with their daughter. So please, just let me go. It's my duty to protect her. The Greenvale case. It awoke me and also stole my irreplaceable best friend from me. If it weren't for that case, I might still be an FBI agent, but the case dealt such a blow to me, it shattered all those dreams. Who do you think benefited most from the Greenvale case? <sighs> no one benefited from it. Many lives were lost. That's all. You really believe that? Everyone who survived was overcome with sadness, scarred for life. Without exception? Without exception. Isn't that right, my fairy? I feel like you're the one person who benefited from the case. You were able to add a new chapter to your stunning career and earned unshakable trust from the Chief. That's what allows you to go on using his intel network as you please, even though you're retired. Are you seriously suggesting that? Sickness is destroying my body. I feel like I'm on the verge of losing my mind, yet somehow I'm unable to forget the cases connected to those seeds, whittling down what's left of my life, chasing them. You really think I'm doing all this for nothing but self-interest? Is that really what you're saying? Aaliyah's smart. She's top class, even within the FBI. She must understand that what I'm saying makes sense. The problem is that she's too smart. The way she is now, she'll refuse to accept anything that can't be explained with logic. I understand what you're trying to say, but it's too perfect. It's too perfect, just like that report of yours. How could you come to such a detailed conclusion after spending years shut up in this room? It doesn't make sense. The only possible explanation is that you're bending the narrative in the direction you want it to go. Why do you think I left the field for two years after Greenvale? That case cost me not only my best friend, but also my special talent. I never thought I'd lose something like that. But ever since then, I've been unable to solve cases using that method. <gasps> Metaphysical offender profiling! I tried everything I could think of to regain my lost talent, but it never came back to me. That's why I quit working for the FBI. And without anywhere else to go, I simply spent my days seeking truth, searching for an answer I'd never find. <sighs> so time continued to cruelly pass me by until finally a disease started eating away at my body. I thought it was all over for me. <coughs> but about half a year ago, I finally reached my conclusion. Everything started with the red seeds. He and I encountered these seeds long before we reached Greenvale, under the seething, mind-melting sun of Louisiana. Then. For some reason, in the beginning of December, I finally regained my talent 
And instantly, I could see the other world again. Get it? Through allowing the cancer cells to ravage my body, I regained the power to travel to the other side. This is the only answer, Aaliyah Davis. Truth is a surprise, born from coincidence and an unknown power. What came first, the seed or the fruit? Who cares? To me, those red seeds are the beginning and the end of it all. Two bizarre cases derailed your life. It must have been extremely painful. You have my deepest condolences, but that doesn't put you in the clear. You're still a suspect. A suspect? For what? Patricia isn't here. The murders of Sheriff Melvin Woods and Candy Woods. Their bodies were never recovered. Katrina carried them away, along with many other lives. Aside from that report you wrote, there's nothing that proves your innocence. Hey, let's not jump to conclusions here. Oh, I'm not. I also suspect there's a possibility that he murdered individuals connected to other cases that he's worked on. The Greenvale report bears the same inconsistencies as this one, and both cases are filled with victims whose deaths were never witnessed. Stop. Don't say another word if you so much as mention her name. If I mention it, then what? You will pay. Twinkle, my fairy, don't look at me that way. I know how talented she is. I completely agree with you on that one. But I can't hand everything off to her just yet. Can you just let me get my way one last time? <sighs> Bell. No. Special Agent, Aaliyah Davis. You're exceptionally talented, I admit it. You found Lisa's body, then discovered the red seeds all on your own. You even noticed that there was someone else in this room. You've got amazing intuition. You're a hunter with an extremely keen sense of smell, but you still can't perceive the other world the way you are now. That's all there is to it. Simon, look inside that trash can. Huh? The trash can? It's right behind you. Then you'll know for sure that I'm telling the truth. We t what is this? What's on that receipt? What is it, Agent Jones? F. K. Holy crap. Huh. Contact a local agent and have them investigate Avery Smith's home. There are still agents investigating the Lucare area, right? Trust me. That's where Patricia Clarkson is. Trust you? Where's your proof? Ask Aaliyah Davis. Ask her about the name of the person who tipped her off. What do you mean? You're from Chicago. And you love pizza, right? Especially deep dish pizza, smothered in cheese. What does this have to do with pizza? Just ask her. And ask her why she decided to take this case in the first place. Got it? Pizza will never betray you. So you need to trust it, too.
But how could you have known that I would come here with her? I didn't. I just bet on you. God damn it. Hey! Tell me what's going on right now, Agent Jones! Thank you, my fairy. Car key, Simon. Let me go! Don't worry. Just trust in the pizza. I'm the anonymous tipper. F. K. Eh, it's on the corner of 3rd Street. 69 Pontiac GTO. You've got excellent taste. Lend me your gun, too. Agent Jones! Don't you see what you're doing here? This is a severe obstruction of justice. You're violating the FBI code. <laughs> yeah, Aaliyah, I know, but pizza will never betray me. Pizza? Tell Abrahams to prepare a private jet for me at the airport. I know Robert won't turn his back on me. Wait, Morgan, are you serious? The chief would never lend out a private jet to a civilian like... Like, um... I have to leave you for a bit, my fairy. They'll be fine. They'll figure it all out. York, can you hear me? I'm going to go finish the job you started. That makes us even, okay? Hmm. York. She really is a genius agent. She's probably going to end up being an even better agent than we were. She just needs more experience under her belt. She's still only pursuing the world she can see with her naked eye. She needs to experience more frustration. She needs to strengthen herself. <laughs> On the other hand, Simon's much smarter than he looks. No wonder he was able to go on watching us for four and a half years. All that struggling under the surface paid off in the end. <laughs> Do you want to know why he decided to start trusting me? It's simple. It's all because of the name I used to send the tip to the FBI. It's the name of that pizza parlor, the Chicago-style place with those trademarked crimson boxes. Franklin's Kitchen. FK. Yet again. They've got the best deep dish pizza in the area. Both Simon and I love that place. That's why I told him, pizza will never betray you. Will it, York? <laughs>
What do you say we gather up some puzzle pieces for old time's sake? An artificial heart lung machine. And this tank's filled with some sort of liquid. If it isn't frozen at this temperature, it must be a non-freezing liquid. What was he using this for? It couldn't be... cryonics. Did he replace Lisa's bodily fluids with this stuff? That's absolutely insane. <laughs> So it really was you, Avery. I finally found the ten-foot-tall giant. Lena once said that the red soul could enhance people's unique characteristics. In your case, it must have enhanced your physical characteristics. Personally, though, I don't think enhance is the right word here. This is simply a physical mutation caused by a drug overdose. This... this juice... It came from that powder. Yup. Gave me strength. I'll, I'll put it in Lisa's body. Yup. So Lisa stay pretty forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make Lise Clarkson, the first victim of the Lucari case. I never thought she'd remain trapped in ice for fourteen whole years. Hey, York, why didn't we work harder to find her? I regret it from the bottom of my heart now. Please, so pretty. I'll protect you forever. Yup. Please, smiled. She's smiling at me. Yup. <laughs> Lisa's smiling. She's smiling. No one ever comes here. I can hide Lisa here. This is for your sake, Lisa. So I can. You. Yep.
Avery trapped Lise here in that massive block of ice. He made his own personal altar that no one would ever find. And that liquid must be the solution that Saint Rouge is made from. He used that to keep her body from decomposing. Oh, red seeds. I knew it, York. Our battle began the moment we first visited this town. A trail of seeds. Hmm. This is beyond freezer burn. The meat's all shriveled up. Forgotten gator bones? All the way down here, Katrina still found a way to make her mark. One of the key ingredients to Cajun cuisine. Utterly wasted. I should have taken a couple of boxes home with me when I first came here. A giant bathtub? No. This is a container for unloading crawfish. He must have used this to freeze Lisa's body, and why didn't I figure this out sooner? Were these frozen oysters? Hard to tell now. After the hurricane, no one entered this warehouse for a long time. What are these huge crab legs doing here? Or are they shrimp legs? Not that it matters. We need to find Patricia. The Holy Trinity paste. Somehow this lone box is completely undamaged. Is there divine power at play here? Somehow I doubt it. I've had enough of those fairy tales. The seeds lead this way. This is where the final secret is hidden. Yeah, I know, York. Aaliyah and Simon would never be able to reach the other world through their mundane investigation. That's why we need to close this case. He's got a strong grip. Strong enough to crush a steel door. This must be the entrance to the Smarty Pants Scientist's lab. Avery Smith. After all this time, I found my way back to you. Back to the truth about just how special Lise was to you. They mentioned you so many times. Mrs. Carpenter. Alexis. But I didn't catch on. I completely glossed over the monstrous karma you've accumulated. You met the goddess together, with Professor R's red soul. And you obeyed them, just as the goddess ordered. But then, the goddess died. You lost everything, and you went out of control. So, Professor R decided to give you something special. Lisa's body. You didn't steal the body. She gave it to you, didn't she? Please. 
Jesse. So sad. I hate being alone. Makes me sad. I'm sad. <laughs> Patricia. Patricia. Yup. I still got Patricia. Lisa and Patricia. Goddess is still with me. Where's Patricia? It's not too late for you, Avery. Turn yourself in. Stop now, and I'll even testify for you. I'm... That's right. It's not your fault. Not my fault? Yes. You were just being used. I was used? No! No one used me! I'm the... Guardian! I gotta protect the goddess! She's mine! You couldn't. I'm not a... 
smarty pants. So I don't know. Avery. So that's your new altar. Sorry, but that religion won't last much longer. Patricia's coming with me.
Patricia, you've become such a beautiful young woman. Just stand there and let you die. Never. Never. Well, you should have. But... but... You should have just let me die! Just like you did with all the others. You let them all die! Stop. Stop it. No, I won't. You built up such a towering mountain of corpses. No! Yes, you did! You're possessed by death! No, I'm not. I did it for the sake of justice. Is that why you let her die? For the sake of justice? Don't say it. Please, whatever you do, just don't say her name. Emily White. No! Emily White. <laughs> oh, damn it. Damn it. Damn it. I couldn't protect her. Yet I survived. I lived on to accomplish nothing. Damn it, York. Please. Just take me. Take me to the other side. <laughs> York? No. <laughs> it's me, Zack. Kaysen. Oh, don't give me that look, Zack. <laughs> I'm awful sorry I'm not York. But, I can still save you. I could even take you over to the other side, if that's what you really want. Come on, give me your hand, old buddy. I'll lead you to where you need to go. Just like a lighthouse that guides ships through the dark, abyssal night. To the Red World. You become such a fine monster. Oh, oh, oh. Lena and George could never hold a candle to you. They really disappointed me. 
especially Lena. Is that you, Morgan? <laughs> Don't move another muscle! Francis Zack Morgan! Your story, your reasoning, I accept most of it. So just put your hands down and give it up. I'll take it from here. <laughs> yeah. She ain't half bad. She can't see this world, but she still managed to find her way here using nothing but her nose. She's like a genius pianist who can play Chopin without looking at any sheet music. <laughs> She's got potential. Isn't that right, Zack? I just got a nugget of an idea. I know the perfect way to use her. Your Zack? Special Agent Zack? You came to save me, didn't you? Hey, Patricia. You've grown so much. Did you change your hair color? It looks great on you. Uh, oh, good, good. Looks like I made it. <laughs> Zach! Trisha, I don't have much time left. I'm just glad I got to see how much you've grown. 
before it all ends. What are you saying? Don't be stupid. Don't worry. When I die, so will this tragedy. I always knew it would. He and I are two sides of the same coin. We've always been one in the same. If I disappear, so will he. You don't need to worry, Patricia. You can be happy now. No, you're not allowed to do that. The contract's still in effect. Here, look at this. Was this all a big lie? I promise to protect you from all the evil in our world. You need to uphold the contract. Zack, you saved my life. You're the only reason I'm alive right now. That one time when I wouldn't stop crying, remember what you said? Our world is filled with pain. Evil, violence, betrayal, jealousy, lies. Unseen despair is always waiting for a chance to paralyze us. Sometimes you might feel like you'd be better off dead. But you can't give up. Never forget, your life is your own. Those words freed me from the chains of my destiny. If it weren't for you, I would have died a long time ago. Please, Zack. I still need this contract. Please keep protecting me. Morgan! Get away from her! Wait! You're misunderstanding! Get away before I count to three! Or I'll shoot! One! No! Listen to me! Two! Is this... a miracle? Oh, God. I... I don't even know what to say. You've become quite the crybaby since I last saw you, Zack. Hi there. Good to see you again, Patty. Who are you? FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Agent York? You're with the FBI? Just like Zack? Yes, that's right. I'm Zack, and Zack is me. known about you two. Just what are you? We're your old friends, Patty. Now and forever. Aim carefully, sister. Freeze! Aim carefully, sister. 
I'm more than you! Aim carefully, sister! Ah! Aim carefully, sister! Aim carefully, sister. Freeze! <laughs> Aim carefully, sister. I'm warning you. Aim carefully, sister. Freeze! <laughs> Aim carefully, sister. I'm warning you. Aim carefully, sister. I'm warning you. Aim carefully, sister. I'm warning you. <laughs> Aim carefully, sister. I'm warning you. Aim carefully, sister. Aim carefully, sister. I'm warning you. Aim carefully, sister. I'm warning you. <laughs> Aim carefully, sister. Aim carefully, sister. I'm warning you. Aim. Patricia Clarkson, I'm here to save you. One, two, three! Aim carefully, sister. I'm warning you. <laughs> Do I shoot you? Aim carefully, sister. I'm warning you! <laughs> ah! One, two, three! Aim carefully, sister! Aim carefully, sister. Freeze! Execution! <laughs> Checkmate, Morgan. Resistance is futile. Your fate is sealed. <laughs> Resistance is futile. Your fate is sealed. Execution! Who else? How? 
all my power. Death is inevitable, Patricia. It descends upon us all equally. All life dies in the end, and no one can change that. But, but, we're finally together again! This isn't fair! Come on! Fulfill the contract! Sorry, but this is an extenuating circumstance. Then, sign a new one with me! This contract isn't valid anymore. Now, I'm going to protect you from all the evil in the world. And I plan on keeping my promise. So you're not allowed to die before I do. Go on. Sign the contract! Come on, sign it! Now! Are you sure you're prepared for everything that entails? You can only break the rules. Once. Listen to me, Patricia. When Zack wakes up, I want you to tell him something. This is our final farewell. Thank you so much for all you've done. Over all those years, you never forgot about me, did you? It's been so long since we've seen each other, but I know you always kept me in your heart. That's what kept me alive. I owe it all to you, Zack. Thank you. And... Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, York. Thank you. Thank you. He who fights with monsters should see to it that he himself does not become a monster. And if you gaze long into an abyss, 
the abyss also gazes into you. Much blood was shed, and many precious lives were lost. Avery Smith was indicted on 11 charges, including kidnapping Patricia Clarkson, illegally disposing of Lise Clarkson's corpse, and distributing the illegal substance known as Saint Rouge. He's currently serving a term of 381 years at a state prison in Angola, Louisiana. His first possible scheduled review for parole could happen in 127 years at the earliest. Aaliyah Davis's assistance in solving the case was officially acknowledged, and she was transferred to the DCHQ. Thanks to Boston Chief Robert Abraham's support, she was officially allowed to join the Saint Rouge Investigative Task Force. Later, it was reported that her younger brother began to show small signs of recovery from his addiction. Simon Jones was finally freed from his mission to monitor a certain ex-agent and returned to the Boston branch. He was given a brand new computer and put back on data analysis, but never worked another big case. Instead, he spends most of his time at the office doing Sudoku. And so, after 14 long years, the curtain on this gruesome case was finally closed. Lucare still suffers from the aftermath of the plan set into motion by Professor R, a.k.a. Helena Doman. She was clearly smart enough to restore the Clarkson's empire on her own, yet she never tried to. The true reason behind her tragic downfall remains shrouded in mystery. A person's life can be greatly affected by the tiniest of anomalies, such as buttoning the wrong shirt button, just like how this genius, who once inspired great expectations, went on to become infamous as one of the South's most inhuman criminals. And now, after a very long time, life is finally starting to return to Lucare. I stole this from Professor R's lab. <laughs> I figured you would. I've read through it dozens of times, but it still doesn't make sense to me. I mean, at some point, her plan started to collapse, right? Otherwise, I probably would have been killed early on. But here I am, alive and breathing. And the stalker who harassed me for years has been arrested, too. Not only that... But now I have a brand new life waiting for me as heir to the Clarkson Empire. Both Lucare and the Clarkson's Industries are finally showing signs of recovering. It's just... Uh, hard for me to believe that this all went according to her plan. Yes, I understand how you feel. No matter how you look at it, things couldn't possibly have ended up perfectly in accordance with her plan. How can you be sure of that? You earned a new life for yourself through the effort you put into it. It definitely wasn't something that Lena gave to you. You made this life possible. You didn't do it all on your own, of course. You were only able to come this far thanks to everyone who supported you along the way. Could anyone really believe that Lena was the one who orchestrated all this? There's no way. I'm positive. All the people you've met thus far and all the things you've experienced created the person you are now. 
Lena's just one of those people and nothing more. You really think so? Still, York and I both fell for that message of hers. Maybe her plan really is still moving forward after all. Stop joking around. I'm seriously concerned about this. <laughs> Sorry, Patty. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do with you, Zach? <laughs> By the way, did you change your hair color back in order to signify some important decision you made? <sighs> yeah, I guess I did. After losing everything, I finally found my true self. So I've decided to accept everything that comes to me from this point on. I think that color looks great on you. Really? Thanks, Zack. <laughs> I'll never give up. I'm determined to overcome my cursed blood, whatever it takes. And you will. That's why York chose you to be his assistant, you know. He always knew you had it in you. Wow. He really thought that highly of me? Suddenly I feel really motivated now. This is crazy. I don't even know what I should get started with first. Now that's the Patricia Clarkson I know. Oh, I got it. I want to go and get one of Alexis's chocolate sundaes. Not a bad idea. They are to die for. Yeah, they're like the deadly premonition of ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so long, Zach. I'll come visit you next summer. Louisiana summers are just too hot for me to handle. You're always welcome here. Bye now. Feels like today is going to be another wonderful day. Now, time for some coffee. No matter what the plan is, coffee should always come first. Isn't that right, Emily? Thank you. 